Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck fucking oh! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this overreaction Monday, April 10th, 2023. The sports program starts now. Rombo! Rombo is the champion of Masters Weekend. He had a fantastic performance, battling through the adversity of Mother Nature, canceling some days, having to wait, getting up early, playing 27 holes on a Masters Sunday. John Rom takes a big time swing at Brooks Kepka and becomes a green coat wearing, Spanish handsome ball player and son of a bitch. What? It was fun to watch. It was an honor to watch. And this man won me 5,000 bucks and he won himself three. 3.24 milli down there in Augusta, Georgia. Congratulations to the Rombo Bombo. Boy, it was incredible watching the Masters all weekend, although Saturday was canceled, and I watched Cocaine Bear nice. and Murder Mystery 2 with Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston on oh, Saturday. Okay, hey. hey. Cocaine oh, Bear, a little different vibe than the Masters. Wasn't expecting that. That bear loved cocaine. Hell yeah. And once that bear got a sniff of it. It felt like that bear was willing to do whatever to get a little bit more. Now, it was a fucking killer. I don't know how real that story was. It did say it was based on a true story, but the lady should not have had a gun that had a gun in that story because she was killing more people than the bear at one point. Mm. But nonetheless, it was a complete opposite vibe than what the Masters were whenever you were watching it. And that's the perfect thing about the Masters. You can nap. I napped two, three times. The sure. best. During the Masters yesterday. Mm -hmm. Obviously had a chance to enjoy Easter. Hope everybody had a fantastic Easter weekend. If you believe and do everything that Easter weekend calls for, I hope you had a blast. I hope the churches mm -hmm. were popping off. I hope the uh, egg hunts oh, yeah. Yeah. were a great yep. time. I hope the food was spectacular. I hope you had a great one. The Masters was a great appetizer and an entree for that entire day. Uh, UFC 287 on Saturday night was fantastic. I mean, it was a fucking great weekend. Real yeah. good. I can't wait to talk about it all with the crew that joins me every single day live here on the stage of the Thunderdome, the Toxic Table, at Boston Connor, at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys, Tone Diggs is here as well. Uh, I would like to start with you, Connor. Mm -hmm, sure. Because I kind of left one thing out that was pretty notable from the sports weekend that was. Yeah, you did. You know, we talked about Rombo winning the Masters. Yep, Congrats right. to Rom. Yeah, way to go, John. He, he shouted out Zach Ertz, who sent yep. him a text on Thursday morning, a part of a birdies and babies group text. Mm -hmm. Zach Ertz, J.J. Watt, John Rom, 7.08 a.m. They sent a text on Thursday <laughs> yeah, morning real early. saying, hey, hey, let's have a day, John. Then J.J. Watt chimes in after Zach Ertz. He goes, let's go, John. Pretend you're playing with Zach and I. You'll set the course record. And Zach, Zach Ertz follows up, goes, First hole green looks like a walk in the park. Uh, why would he say that? Why would he say why that? Would he do Classic that? jinx. Why, why would he say that? Then Zach had to tweet JJ on the side of the group text. Everybody knows what this is. Anytime you're on a group text, something happens. People go immediately to the private text. Did you see what fucking mm -hmm. just happened? Yeah, yeah. And then bang, let's take a venture back to the group text. We have a plan now almost going in there. Four putts start to round. Not ideal. <laughs> JJ goes, horrendous. I said to pretend like you're playing with us, not like you're playing like us. Zach Ertz didn't take any accountability in that response. No, JJ no, Right there at all. You know, because JJ said, <clears throat> all right, I'll start this whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What I said could have been a little bit of a factor. Mm -hmm. Zach Ertz goes, oh, yeah, yeah, what you said. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, what you said. And it, a little did he know that in the middle of a Masters champion speech, he'd get called out for it. Sounds like a great group of friends. And Rom is a great person to watch golf. He hits that fucker far. Mm -hmm. Because of being born with a club foot, his swing is nowhere near as far as everybody else's. So the amount of speed and power that he has yeah. to generate with a lot less kind of movement is so fantastic to watch. He seems like he's always in control, and that ball is low. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. He's throwing, like, little darts in there. Beautiful. He's fun to watch. Him and Brooks Kepka being the pair that we watched all day was nice for a guy who's built like me. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like Rory McIlroy, I think he's, like, five foot eight or something. Mm -hmm. Just about. These guys are all really small guys. So whenever you see the big guys out there hitting big balls and also playing great golf, I enjoyed it. It was perfect. I, there was people that were upset awesome. that there was no drama. I was like, no drama? What are we talking about? There's Plenty drama. of drama. Masters. They're, they're playing against Augusta yes, National right. as well. Go. So it's not just like them playing against each other. They're playing against a course that had embattled weekend with the way the storms were. I loved everything about it. I wish the Masters could be every weekend. We mentioned that 
in the start of this particular program. Mm -hmm. UFC 287, holy Great. shit. Down there in Miami, Delivered. it was a star-studded It was. Affair. It was. Everyone was It was there. blockbuster. It felt like everybody was there. I'm surprised that you weren't there. If you would have heard that the people that were in there in Boston, <laughs> yeah, Connor, been, yeah. I assume you would have went down there. Jorge friend. Masvidal and Gilbert Burns had a great battle. I appreciate Gilbert Burns and Jorge Masvidal for staying on their feet for a lot of that. Mm -hmm. I like that Jorge, you know, would get punched right in the suckle, and then you go, <laughs> and then another one, <laughs> <laughs> And then another one, <laughs> Street Jesus, you know, showed up, was very, very tough. By the third round, though, he was not. It was a, yeah. it was a drive to survive type situation with Gilbert Burns. He did, gave his speech, obviously thanked the UFC, mm -hmm. thanked the fight game, mm -hmm. and then led a uh, chant alongside everybody in there, which I assume he's very pumped up about. Some people obviously not thrilled. And then Izzy gets a massive win over a man who's beat him three straight times, two times in kickboxing, then one time in the UFC. Just fuck it. He said, he was playing a little coy. Let me bake this big robot of a man in there. It didn't look like they were in the same weight class. No. So that Pereira guy is fucking big. He seemed like a machine. In the way they were just rock him, sop him in there. And then he baits him in and boom, boom, right in the mouth. And then boom, right in the mouth. Then a hammer fist. Then he fucking does three. <laughs> Build it up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And he goes and remembers what the kid did yeah. to him back uh -huh. in 2014 Ooh, or whatever sweet. it was, however many years ago. He had a full moment. Congrats to him. UFC had a great fucking night. Yeah. I mean, an absolutely great evening. That was incredible to watch. Shout out to UFC Shout doing it down in Miami. UFC. It was a... It was an awesome sports weekend was, with UFC yeah, and the Masters. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you throw an NBA. These guys were fighting each other. That's right. Great that day was yesterday. awesome. In a bench fighting each other. Two different teams having fights mm -hmm. on the sideline. Need to do more of that. You know yeah. what I mean? Need to do more mm -hmm. of that. I like to see a little fire. A lot of people making fun of the NBA for being a joke and childish and everything like that. I like seeing the fire. Rudy Gobert throwing a shot at the chest of a man that he said just the day before. Dad talks a little aggressively. I don't know. You just yeah, can't take yeah. any offense to mm -hmm. it. Then next day, literally the, punching him square in the chest in the middle of the whole thing. Then on the other team, it was... Uh, Clippers. It was Mason Plumley and Bones Highland. Yeah, yeah, they were in the face of each other. Big White leaning down yeah. in the face uh -huh. with nobody else. Mm -hmm. They were kind of getting into it. And then if you go back to the Wolves, guy punched the yeah. wall, broke his hand. Yeah. The NBA was fiery this week. It was. Mm -hmm. There was a tank job allegation that was coming. We're yeah, talking right. to Sham Sharania yeah. about here in about an hour. Love that. They said Dallas Mavericks were trying to tank to lose. Yeah. Why are they trying to lose? Oh, so they can get in the top 10? Uh, for what? Oh, so they can have a 4% chance of maybe getting the number one overall That's pick. Hell cool. yeah. To get that Wemben Yama. I never understood Shameful. that. Shameful. What's his name? Wembyana. Nailed it. He's a fucking player, this guy. He is. Yeah. Yeah. He sticks his arm up. He can dunk. Mm -hmm. he, he runs and just does that. Yep. He's literally mid-run dunking on people. He's supposed to be the greatest player that has come in the league in a long, long time. Generation. So everybody's potentially trying to mm -hmm. get it. But in basketball, if you tank and you have the best odds to get the number one overall pick, it's a 14% mm -hmm. chance. Have you ever just fucking mailed it in for a 14% no, chance of joke. any? This so is every dumb. year. This is every year this happens. Oh, yeah. The Mavericks aren't even in the 14%. No. Mavericks no. are at a 4% chance of landing it. But they do have number 10 overall pick right mm -hmm. now, allegedly. Mm -hmm. So that'll change their yeah. whole team. Yeah, oh, yeah, we should piss off our fans and yeah. fucking mail it in, not try to get in the playing mm -hmm. game. Ruin Why it not? with Luca. I don't understand that. Mark Cuban, obviously, a much smarter man than I. But that decision-making process, I don't really get in the NBA. Yeah. They seem to do it every single year, though. And that's all that happened in sports. Yeah, yeah. well. It was, know, it was NBA, tanking yeah, and fighting. That's right. UFC. Masters, UFC. Yep, UFC. Yep. Good weekend of baseball. Baseball. Oh, baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. O'Neill Cruz is out for the year. Yeah, yeah that's right. Happen. Well, that catcher needs to be investigated. Yeah, he does. He might be. The way he was standing there, hoping yeah. O'Neill would fracture his shin. I mean, geez, Louise, best player the Pirates have had yeah. since Kutch. Kutch is back. We teamed these two together. Great, We're off and there for Kutch. Yeah, uh -huh. we we're down 10 4 or something like that. Mm -hmm. He hits a home run solo. Yep. That was Hell sweet. Yeah. That was awesome. Got the home, stand Sam home. Belly played the fireworks. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that was the sports weekend in well, a nutshell. Yeah. Not in a nutshell, I want to say. It. There's one other sport, you know, that we cover here pretty, you know, in depth Pickleball when, when you think about it. Oh, Thunderball. Thunderball, yeah. That, yeah. another great sport. Mm -hmm. I saw Tyson McGuffin. Ah, yeah. yeah, he was going crazy. off. Ham on somebody. And then that was Paris it. Jones, I believe, she is a player when it comes to doubles. Yeah. So we all saw that in the two-hour uh, gap between the morning <laughs> right. and the after. Okay, so we all yep. saw it in the Yeah, we all saw mm -hmm. that. And then there all right, was, let's dive into some news. Well, so. there's an NHL game also, Pat, that I think you, you know, maybe Maybe you don't want to talk about it because the Pittsburgh Penguins are not dead. I'm not going to say that, but they will never touch the greatness that the 2022 to 2023 Boston Bruins did this year. 
Did you did you hear about any of this or no? I've seen some tweets about okay. it. There's just so much other stuff going on. Stuff. Sure, yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, the Bruins broke the record for most wins in a single season in regular season history. And I don't know if you are aware of this. The NHL started in 1917. So, yeah, it's been a long time. And the Bruins said, 106 know year record? Yeah. It's a weird time for the NHL to start a league. But, okay. What's that? Yeah, well, hey, look, to reunite the countries on this side of the planet, Tony, we decided, hey, let's let's get some sticks We're in the middle on of ice, the world huh? war, okay? We're starting leagues. Well, that was also the U-boat world war where That's submarines right. were brought into the world. Mm-hmm. I actually had to give a speech about that when I was a freshman president, uh, student council president. Hell yeah. I gave that speech uh, because the sophomore student council president gave the exact same speech I gave the year before. Oh, okay. It was very nice of Nikki, I believe. Nikki Barsik, I think her name was. She gave me the entire speech morning of. Had not read it one time until I'm standing in the middle of our football field in front of our entire school. Mm-hmm. Freshman. Okay, why am I out here? I don't know. I should give a look at this paper, mm-hmm. maybe. Nope. Got the U-boats in there. Said you birds. Still Ooh. to this day, I remember it. Still to this well, day. You know. That was my yeah. only flub. <laughs> well, that was my only flub. I'm not a good reader. In front of the whole thing, talking about the World War. I called them you birds. But anyways, I had to give a talk about what World War One was mm-hmm. and what the you know the basic the history and what it did to United oh, States yeah. of America. I did not know that in the middle of that thing, it should have been in Nikki's speech. She's much yeah. smarter than mm-hmm. me. Right. The NHL started in the middle yeah, of that. Yeah, Gary Bettman thought it was a good idea to start a fucking league in the middle of a World War. Gary Bettman, he's got some good docs. If he was, he does. That's if right. He was, that's a hundred. Six years ago, best record of all time. Of all time, and you know there has to be some sort of asterisk. Well, there is this discrepancy that in 2005, when the lockout happened, and this is now the salary cap era, that teams, you know, they couldn't win uh, after overtime. After overtime, it was a tie, or you know, that's it. You win in overtime. Now, obviously, we have the shootout. The Bruins have four shootout wins. Oh. Oh. Interesting. Uh, that, that's okay. so what year was that? What year was that? That was 2005, 2006. Still 18 years. That's pretty good. Lot. Still 18 pretty good. years. Not yeah. bad. Most wins at. in 18 years. Not yeah. That's not bad. Champions of the modern day NHL. And when you think about it, if we want to go back, then let's just discredit all of the Sidney Crosby. Champions cups of the regular season. Who sure. cares? You guys, you guys, you guys won the regular season. <laughs> you know season. what I mean? Let's just discredit those because fuck it. Uh, also, whoa, 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 let's whoa, whoa, keep whoa. in mind. I was going to give you guys stick taps. Oh, well, you don't have to. I was going to give you guys stick taps. You don't have to because the history of the NHL is. Shout out Zito. No, they're not. Yes, I would, they are. But that last whole thing you said there, I mean, we start piecing things together. I love to celebrate greatness, don't I? Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. All the time. You always, that's all, the only thing you love to celebrate other than other things. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Right. nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, right. well, well, Thank you. Spoken like a real <laughs> Seattle Kraken fan over there. Now, he loves to celebrate greatness too. Yeah. That guy. Uh huh. I agree. I, I, was, I was thrown off because. I don't have a fucking stick. What happened? Oh, yeah, well, oh. Zito, a couple sticks. Zito actually found these in a Coles he went to over the weekend. Sweet. And thought it would be a nice gift. It is. It is fantastic. Stick taps, you guys, for having the most wins since 2005. Thank yeah. you. Now, the issue, I appreciate the that. The issue with it is, and I, I assume that's why you brought it up before we could even get to it, mm-hmm. because when I mentioned that there had to be some sort of asterisk, anytime you break something like from 106 years, Bingo. there's always going to be other people that are going to be pissed that you broke it. Yeah. Yep. So I was just wondering what those people would say, and clearly they have a real argument. Yeah. Well, So if you, if you guys were able to win four more times because the shootout era has taken place and those teams weren't able to do it, you could see how their fans would think it's Fugate. So yeah. all we got to do is say, like, just like we say with uh, Vinatieri, Vinatieri's all-time leading scorer of the 16-game Era, right? Sure. Okay, because there's 17 games. It's going to probably change in there. Mm-hmm. Just like we say, Michael Jordan's the best basketball player back when they didn't know how to play basketball. Yeah, sure. And, and, all then, time. and now it's like, hey, everybody is very good at basketball. It's mm-hmm. a completely different sport. LeBron James is allowed to be the best of this particular style of basketball. Mm-hmm. Jordan, that particular style of basketball. And when I say they didn't know how to play basketball, I'm joking. It was a different style of basketball. Right. But I've seen some videos in that last dance where people were dribbling the ball like this. Mm-hmm. It would either be a carry or stolen immediately upon them getting the ball if it was in the modern era. So it's just two different sports, and who knows if LeBron could have handled the rough and tough sure. yeah, basketball right. uh, back boys. in the day. I'm that cry that, baby, no way. Okay, see, there's people that say yep. that. I agree. So we just take that out of the conversation. Let's just have two different yeah. Hey, it's mm-hmm. two different sports. Sure. Pretty much. You guys in the shootout era, completely different than before the shootout era. Not your fault. Well, no, not at all. Not no. your fault. Not no. your fault. Uh, absolutely not. And, you know, in the re- record books, they will still have, you know, the Bruins at the top with 63 wins. And, you know, you can have your arguments if you want. But let's also keep in mind that they had, you know, fat slobs playing goalie. So they didn't do whoa, a shootout whoa, because they were whoa. scared. Hey, there might be a chance that this goalie doesn't stop one puck because of how bad they were back in the day. Maybe. I mean, there's a chance that's the case. Yeah. Uh, 
And they might have lost all four. You True. know, shootout attempts. True. Sure. You guys did win it. Not your fault. No, not at all. I wouldn't say it's our best fault. Best in 18 but. years. Yeah. 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 Best regular season in Ooh, 18, 18 years. years. Who held that record uh, before the Bruins just beat it? The Mickey Mouse. Tampa. Play, I think Tampa. Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. Lightning. Uh, yep. The Lightning had it. I, I believe it was the Detroit Red Wings hockey town had that record. Well, and the other thing about that is, too, Foxy, seven is that ties, no too. one gives a fuck about the Red Wings anymore. You know, it, it's really. Oh, no one gives a fuck about the, hockey town? Uh, it, no, uh, because they haven't, uh, you know, been in the playoffs for, what, 15 years? Oh, that's yes. why they're on primetime TV all the time. Well, when was that? Hockey Where? Town. In Detroit? When, when was that? <laughs> that was your, in Detroit? Oh, I'm pretty sure this weekend they were on primetime hockey. Yeah, they got oh, slaughtered. 5 1. You were, on, <laughs> yeah. you were on primetime, by the way, because Sidney Crosby was on primetime. Hockey. Welcome Pat. to the show, pal. That's the Mickey Mouse League, though. 95 96. That was old school. That's when guys actually could hit each other until Sidney Crosby changed the entire. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, nice. All right. All right. I mean, you guys won the Stanley Cup that year, right? No. Okay. So if we go ahead and win Lordo, which, you know, also. Well, Tampa point won this Cup that year. They no, tied that, the record, didn't they? I thought no. that was the year they got swept oh, in yeah. the first yeah. round by the Blue Jackets. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Nick, that's hockey talk. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. <laughs> Anyways, congrats the teams to the who win that record don't win the cup. That's we'll what they see. say. We'll see. We'll see. No team's ever won 63 games. So yeah, only in the last 18 years too. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. or before that. Yep. Congrats. It is a big deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, massive. 18 yeah. years is a long time. That's like cigarettes, Full. voting, yeah, yeah. yeah. grown human. <laughs> yeah, everything. Wide. Congratulations. Thank you. Most wins ever, not just in the last 18 years, but I understand your well, shootout discrepancy. Well, that is quite a discrepancy, though. Uh -huh. But still, the most wins ever, so it doesn't really matter. Was this supposed to happen? Did we know they were going to be this good? Well, he. Uh, no. He, they started out hot, right? First 11 games are like nine and two. Or yeah, something. and they won like the first 20 home games. It's the longest streak to start a season in the NHL history as well. I'll, uh, believe me, there are other hey. records, too. Hey. Hey, hey, thanks, boys. Great weekend of sports. You know, I, I didn't want to shine too much light on the Bruins because, you know, Rombo and you know, the Penguins beating the Red Wings and all that other stuff. Yeah, I guess we're a point behind everybody else, two games remaining. Mm -hmm. You're uh, not in the playoffs right now? No, we're out right now. We're in the hunt. We're in that Jeez. far right graphic. One point oh, behind. Okay. You know, there's wild card yep. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then there's in the hunt. We're in that one. And how many games left? Two. There's a team behind us that has four games left, though. Buffalo, maybe? Yeah. But Why do they have four games left? What the fuck happened? I don't know. Did they have to cancel Blizz some? Blizzards, maybe? Yeah. Uh, maybe. I do maybe believe there was one or two games postponed from inclement weather. Uh, but Bo Boston out there, you better hope. You better hope those pens will sneak into that eight spot. You're going to be in for a oh, tough ride. They've been no. playing playoff games for fucking last two weeks. Don't yeah, you right? worry. We do not give a damn who we play next. It's a nameless, you know, grayless faces, whatever the fuck the saying is. That's what we are, and we don't care. Great. We're just going to keep playing our game, and guess what? You know, Penguins are going to be a great team. They've had to put it all on the line. We've been resting, guys, for the last three weeks, okay? So we're going to be as healthy as we've ever been. Pasta with a nice hat trick, pretty clean. Yep, got yeah. the 60 goals, it's 300 on his career. quit the playoffs again. That happened last year. Yeah, that was Tuka Rask, and that was the COVID year. Uh, but don't worry. Even if he does quit, we have two of the top five goals in the NHL this year. So we don't. That's the problem with the no, fans. That's, yeah. that's like why a series Louis would be Louis not there anymore? Louis Domingue, I don't believe, is on our team anymore. What the hell? What? Yeah, but we're going to have to find out who number three is if we make the playoffs because it always <laughs> comes down to who the third goalie is mm -hmm. for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then we get boat raced out of the first round, and everybody shit talks us, and then we're into the offseason, another sport. Please, let's move along. Mm -hmm. it's, it was a good run. You know, the – the Penguins had their time in the in the sun, if you will. Yeah. Hopefully they just, you know, blow it up slowly and it doesn't just playoffs. all end. If we don't want to be bad. Yeah, you yeah. got to make the terrible. playoffs. Can't have a Geno Malkin, Sidney Crosby, Tanger, Gensel. Fucking Rusty. Yeah. On the team and then not make the playoffs. That's either terrible coaching or just ineptitude. Or the boys just can't move anymore. Yeah. And uh, maybe we need a new Zambone operator. Whoa. Maybe the ice is getting a little bit too thick. Could maybe be. we need to cut that grass down. You know, this is like mm -hmm. Chicago okay. ice. Is that Correct. what we got? Maybe we need to make it a little oh, bit yeah. smoother for the old boys to kind of fly around a little bit because we look slower than other teams. Mm -hmm. And normally in the playoffs, the faster team wins. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how the NHL playoffs is. Sure. And that's why the NHL playoffs are so awesome to watch mm -hmm. because the teams that are playing fly. They do. It is yeah. so fast. Unbelievable. It is so action-packed. The NHL playoffs are some of the best viewing experience you can have in all the sports. It gets much better when you have a team in the race. Yeah, yeah. yeah. much better. Foxy, what are you shaking your head for? You don't even know what that means. Uh, what do you mean? The yeah, first 22 12. years of mm -hmm. my life, the Detroit Red Wings were in the playoffs. And now, of course, once I get on this show, they stink. So yeah, well, it turns out. Turn, Come on. Seems like the pens might. Yeah, I might have to do a moment of silence, you know, for your entire hockey team going forward. I need to bring back year. legendary play caller Mike Lang. 
scratch my back with a hacksaw. Yeah. Hell yeah. Elvis has left the building. Exactly. Buy Bring Sam his drink. ass back. And his dog one too. Boom. Joining us now from a different league is a man who's a senior insider for the NFL. Whoa. He's a senior insider for NFL's network. He's a senior insider for NFL's website. Whoa. He's a senior insider for NFL's program. He's a senior insider for NFL streaming service. Senior. NFL Plus. Plus. Host of the weekend wrap up with Rap Sheet and Friends, us being the friends, he being Rap Sheet. Also, host of the insiders. All three of them broke one piece of news this week. They wow. did. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Hey, 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 hey. Hey were, you guys, hey, were you guys wearing your T-shirts when you all broke that news like it was the insiders on the Fast Network for Odell Beckham Jr. going to the Ravens via uh, me, Tom, and, and Garofalo. Yeah. Uh -huh. OBJ is you know, heading to the Baltimore Ravens. That was a nice little teamwork. Hey, you guys look good out there. All right. You wearing yeah. T-shirts, huh? Was it Paul? We, uh, we, try to, we try to do a teamwork uh, every once in a while, you know, try to put it all together, get everyone on the same page. I think that was a pretty good example. Uh, now, I must say, I was wearing a T-shirt because I was what? watching the Masters like everyone else when that came in at, like, 6 o'clock last night or whenever that was. Like, oh, wow. Because, you know, he was supposed to go to the Jets. Uh, Zeke Sandu, his agent, was going to go with him. And, you know, if he gets on the plane to the Jets, you kind of figure – that deal is probably getting done. It wasn't done at the time, but if he gets on the plane, he's in the building. They're going to recruit him. Like you think that's probably happening. Instead, Baltimore basically stepped up and made sure that plane flight did not happen. And now he's a member of the Ravens. Okay, so you kind of just went through it, but your your thoughts were that he was going to end up with the New York Jets. I think we all thought he was going to go to the Jets, especially because how openly discussed it seemingly had been, and we hadn't really heard much else from the OBJ camp. The only thing we heard was not asking for 20, but also not taking three. And then there was people who say, like, well, he's asking for 15. Now he ends up getting 15, 18 maximum, it sounds like, yeah. from all of the totals. Was it Baltimore just offering more money at the end of the day? They just decided, hey, we don't want you to go to the Jets, so here's what you're asking for? Or is it just that much more significant than what the Jets were offering. Why do you think this ended up happening? And is kind of detail the timeline of when this was all kind of taking place. Okay, so I would say late last week. So today's Monday. So probably Thursday or Friday. It was pretty clear that Odell and the Jets were probably going to go down the road. Okay, wow. he, he gets the hmm. he gets the visits scheduled, and I think that vi and actually there had been a visit scheduled. I think probably about 10 days or two weeks before that, like I thought as you kind of plot all these things out that this visit with the Jets would have happened about two weeks ago and then they couldn't get on the same page money-wise. Oh. So, all right, postponed, get to owner's meeting. He ends up meeting with the Jets and the Ravens and me. Um, we had a great nice. handshake. Mm -hmm. and What's up, oh? then he kind of, Then he kind of takes a step back and, you know, it was pretty clear that the, the Jets were talking to him. And when the news gets out that uh, the Jets are going to have him on a visit, then I think it was pretty, you know, evident to the Ravens, like, either do this now, like, step up, make this happen now, or it's probably not. So basically, when that news got out that he was going to visit, the Ravens and Agent Zeke Sandu kind of got reengaged. The Ravens did offer more, not just in overall money, but in – sort of real money like this is 15 guaranteed like this is real you know so it's as show it right there almost 14 in a signing bonus all guaranteed 1.2 base that is guaranteed as well and then 3 million in incentives so that was more than the jets had on the table so much so that i think if you would ask the jets like what should he do they probably would have said take it um He's a number one for Baltimore. Probably would have been a number two for the Jets. That's a big difference. But this is a, real, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, I'd say it's a pretty good deal. And we were watching through highlights of Odell Beckham Jr. when he was with the Rams earlier today. Now, granted, we're a year removed from that, especially in the Super Bowl where he was potentially going to go on and win the MVP. Mm -hmm. Him and Matthew Stafford had a great connection. But also the way McVay used him seemingly got him open. A lot of these mm -hmm. routes were like drag routes, second, third option routes where he was kind of hiding. And he also had uh, Cooper – uh, Cup obviously taking a large portion of attention away from him on the offense. So who knows what it's going to look like.
like with Baltimore, I guess they have Mark and J.K. Dobbins is coming back, so they have a list of weapons. Are we assuming that Munkin's going to utilize him in the same fashion that McVay did? And obviously we saw Lamar and OBJ at a Miami club last yeah. night partying together in a FaceTime right. celebration, obviously welcoming. Yeah. What does this mean for Lamar? There's $15 more million out of the out of the Ravens' yeah. salary cap mm -hmm. towards OBJ, but it seems like Lamar's happy about it. What are we expecting offense-wise from OBJ? And also, what does this mean for mm -hmm. Lamar in your eyes? First of all, just the salary cap. I don't believe it's $15 million out of the salary cap. I think there are, not I think, there are voided, voidable years at the end of this. So it's going to be 15 cash, real money this year, but they're going to spread it out over probably five years. We'll see what it ends up being. Damn. Five, vo have, four voidable years, pretty much? That I don't know that for sure, but that is my guess as far as how they make Hilarious. this all happen. And then it would probably cost about five or so salary cap dollars, and then the rest you kind of push to the future. Um, but, yeah, I would say, you know, this is something that, you know, they're going to make work. Um, it's also, you know, I, I think the Lamar thing is interesting because I – you know, kind of heard but never could quite make sure that Lamar was involved in the recruiting. And then he posts a Instagram picture of him literally talking to Odell. I mean, all these, you know, there's a lot of young, really good players who look up to Odell and are friends with him. I would count Lamar as one of them. So, you know, there's no deal for Lamar that's close. But this is a pretty good indication that he's going to be their quarterback this year. Bar so, something crazy. So franchise tag potentially or probably at this point is what you're thinking? Probably, but the Ravens have have kept trying to work on it. And usually, if someone keeps trying to work on it, rather than just go, all right, forget it. What that, like you keep trying to work on it. Hopefully, there's a solution in there somewhere. Do we think the OBJ thing was a massive olive branch from Baltimore to Lamar as well? Uh, I wouldn't say olive branch because I think they needed him anyway. But it definitely didn't hurt. I mean, they are literally they were literally out, you know, hanging out in Miami the night of his like. Lamar is happy with this, and it's not like Lamar is happy because, you know, the Ravens got someone who the future number four overall pick can then throw to. Like, he's happy because he believes he's going to throw to him. So I think there was a lot of positivity just with Lamar associated with this. I think it helps out that offense immensely oh, immediately. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. a big conversation was like, hey, there are weapons around Lamar. We always talk about how Lamar is done and how proficient is he as a passer. And then you start thinking to yourself, like, well, who has he really got to throw to other than Mark, right, the tight end? Oh, yeah. Who has he really yeah, had? Well, great. well, Hollywood Brown was there. Oh, okay, Hollywood Brown was traded, though. And then when he went to Arizona, was he – as big of an impact, or is that just that offense is mm -hmm. whatever it is? It's like how much they put up, how much money they've spent at the wide receiver room oh. over the last few years versus what they're paying Odell Beckham. I do wonder if it's Baltimore showing to Lamar, too, like, hey, we will invest in helping you, like, be a weapon. Is it, yeah, Warren Sharp, six oh, million, that's interesting. Six million to William, uh, Willie Sneed, Sammy Watkins, Nelson Aguilar, Rashad Bateman, Marquise Brown, Seth Roberts. I mean, like, they haven't really. Wide receivers, not really not much now. that they're going for. And then everybody's like, well, Lamar can't throw the ball. It's like, who's he fucking throwing the ball to other yeah. than tight end? So getting him a weapon might have been also show good faith. Like, hey, we're going to try our best to make this as and you as good as possible. And they got to know J.K. Dobbins, Mark, OBJ. They get Lamar back in there with that offensive line. It's like all of a sudden the Ravens are a team oh, yeah. again if, that, if it all works out how it's supposed to, Ian. Plus – we still have the draft, and like, might they take a receiver? Also, like, possible. You know, like, I don't, Damn. I don't think they'll be like, all right, we're good. Like, I think they, they could take one still. But here's something interesting about Odell. Like, you showed the clips of him playing for the Rams, and you know, had he stayed healthy in the Super Bowl, probably is a Super Bowl MVP. I would say. I mean, that, you know, he looked really good. He, his knee, his ACL was not fully healthy at that point. Obviously, he tore it. But it was not healthy before that. And I think we've discussed this here. You know, a year removed, more than a year removed from ACL surgery, his knee is probably healthier than it has been in quite some time. Like, that is, they're going to be getting a very good and very healthy player. A couple years older, 
but much healthier. And I assume nobody's expecting him to play all 17 games, right? None of us are going into this no. thinking he's going to play all 17 games, probably take a couple games off, uh, rest a couple, maybe have a tight hammy or something. He's a Lamborghini, though. Like, this is how yeah. life is. He's going back into a cold division. Right. You know, so weather certainly has an effect. It's a little bit different than Los Angeles. But I think if he's playing at the end of the season when games matter, he's going to make plays for the Ravens, and that's all you're signing him for. You're signing him for weeks 14 through the playoffs. That's what you got OBJ here for. $15 million was a lot, I think, in a lot of people's eyes, especially with how the wide receiver market has been this particular free agency circuit. Do we know how much the Jets were, uh, Jets were offering? Um, I don't know for sure. Uh, my sort of sense was it was around like the Michael Thomas deal. I, again, like this is just my my so my like thought. Eight. Yeah. No, no, it was like ten with a chance to get to fifteen or something oh. like that. Oh, okay. Hmm. Um, so it would be, you know, like you'd say like up to fifteen, but then it would really be like ten base, something around there. Man. Which, like, if you had told me three weeks ago, Odell's going to make. 10 million base with a chance to get to 15, I would say very solid. This is more. This is a lot more. It's like, just, I'm, I'm, you know, I just know when I, when we came out, we as a team came out with the $18 million number, <laughs> everyone texted me like, oh, that's garbage. Like, what's the real number? And 15 is a really well, strong real really number. Yeah, a lot of people were losing their mind to it. The fact that you didn't report that there was four votable years, though. Right. Obviously, poor journalism. But, I mean, that's just... It's all three of you missed it, yeah. so it's not just you. It's the whole team. Do the, do the best you can. Yeah, maybe go back in the locker room, evaluate that whole thing. But if you start doing the math, if it's over five years and it's about fifteen million in full guarantees, you just go ahead and separate that over five years. It's fucking three million per. Simple. And then you—that's only cap, though. Remember, the cash is all fifteen this year. No, yeah, can new, yeah. yeah, yeah, but the cap. This is the little game. Yeah. This is kicking the can down the road, though. Mm -hmm. This is the Ravens yeah. seemingly starting to go all in, which we assume what Lamar Jackson's contract will look like as well. But we see this with the Rams just a little bit ago. Oh, yeah. How will they dance around those waters of not becoming a completely fuck team mm -hmm. right. if it doesn't work out in a couple years? We shall see. But good for Ravens fans. Mm -hmm. Hey, your team's in it. Yeah. yeah. Your team's still making plays. And it seems like Lamar Jackson's happy. They were in the club last night. And bottle service brought a welcome... Mm -hmm. Lamar and OBJ uh, yeah. over to the table. Lamar looks so cool. Oh, my God. Chilling. So cool in that club. I mean, I'm happy they're having a blast, and I'm happy Ravens fans are getting something to, like, look at. Where were they? Do we know? Probably 11. I don't know. Miami. Do we know all the places? No. There's a bunch of new places. Miami mm -hmm. was – did you see that UFC fight? Big weekend. Everybody was there. So many people. I, I missed it. When was it? Saturday. It was late. What kind of questions what, that? When was the UFC fight? Yeah, no, it was uh, Wednesday. It was Wednesday night at. Uh, Are they only Saturday? Maybe Friday. I don't know. This guy. Crap. Come on. Crap. Welcome to 2023. To what Dana hates Welcome journalists. to the modern Maybe world. He does one bury one journalists on a regular mm -hmm. basis. It's mm -hmm. because of things like that. I bet. Yep. Dan, have you heard what Dana says about journalists? Uh, the very people who help publicize his event. Uh, no, no, they're not people. No, that... I understand. Everybody needs everybody. Okay, hey, ELE, we all do that. Right. That is not how it goes in that world. No, no, no. no. He comes on. Really? This, he comes on this program, and he'll sit right in between me and AJ. He'll be, his face will be like right over yonder here, mm -hmm. and he just right. goes on like a four minute promo. Mm -hmm. These you dumb motherfuckers. Fucking scumbags. Boom, 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 boom. Very adversarial. Wow. And then at one point, I think he gave like, uh, yeah, but. I mean, what do they know or something like that? I'm like, is this going to be forever, you think? And he goes, well, I don't know. And it's like, feels like. <laughs> it sounds like it is. It's going to be. Because he does those press cards. It would be like Roger Goodell coming out every Monday morning being <laughs> like, these journalists have no fucking clue what they're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. They're focusing on this ref call. How about these other thousand good calls? And then every single Sunday morning, instead of kickoff shows, they have Roger Goodell answering questions mm -hmm. to the press. Because Dana does those press conferences every Friday, pretty much, or every Thursday, yep. where all the media is there. And he, it is a fascinating relationship wow. between him and the people that ask the question. Mm -hmm. It seems to work, though. Yeah. It's the fight business, so there's always going to be conflict. But that UFC 287 this week, you missed a good one. It was a great one. It was a blast. Yeah. yeah, never been to wrestling, never been to UFC, and I've been to only one boxing match. I gotta I gotta I gotta get out in the world. It's pretty embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. It feels like those UFC events you would love. There's a lot of this. Yep. Uh -huh. There's a lot of this going on. A lot of boozing. A lot of boozing. A lot of that. Yeah. yeah. What's up? Wow. Bro? And then, that's my that's good. Boom to the mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, Suckle Pereira. A lot of them. Don. Knees. Locked up. Don. There's a guy named Curtis something. 
Bill, no. Curtis something? I'm, I did see you say uh, Rob Font. That dude's a fucking beast. dog. Yeah. Rob Font's an absolute dog. There were some battles. Yeah. Dude. Like there it was, was some great card. It was. Mm -hmm. It was a great card. <laughs> and the Jorge Gilbert Burns one was like the least. Yeah. And that was the one that I think everybody thought was going to be Chris Curtis. There it is. That dude went over and dapped up Theo Vaughn afterwards. Nice. He fucking, he's a dog. An absolute dog. These dudes just go in there and, for lack of a better description, go to war. Ian. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just Try and kill the other guy. Ready to do. It is wild that that's, that's their life. But I think they're getting paid handsomely. Mm -hmm. You need to experience a little bit more rap. Okay? Wake no. up. Come on. What's your problem? Real, I got to get up. I got to get involved in this. Where It's where? It's in Vegas, I assume? All right. It was in Miami. Just said this it was in Miami. Rap sheet. Uh, Connor has a question for you, Rap. Connor has a question for you, Rap. Yeah, Rap, is there anything happening with the draft around this time now? Are there any guys who are flying up or dropping down? And are there any, like, just storylines in general we should probably keep an eye out for now? I mean, for I would say for right now, as the public and the media kind of learn all these guys, which is probably, like, the process going on right now, Main thing is, like, get guys on your radar who, like, whatever your team is, like, all right, maybe they have him in for a visit, or maybe they're targeting this position. Uh, there's a lot of, like, sort of learning on the public landscape right now. A lot of it has to do with the quarterbacks early, right? Because I think most people believe that it'll be Bryce and C.J. Stroud, one, two, in some order. And then the biggest question is, you know, well, obviously, who is number one? But then – what do the Cardinals do after? And do the Colts feel like they have to jump up and get someone like basically like do the Colts trade to three or is someone else going to trade to three and get presumably Will Levis or whoever they end up wanting? Like that's of all the draft questions. Now that number one has gone, what happens to three is probably as big a question as it gets. Yeah, I think so. That's where all the leverage is. I guess that's what we'll be watching along for to see what happens. We think Carolina knows what they want. And does the rest of the NFL know what Carolina wants? Uh, I don't get the sense the rest of the NFL knows what Carolina wants, but you know they're going through the visits this week. Like Bryce Young is in there tomorrow, and Stroud's going to go, and they're going to kind of finish it up. I think it's this week they're going to finish it up and probably hone in on who they want. My guess is they kind of have an idea, but this is all like they want to go through everything, confirm like this is who they want. Ty, Ra it's, uh, sorry, Rap Sheet, is there any thought that like with the whole Aaron Rodgers situation, I know it's everyone's saying that it's basically a done deal, but then we hear the stuff about San Francisco potentially. I think a lot of people just assume that's bullshit posturing, um, but is there a chance in any way, shape, or form that like this doesn't get done, or is it already done? I mean, we heard Joe Douglas say, you know, at that at speaking engagement or whatever, like, yeah, it's done, he's going to be here. Is are they just waiting for up, yeah. Little yeah, little little up, little up, little no yeah, maybe. Yeah, are possibly. they just waiting for the draft, or is there actually a chance that this does fall apart and Rodgers ends up somewhere else? I, I would say I do not believe there is a good chance this falls apart. They don't have a deal, and I didn't, you know, really over the last week or so, probably since owners' meeting, I don't think they've really made any any head roads or whatever that is head roads hey. to. Roadheads. Road, roadhead. I don't know if they're doing any roadhead. Yeah, they, um, maybe. Have they made Have they made any headway on potential roadhead? <laughs> Who knows? That's a hard conversation. Might yeah. help with the deal. That's very, a lot. very hard. Conversation. It's pretty dangerous too. Some places. Yep. Um, I I have a couple more thoughts, but I'm not going to share them. No, oh, oh, really? You bopping over there? Oh. Um. Anyway, um, I don't get the sense they've had any traction over the last week or so, and there's really no reason to. So, like. This week, you'll get through that. Next week, and then draft week. So, again, my guess is probably draft week it happens. But everyone is proceeding as if this is going to happen. It's really just a matter of figuring out the right price. So is that why you think Douglas at a WFAN event up there? And where was it at, Bruce? Bruce, do you know the place? Bruce. Bruce. I don't actually know where it was. I said it was in Poughkeepsie, though. Just a guess. <laughs> okay. Don't know what that is. I'm assuming that's a town. But WFA. It's upstate. Okay. It's upstate even for me. It's far. It, but sports radio, big deal in New York still, right? I mean, big deal. That's oh. why Joe Douglas is at this event. It looked like a great that, event. That's the agenda in New York, I think. Yeah. Okay. It was a great – it looked yeah. like a great event for yeah. sports talk to be able to have. And I think 
Obviously, New Yorkers know this. I don't think it's like that anywhere else, really, when it comes to sports talk. Maybe up in Boston. Maybe a little bit, but not to the scale of New York. Not even close. But this event that really? Joe Douglas was at, a little boozed up, was right. asked one great question by the host, who I should know who it is, but I do not. Here's Joe Douglas, the general manager of the Jets, chatting about the Aaron Rodgers situation. So, I have to ask you. Aaron Rodgers, what's he coming? Crowd pleaser. He's going to be here. He's going to be here. Oh, yeah! Hell yeah, Joe! He looks a lot like Dayball. It looks like New York mm -hmm. is kind of being run by bald-headed whites, which uh -huh. I do uh -huh. appreciate a little bit of human from uh, Midwest getting into the big city, yeah. it feels like. He said he's going to be here. Uh, is that just because there's a deal already done that they're trying to get a little bit more from, like in his mind? Or what do you think that is? Why do you think he's so confident? So there's not a deal done. Um, I just – I think – both sides know that it's probably going to happen. It's just figuring out the right price, figuring out the numbers. And it's, you know, when you talk about draft picks, and I believe, unless I'm crazy, but I believe this would only involve draft picks, you could basically agree on a value and then figure out the different picks to go back and forth to get to that value. Um, and so, you know, I think both sides know that at some point they will get there. There's just no reason for either to give in yet because nothing has happened and they don't have to. So him saying, you know, he'll be here is him being like, I think a deal is probably going to happen. They just don't have one. But like they're both so far down the road in their minds, in their organization's plans that like – I think he's right. I think it's going to happen. Is this Joe and Guti? Is it Woody and Mark also involved? Who all is in the deciding factor? Because Joe saying a deal is going to get done is big deal if he's the one that's in the middle of it all. Yeah, I mean, he's it's him and Guti doing the deal. The owners definitely are. Owners. Mark you know, Murphy's not an owner. Let's, not, let's make sure that owner. is. My bad. Uh, the owners and or CEOs or president, right? What is it? President. 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 Um, What's this guy do? The, this one? Yeah. I mean, what what the hell is going on right now with this guy? What? Titles are kind of – he runs the show. That's his title. Titles. Yeah, being an owner is a little different than – Much sure different. You know, like uh, being the 32nd person at the one per club meeting because you have zero ownership at all and there isn't a B before your wealth, you know? A little bit less power. That, Probably not in this situation with an owner. Yes. Another one. There's another uh, thing. I don't know about that. One whoa, million whoa, percent. Whoa. Are you serious? Come on. You really think? Yes. Which, just... which which situation? The Aaron Rodgers Green Bay Packers situation. No, no, no. I mean, like, you think an owner would have stepped in early, like... Five years ago. Four yeah. years ago. Yeah. When like, I drafted Jordan Love, that would have never happened, probably. Yeah, that would have been the owner. You know what I mean? Much different. That's See, that's an issue. I actually think about this way more than I probably should, because let's assume that Jordan Love is as good as they think, Right. So, like, let's say he is a dog, as one might say. No. Well, then this – this, yeah, I just – it doesn't sound good coming from me, so, yeah. Um, hey, let's hear it. Let's give on yeah, from yeah, the – Try it. Come on. <laughs> do the whole setup. We'll do it with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just got to yeah. give a little pause. All right. Yeah. Let's say that Jordan Love is the – Dog. dog. Nah, see, hey, the hey. dog is tough. It's got to be a. You know what I mean? So I think you got to go back because saying yeah. he is the dog is a it's like top dog. dog. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. Slow down. I don't know if we're ready for that type of commitment to All anybody. Right. No, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. So let's say, but then the the delay makes it tough. Well, you, there is no delay. It's, yeah, just, no delay. it's FaceTime. It's <laughs> no. pretty. So, right. so let's say. Let's say that Jordan Love is a dog. dog. Nailed it, yeah. Which it could be. Could be a dog. Could be. Could be a dog. Um, then this was okay. as good a move as was the it? Packers drafting Aaron Rodgers when they also didn't have an owner, you know, 15 or whatever years ago. Um, I, I don't see. I, anyway, I think about this, if this is true, like would an owner have been like, whoa, whoa, we can't do that. Yes. And maybe does the president think about it much more of like running the business? If that's yes. the case, it's still a great move for the organization, whether or not they have – an owner. If he's a know? dog, yeah, but I, th I think the owner yeah. just being a human and having the, you know, the outright say, because it is, everybody's answering to mm -hmm. one particular voice, Agreed. as opposed right. to a potential board and somebody that doesn't have, you know, their own money in it, you know, which is Mark Murphy, a little bit different, like, owners have their money in it, he's just hired by a company, as opposed to his own money in it, not that he can't get fired, but it's just a little different, I think whenever they go to the NFC Championship game, 
there's a chance that Aaron and the owner probably have a relationship, you know, owner quarterback relationship. Hey, we get one more weapon, probably do trade in to the first round yep. and get somebody else as opposed to that. Like I think owner being a human is a big deal. Remember Kraft Bingo. saved Tom and Bill for numerous years, I guess, right? Didn't they, it wasn't it like two, three years yes. before it actually ended? Yeah. Robert Kraft I mean, sat them both down and did the whole thing. I mean, that's, that's because yeah. that person has a financial interest in this entire thing. And yeah, that, all of that, because remember the, the article came out and it was like the dynasty is ending and then they kind of got together and then they ended up winning a Super Bowl instead. Um, the, uh, what basically Kraft sort of, contribution besides owning the entire thing was like we're not trading brady ever Bingo. Uh, and so at that point it was like it wasn't a demand of garoppolo it was just like if we're not trading brady then we're going to probably trade garoppolo and that kind of you know basically kept them i think three additional super bowls whatever it ended up being but yeah like you're yeah. right if you have an owner like maybe he steps in earlier i just don't know if that would have been better or worse or less messy or not yeah, I mean, haven't had a Super Bowl, been in the NFC Championship a couple times. Mm -hmm. You know, could have potentially gotten him over the hump. One person being like, nah, we're fucking going for it right now. You know, that's a whole that's a whole different Maybe, mindset yeah. as well. Good point. And also, like, you know, billionaires, founders, mindsets, a little bit different than corpo people that have kind of gone up there, you know, because they're a little bit more, I don't want to say creative, different. But it, normally these dark hole things that we hear about – coming from super successful people, uber successful people are doing all these things. I would assume Aaron's relationship with a billionaire would be a little bit different than maybe Mark Murphy, who's had to kind of climb his way through it all in good coons. Not that it's bad. I, I assume Mark Murphy's a good person. I don't know him really. Yeah. But like those, I think those super uber rich people seek out those that are a little bit different to kind of do their thing. And then like the layers of corporate people are all kind of trying to plug in place. Just my own personal experience, but I think having an owner would be a different world in Green Bay, but it's worked out for a long time, and Ty Schmidt's a fucking owner. Well, oh, yeah. Even like the year when they were the number Congrats. one seed and they got beat by, <laughs> thank you very much, and they got beat by the Niners when Odell went to the Rams. Like the Packers like lowballed him, offered him a real low offer, but you can imagine uh, after the every, minimum, I think. Yeah, yeah. They, exactly. But, if but they, they made him an offer, they remember? Did. Mm -hmm. But if they have an owner, a guy who is hearing what Roger's saying, like, hey, he could be the guy who gets us over the hump. You know, like, I want to play with this guy. And the owner says, all right, fuck it. Let's do whatever we got to do to bring him in. Odell doesn't go to the Rams. He comes to the Packers. Like, we, this could be an entirely different conversation. Yeah, and it wasn't a quarterback, but it just happened with the Colts and T.Y. Owen. Yeah, Jim, Jim Irsay had to get involved with T.Y. Hilton. Hey, you're not going anywhere. You're staying here. Now, granted, he went to the Dallas Cowboys one year later, made a couple big plays for him. Yeah. Hate that T.Y. wasn't in Indianapolis. Cole thought he was retired. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if Jim Irsay knew he was still potentially wanting to play football. But I think owner changes it a little bit, the dynamic. But if it works out with Jordan Love being a yeah. dog. No. No. There it is. That's pretty, pretty good. good. That's good. good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Wow, None of it matters. That. Tone has a question for you, Ian. Ian, I saw Hendon Hooker is visiting the Lions who have 6-18. and 18. Is it pretty much a foregone conclusion that he gets into the first round at this point? Uh, it's not a foregone conclusion, but it's definitely something that, like I would say three weeks ago or whenever the combine was, I'm like, ah, I don't, now it does feel like that, you know, because his – He's coming back well from his ACL, which was just a clean tear. I mean, not just, but which was a clean tear, which bodes well for his progress going forward. There's a lot to like, you know, on field and then also like human as a leader, like all that stuff. And if the quarterbacks go early, like let's say we get four in the top 10, which is certainly not out of the realm of possibility, then there's a bunch of other teams that would say, I can take someone and even if – He's not 100% healthy by week one. He's at minimum my backup, and he's a backup for a year, and then we'll see. Um, I could see Hendon Hooker going in the first round, and if the quarterbacks, if the top four go really early, then the biggest question from, like, 15 on is who takes Hendon Hooker in Kansas City? I'm, I'm pumped for Hendon Hooker to kind of get in the conversation. Yes. There's a chance Colts trade out. Yeah, yeah, and Brad still did. end up mm -hmm. potentially getting them. There's so sure. much on the line at the draft, and we know you'll be covering it expertly on NFL Network, NFL.com, and NFL Plus. Plus. Host of the Insiders, along two other people that broke the same news just yesterday about Odell Beckham Jr. to the Ravens. We appreciate the hell out of you, Ian. 
Appreciate you guys. Take care. What'd you do? You were on uh, Bobby Flay's program? <gasps> what? 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 Uh, we we took a picture together. Ugh, um, we took a on pic in a kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, so the internet, I was, I was cool. cool. I'm and when I finally got sober, which was never fucking never, because I never ever. Uh, that's not very nice. Uh, it was a very, very cool experience. Were you boozed very up there? What? You boozed up there? No, no. It was in the morning. So? so? Not that I've never, I'm just saying, in that particular morning. What did you, you know, do there? It was fun. Did you cook against them? Did you try to beat them? No. <laughs> no. Good program. No, I, I uh, was very informed about other people trying to beat him. The whole experience oh. was amazing. Like, that's a great operation. Very cool. You're getting into the little food world, huh? Because first you had that tailgate takedown. Yep. Right. Shout out, Jude. Balls yeah. in his mouth. You did incredible. You were the star of that whole thing. Oh, a little uh, tiny ball is exploding in my mouth. Yep. I love it. Remember, that was like the oh, first yeah, that, take that, 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 that he that had. Tagline. I yeah. remember. Yeah, no, 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 that was obviously premeditated. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. If we get any ball-shaped thing, I'm going to say it exploded in my <laughs> mouth, which was good play by you. Good play by you, because got you on fucking Bobby Flay's kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Are you a new I food star? Uh, I'm definitely not a star, but I am very appreciative that they let me play around because it is fun. Plus, like you get to eat the food, which is usually really good. You're doing it's, the horses. It's been awesome. I hope I do more. You're doing the horses with Joey Molinaro. That's, That's right. right. He's doing the food with Bobby Flay. Uh -huh. Wow. This what guy's all over the place. What doesn't this guy? What a do? superstar. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rapport. Yeah. Deserve it all, pal. Yeah, Deserve Woo. it all. Flay's well, a scumbag. Man. What's that? Yeah. He tried having sex with Mrs. Ari. Yeah, I know. Can't have it. Mm -hmm. Bobby fucking Flay. Yeah. That was messed up. He's a dog, though. Mm -hmm. How about him saying dog? Wasn't bad. Not yeah, bad. pretty good. He had a little bass in his voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the first two were probably terrible, but we didn't get to hear them. Because we were speaking over top of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're a team place. Yeah, yeah true. Exactly. Big time team place. Um, let's talk about some teams that he talked about there. Lamar Jackson was, or sorry, Odell Beckham Jr. was going to the Jets. Yeah, yeah. that's wild. That's what I just heard. Mm -hmm. Don't get on that plane. Why not? We want to make you a $15 million guaranteed offer. Right now. Really? Yeah. All right, deal. Sounds Fuck. good. Well, yeah. then he called the Jets, and he, or it was reported at least that he then called the Jets like, "Hey, you got 15 for me?" Hey, or? this one, I'm not getting on this plane. Okay, we should have done this two weeks ago, which is what we've been saying. Mm -hmm. Ravens just said they'll give me 15 million guaranteed. You guys want to do that? Jets say, "You got to do what you got. We still got to figure out Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. You do what you got to do. Good mm -hmm. luck out there." Hypothetical. Okay. Let's say the Aaron trade has already happened. Uh, the Lamar deal at this point has not happened. Do you think he takes less money to go play with Aaron? Um, do you think Aaron not being done had an effect on Maryland that? taxes are terrible too, I think, right? Maryland taxes, I think, are pretty I terrible. So. I think that whole DMV area mm -hmm. has pretty Bad. high taxes. Because you gotta account for that obviously immediately upon seeing how much money he's making or how much money Uncle Sam is making yeah. immediately off of what he signed for. New Jersey, New York, very, very high. Mm -hmm. So I think similar equivalents of taxes. I think Nick's looking it up right now. But taking a hair, uh, a pay cut to go play with Aaron to chase a ring in his eyes would certainly be a move that he would have had to make. Because as soon as I saw this, I'm like, $15 million, you got to say yes to that if yeah. you're Odell Beckham Jr. at this stage. In this market. Because remember, this wide receiver market, people have already gone. First wave of free agency. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When all the money's being spent, I think like $22 million was the most that was spent. And it was on Lazard over like a five-year deal or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, this is a $15 million guarantee over a five-year deal. As well, it's just all voidable years on the back end, which is a little salary cap gymnastics that everybody does. But as soon as I saw the deal, I was pumped for Odell. I'm like, good for you. And then you start thinking about that Ravens team. You start piecing it together. It's uh, like, yeah. maybe they are able to kind of go on a little bit of a run. Maybe Odell Beckham Jr. adds a little bit of a spice to their team that they need to open up that offense. Munkin's coming. The last time that he was with Odell Beckham Jr. was in Cleveland. Odell Beckham Jr.'s first year in Cleveland. He had like 100 and some targets, went for over 1,000 yards, had a lot of success. Then he goes down to Georgia, obviously wins mm -hmm. a couple national championships. Yeah. Now he's back in the NFL. He was probably a massive piece of telling Harbaugh, like, hey, if we can get Odell, I got a lot of shit that we can do mm -hmm. with Odell. Mm -hmm. Before the Cleveland Browns and Odell Beckham Jr. blew up and imploded on itself, he had success with Munkin as the offense coordinator. Seems like they could go on a run as well. And if you got Lamar, you got an anomaly, a quarterback, you can go win this thing. Yeah, Monken was the one person I – that was the one place I didn't want Monken to go because I feel like with Lamar he can do some some things, some incredible things because that offense down in Georgia – was awesome, and then Rashad Bateman's been hurt, and I I think he was a first round pick two years ago, and he's been pretty good when healthy. Yep. So I mean, they definitely look in a better place today than they were last week for sure. Odds did not change at all. No, though. they did. Thirty five wow. to one, thirty five to one. Lamar gets signed though. 
and yeah. gets that whole thing settled, it'll probably drastically improve. I agree. Excited to see what Odo Beckham Jr. is able to do with Mark Andrews taking a lot of attention in the mm -hmm. middle of the field. Yep. Oh, yeah. Lamar Jackson freezing safeties. Mm-hmm. And then Odell getting a chance to kind of go one on one with corners. Yeah. So if they have the drag route, which we saw Matthew Stafford and him have a lot all the way across the field type shit, and him being able to just go, there's a chance Odell Beckham Jr. has a massive year and gets a massive payday. And maybe the Ravens in a talent littered AFC are able to go on a run. Let's get to a break. Hour two will be on the other side with AJ Hawk. Yeah. We'll also be joined by Sham Sharania. Oh, okay. Shams, what's going on in basketball? Everybody's fighting each other. You guys yeah. got a little UFC 287 yeah. on the mind? No kidding. They all think there's the last style bender. What's going on? These guys. Thought they're supposed to be on a team with each other. Yeah. yeah. Put your swords down. Playoffs are about to start. ELE. ELE. They got pissed. One guy punched the wall, broke his hand, can't play. Yeah. yeah. Very, Very good playoffs. player. Just so mad. Yeah. Your season's yeah. over. Hope it was worth it. They yeah. might not make Walls it Walls have a pretty good record against hands. Walls, pretty good. Yep. There are some particular walls, though, that the studs yeah, you find. kind of like, and you Luckily, get. I've seen a guy go through a wall, and I'm like, God damn. <laughs> and then you like closer evaluation. Just this. It's like, damn, if that was two inches to the right, so close. That's probably broken this one, this one, yep. and potentially this yeah, one. Yeah, all the above. But instead, we're just going into a game day, all good. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Couldn't imagine that guy had a big fucking cast on oh, his hand. No. We would lose. Here's McDaniels. Somebody down here. Obviously, is a little bit stressed. Not as stressed as McDaniel's, though. Oh, yeah. Fucking broke his hand. Yep. They're going to need him, too. The bike will fix that. Well, he's humble, though. <laughs> he is humble. Yep. Amen. He is fiery. That's mm -hmm. a good point. Got a lifelong lesson. Yep. Sean Shrani will join us in about 15 minutes to talk about it. AJ Hawk will be on the other side. What has that menace been up to? It's mm -hmm. good question. Nothing good, I assume. You know what I mean? Probably throwing kids in his lake during an Easter egg hunt. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of eggs at the bottom of that lake. <laughs> yeah. Look. <laughs> Dad, you said there was 15 eggs. I only found one. Go look at the bottom of that lake. <laughs> Tell me how many are down there. Sorry, swimming. <laughs> Remember that game they used to throw those sticks to the bottom of the pool? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That was, yeah. Awesome. was a great game. That was a good game. It yeah. was. People played Kids that everywhere. don't do that anymore. No, they don't. And they used to have those torpedoes. Those were awesome. You could throw to each sick. other under the water. Yeah. Those little, those little stick things yeah, that yeah. go mm -hmm. to the bottom. Sometimes the only reason to go into the pool was to yeah. go get those. Exactly. And then come back out of the pool. And the rings. Rings were awesome, rings too. Were great. Used to feel like a fucking dolphin under there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. They, they still exist. I've done it with my nephew last summer. They're good. They're sweet a to lot of fun. too. Foxy, I didn't know you're a big, fat fucking redneck. Oh, well. Hey, this hick, weekend I was. Hickasaurus out there. <laughs> Hell yeah. I was out in that cornfield on the four-wheeler. Wide open. It looked awesome. That's such a good feeling. Yeah. It you really is. It, I want a four wheeler now, but I don't have the land here for it. They we have two right down the road down mm -hmm. there. If you can, yeah. Here's Foxy on a side by side. Oh yeah, dude. Flying. The thing is sweet. It was souped up war kit. Hey, take a picture. <laughs> dude, it was so awesome. Look that, at thing, me. that thing can go like 60 miles an hour. Just real quick, the feeling of how high that is in the air. Like when those don't even get off the air uh -huh. or off the ground, you oh. feel like you're in the air. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Sweet. So the fact that that thing is that high and you're still posing for yes. the camera, that take some real gut sack, Foxy. You should be proud of yourself. That hill we went up straight up, like actually straight up. So that's how we got all that air. It was it was such a good weekend. You were shopping for some, you know. Some of those, uh, not the. I want jet ski shopping. There it is. Oh, yes. Hell yeah. Yes. Real first class Go. thing of me. Need it. That would be like. They're very expensive. Oh, so yeah. expensive. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. they expensive. I did not know that. Brand new team for them. First time I ever looked. Was Never that? seen anyone have a bad day on a jet ski, Pat. <laughs> Wasn't that Tosh.0, oh, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Daniel Tosh said, yep. Money can't buy happiness. Have you ever seen anybody not smiling on a fucking yeah. jet ski? He's still doing it. Oh, yeah. Tahoe. Well, I was not was smiling. Was not smiling. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, it's time you use one. Lake Tahoe had that's the, different. That's different. Your the lake moon. will be perfect for it. Yeah. I don't know. I was checking some kids out this weekend. They were flying around on jet skis out there. This early. Dude, there's people out it's there. It's chilly out there. Cold. Shorts, I saw one of them. Oh, jeez. Maniac. Dog. Maniac. Automatically assume though that person's on drugs. Yeah. Yeah. That person's on drugs. Safe you, assumption. You'd be able to this weekend, though. It's supposed to be warm here yeah. in Indiana. Yeah. Was well, that? this weekend, big weekend. Yes, huge weekend. But I just mean in general, the weather. Now it's supposed to be beautiful. Yeah, it may have broken. We might be in spring. We might be. 
Careful, yeah. boys. I put my no, snowblower we're in, in it, storage. Boys. We are Careful. in it. What'd you do, Tom? Put my snowblower in storage. Holy shit. You know what that means? Groundhog didn't see a shadow. That's right. Mm -hmm. Did you even have to use that thing, Tony? Nope. Not this year. This okay. year, uh, apparently there's winter snow. doesn't fucking exist over here. It stinks. Snow in L.A. Yeah. yeah. Not here. Texas. Mm -hmm. Vegas. Florida. We had those two days. That's why you need to drive an electric course. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Exactly. What a day that was when they told me that I've done more harm to the earth. How could you have known? What? When I bought an electric car. They're not telling you that when you're buying it. They're telling you how much you're saving. I literally bought this thing to grandstand. Yeah. Like, that's what I did to walk into conversations go, oh, you hate the earth. <laughs> Bad person. Mm -hmm. Literally, the only reason why I got it. You should have known there was another side. Bam. Always, always is. There are always another it's side. like stats. Always another side. Well, did you know you're actually hurting the earth more than you could ever help it with the battery that is in that vehicle? Well, no, nobody told me. No, I, I was just told. That, I was told it was very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez Louise, what a wild world we're living in, and we're lucky to be a bunch of dumbasses talking about sports in the middle of it. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take. I was about to say we need five. Wow, secession last night. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, need five from that too. Holy fuck. Fuck off. Take five. Bye. 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 Well, nonetheless, as of February 1st, uh, Pat McAfee is officially a contributor with WWE. I've been preparing for this my entire life. McAfee wins! McAfee wins! Pat McAfee has done it again! It's time to toast the boys and toast the brand! McAfee's wanted to drink beer with Stone Cold forever! Stunner! Stunner! There's a point in my life, all I could think about doing was professional wrestling. McAfee closing in on another WrestleMania victory! First, we're gonna have to get the okays, obviously. And we did from people high up. They were the only people that knew for a while. There was like three people that knew in the whole world that that was gonna potentially be a situation for a little bit. City of Stars, Boston Connors here. We will be there tonight. Nobody's supposed to know we're here. It's gonna be tough. And if you're a man, it's only known for wearing tank tops. You kind of gotta cover it up. There's some bunk beds there. You know, there's a shit on a shower here in the back. He sat in that bus six, seven, eight hours, no, nine, ten up. hours. I'm coming down, I think. Holy fuck, what a view that's gonna be. Hell yeah. Look at all those fucking people are gonna be there. Just waiting, you know, for an opportunity to potentially have a WrestleMania moment. It's ridiculous. It's awesome. WWE is just like the best at operating. They take care of the non-obvious. We're very thankful to be here. And tonight should be welcome. Hell yeah. I think there's like three people that know I'm here. Are we not supposed to come in here? No. Yeah. All right. Four now. Four Look now. at you. I not say a word. I'll see you at uh, SoFi. You going to be in LA? I don't know. George is, uh, you know. It's a maybe, loaded question. George, we don't know. George, you don't know. Maybe. Okay. What's up, Stark? Oh, nice. <laughs> As soon as I saw George showcase that yeah. tight end university tank top, I knew there was a chance old George about to do something special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me, boys? Welcome to WrestleMania! You know, the night was getting late. We're sure. Yeah. We, we didn't know if a moment was going to pop up where maybe my services could be utilized. I haven't been in a ring since SummerSlam, okay? Like, not even in one. All I wanted was the Miz to have an opportunity to have a match. Just a WrestleMania match. match. Yeah, yeah, good guy. Stand there. And then the Miz mentions, I sent out an open challenge, and we go, Oh my God. There it is. And I put out an open challenge. 
and no one responded. Why? Because I'm the Miz, and I'm awesome! Hey. Let's go! Wait a minute! I feel like back if he's here! I have walked out into a stadium as a WWE superstar probably a million times in my head. WrestleMania was missing Pat McAfee in the Pat McAfee show. And I'm thankful to the WWE Universe that said hello whenever I came out on that massive fucking stage. By the way, there's only two announcers undefeated in WrestleMania history, me and Pat. I can't believe McAfee's here. Hello, beautiful people. What's up, Snoop? What's up, Snoop? You're a legend, dog. You're the Hello, best, man. dog. Hello, miss. None of us saw this alleged open challenge that you said. But good news. This is my WrestleMania tank top. If you still would like a match, why don't you let me beat your ass right here, right now? You all want to see The Miz versus Pat McAfee right here, right now! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! I'm the host of WrestleMania, and I cannot make matches official. Miz, I do believe your tiny balls are showing. Tiny balls. Tiny balls. Baby meat as well. There's 80,497 people here. Somebody has to be able to make a match official somewhere. I am the dog father and the host of WrestleMania, so I feel like I could make that match happen. Right now, we got a ref. We got you. We got you. Let's get cranking. I'm out. I'm so thankful to the people at the WWE. It was a super cool night, oh. super cool moment, and I'm very thankful for it all. 5.30 a.m. Sunday. This day started 6.30 a.m. Saturday. So much cool shit happened in between now and then. 
joke of an existence. I'm very thankful for everything. Let's go take a nap. Why? Hey. Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fucking cop! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this overreaction Monday, April 10th, 2023, hour two of the sports program starts now. Rambo! Bombo won the Masters this past weekend. Congrats to him, and congrats to all of us for getting to watch that beautiful display of golf at a gorgeous golf course down in Georgia mm -hmm. on Easter Sunday. Happy Easter. We hope everybody had a great mm -hmm. weekend. The Toxic Table's here at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. And joining us live from an attic in Ohio is a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder, Ryder Cup battle winner. Yeah. Loser of the war, though. That's, That's right. right. True. To Europe. Mm -hmm. We learned that on Friday. Huge yes, bummer. After been saying it for six okay. months. Mm -hmm. At least. Ladies and gentlemen, video game shitster, NBA pundit, father of 10, COVID survivor, AJ Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. AJ, how are you, pal? How's the weekend? I'm good, man. It was great. I'm sure you had good weather in uh, in India, I would imagine. So that made uh, Easter even better. It was great. It was beautiful. That's why watching uh, the Masters on Saturday when they were dealing with weather, it was like, yeah, it sucks to be you guys. But <laughs> yeah, sorry. up here in Indiana, bright, uh, bright, bright, shiny day. Clear skies, beautiful weather. Saw zero animals get assassinated on the lake that I live. That happened at the last holiday. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was good. Last holiday, uh, lake was frozen except for some spots. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So the ducks that live on the lake were just going to these certain tiny little spots of water. And then the eagles, you know, easily spotted them. That's right. And they were actual sitting ducks. Yep. Mm -hmm. So National Geographic was happening behind my house at the last holiday where eagles were grabbing ducks and slamming their heads repeatedly off the ice. Mm -hmm. And then the ducks would go to a new chunk of water <laughs> and the eagles would... <laughs> Sniff them out, find them over there. 45 minutes to an hour straight, middle of holiday, hosting at the house. Eagles smashing ducks' heads yep. off of ice. So with the clear skies, the beautiful weather, there were some boats out on the lake. Whoa. Hey. There was people skiing out on the lake. Jeez. It was a beautiful day. Got to see the whole family. It was magical, AJ. I couldn't even fathom how it was for you guys. Did you have to hide a bunch of eggs? Yeah, we did. A, the kids took, took part in multiple little uh, egg, egg hunts, I guess. But, yeah, they, there's always... There's always a couple golden eggs where you get a special treat if you get the golden Ooh, egg for those things. Whoa. Kids fight to the death for those things, and then they get pissed and fight. And but it was great though. That's what you do. So what do you put in one of those golden eggs? Well, this the golden eggs we're at. We don't we don't do golden eggs here at our house. It's if someone else's does it. Other places do that. They get a uh, Axel actually got. He got traded in for a sweet big old Nerf gun, like an automatic oh, Nerf yeah. gun. Holy oh, shit! Sweet. Axel yeah. sniping around the house because the golden egg that he found at Easter uh, Jesus is. Day of Birth, resurrection. Coming back. Mm -hmm. Yes. What did he do for those three days, right? Because there was three days he was in there. Mm -hmm. You think he was trying to find his way out of the cave because it was so dark because that rock was in his oh, throat? Dope. Have they, we talked? Maybe. Was he, <laughs> was he potentially smoking some dope in there? Because he did do, boom, fire. Mm -hmm. Let me get some tree. What was going on for three days? I Ooh. assume just getting yoked inside that cave. Like, He's curling. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Big stones and stuff like that. Like, hey, when I come back, I need people to realize how fucking jacked I am. So he was getting ready for beach season, which yeah. was actually just scene season. That's right. right. Where he was about to be seen again. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, I want them to remember what I look like whenever I, they thought I was dead. Yeah. Jocked. Bingo. Three days. Pretty good amount of time. He must have had <laughs> so days. much HGH in his body. Oh, Think about yeah. the amount of HGH. That Jesus Christ was able to pump into his body <laughs> if he McGuire. wanted to. Because recovery would have been crazy there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so he's getting jocked. I think so. <laughs> All right, well, shout out to him because Easter's a good time. Yeah, I, great, great, great time. Hey, I had good – Um, I had great. I ate terribly this weekend. Reese's eggs. Oh, my oh. God. What are, what are, like – are there Easter staples for food? Hom. Hom. I think everybody eats hom. And then if you have hom, you got to have stuffing. 
I think you got to have some stuff. Oh, okay. My mom stuff. has this new sweet potato thing that she's been making. Casserole? Mom, not, not the biggest cook growing up, but she has uh, kind of gotten into it over the years here. Has a brand new kitchen. Yeah, it's like a nice, it's not a casserole. It's sweet like, potato pie. There's like apples in there as well. Ooh. It's like a full, Whoa. really good. It's Sam's sweet potato Sam's, medley. Yeah, it is. It is pretty nice. Sam's mom made this like corn casserole. Oh, oh sure. that shit is fire. There's cornbread in it. Mm -hmm. And then some other stuff. I mean, then obviously you go straight to the chocolates that are fucking Never any. I mean, I deviled eggs. Easter, oh, certainly some deviled eggs in there. I mean, Easter has become like mm -hmm. a big time eating holiday uh, for me. sure. It's a shame. I got to get back on it. I've been fat since mania. I've been just eating everything, and then I knew Easter was going to be the end of it. But goddamn, I had a great one yesterday, AJ. I, is that how it is for you? You just get your grilled chicken, white rice, yep. mm -hmm. and then give me the uh, beef jerky in yep. uh, Reese's yep. egg wrapper. That's right. And then bang, we're off and running. Or do you? Kind of feast a little bit on an Easter, AJ. Uh, no, I mean it's all we ever eat on Easter is like brunch, and I love brunch. So I ate oh. three thousand eggs and some oatmeal and whatever, and some fruit. Jeez, slow oh, down. Man. I love it. That's man. my favorite meal ever. If you can go someplace and they have the big old like containers where I get to scoop my own eggs onto my plate, and they're not too well done, they're a little bit soft and runny. That's my Ooh. ideal okay. situation. Okay, so that's because uh, you saw what I was doing there. I was scooping the eggs off the top that are cooked a little bit more. You're going down to the bottom of the yeah. egg thing. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't like really? I don't like super cooked eggs that are you know real yellow and hard. That's not my thing. Oh, so that texture does like that kind of snotty oystery mush. texture mush doesn't affect you whenever you're eating it. It does not, and I am a texture guy, so it is kind of weird. Yeah, it is. That's why I go to the top. I, I want mine hard. Yeah. I, I scrambled hard, over hard. Yep. I want that thing cooked as it can possibly be, mostly because I'm going sandwich with it almost all the time. Mm. But also, I don't like that loose feeling. Wow, I think you're the first person maybe I've ever met. Are you? Really? I thought you liked it like that, honestly. I really oh, did. I go straight from the top. I, I scoop I'm off the top. I'm chopping up everything, getting to the bottom if, they're, if it's full. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Didn't see that coming. My mind is blown right now. Yeah. Is it really? Is that, is yeah. that a big thing? Yeah, because I'm always. You guys all like hard eggs over there, everybody? I'll eat runny. Somewhere, somewhere in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. yeah, I'll eat the runny ones. Wow. That's interesting. I've never. You go down to the bottom, huh? I, I'm not looking for it, but it won't, you know, cause me to not eat them. No, no. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. That we 100% in on scrambled eggs. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm getting them and for whatever reason they don't make them to be actually cooked. Like, I guess, eight, I didn't even know there was a person mm -hmm. that potentially liked them like that. I'm not going to not eat them. <laughs> yeah. I'm still going to eat them. Okay. But I'm very confused with the chef, though. I'm like, how did you, how is this with scrambled eggs? Pretty like, easy. Was the like, I know how to make scrambled eggs, and I'm a fucking stooge in the kitchen. So now I know that some people like that. I did not, I honestly, this is just like I learned that people like the fucking room temperature water. Oh, yeah. yeah that's well, right. That, I had that's no idea. I thought everybody yeah. liked ice water. That's a problem. I don't I'm, mind that. I don't mind room temp. Yeah. Don't mind. Com Choice. Completely different right. than, like, I'll drink yeah, the yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not preferring that. I'm taking the ice water. Connor prefers that. Connor wants room temp all the time. All the time, yeah. Growing up, we had our waters in, like, a closet. Still a sparkling, sir. So I wouldn't mm. drink the uh, cold waters because those were not for me. Yacht Club. <laughs> I forgot about you mean you weren't yeah. allowed to, Connor? No, just typically uh, my mother and father would put their waters in there, and I took them one time, and boy, oh, boy, it was a long night at the Campbell pay. household. For yeah. the cold water? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so okay, you, okay, so warm now. you were that not makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. You were punished into yeah. drinking the warm. Sure. Because another, I'm a big brunch guy <laughs> myself as well. True. I'm a big brunch, love brunch I fucking love it. I think it's the best. There's some cities that have incredible brunch setups. Mm -hmm. yeah. Indianapolis has a couple. How's Columbus? You got good brunches? Yeah, they got some good spots, but I don't really dabble into the lunch part of it. I, I stick strictly to the the brunch. I might get they've got grilled chicken that looks good. I'll get some of that. Of course, steak. Yeah, this fucking steak and rice, egg, white rice, white rice, yeah. white rice. Of course, uh, yeah. for, maybe some broccoli. Oh, not meal. But you're right. It is like I, I think the reason why I view it as brunch is because it's breakfast at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. But people yeah. say it's breakfast and lunch combined, and I have seen others order lunch stuff. But man. A good brunch is hard to find. Because yeah. brunch usually comes after something that was fun the night before, yeah. or it's like celebrating something. I think that's what brunch, like when I, your yeah. brain kind of triggers that. Like, oh, so, there's something going on. Something good yeah. happens. And it's always something to do. Like you go to a diner, normally there's good energy in there. Yep. Yeah. Like so, brunch is yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Brunch is a really or solid. Other with the, it's spring. Involved. That's like a Midwest thing, don't you think? It's spring. The weather's turning. Yeah. People are drinking mimosas. You're like, okay, but, cool. Like people are, we're back outside now. Here we go. Music playing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, normally the, if you want to dabble, I know you would never, and I don't want to be a bad influence, but 
you normally get like a French toast or a waffle yeah. oh, for like the table. Right, oh, pancake, maybe a cinnamon roll. It's like a delicious little treat there. Oh my mm -hmm. god! Yeah. Holy shit! And some places like the one in Fort Worth and or the one that you guys went to in St. Louis for one of those WWE oh, events that where they great have great DJs. Time, dude. Yeah, so are, awesome. Those are boozy brunches. Yeah, yeah. but you gotta have good food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, the boozy brunches with terrible food. It's like, oh, I'm doing the bar that everybody did last night in the middle of the day. Right. Don't need it. Can't it do sucks. It. Gotta have really good food. Mm -hmm. That's a good, I assume that's only going to continue to grow and grow and grow as people stop going out as much at night. I think now, granted, I've heard Miami is a different story, but I think a lot of different places, the night thing is kind of changing and evolving. Not as many people drinking as much, I don't think. I think like, uh, really? is that true? Really? I think so. Yeah. Uh, but through COVID drinking was rapidly up compared to normal times. It's because there's nothing else to do. It's almost like because of that, now that we're on the other side of it, it's like, hey, we can oh. go out and do other things than just booze at the house. I've is it because you're thinking that certain brands are just dying? I mean, is that why, you know, I mean, that's, that is one of the reasons why the alcohol, alcohol is I think alcohol is going to be around. That's well, it's for sure. Yeah, of course. There's a situation brewing here at the office. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I mean, what weird, was that? Weird times. Weird Out times we're living in. <laughs> what? When, yeah, we, very when, weird times. When Bruce was asking Mitt to suck his tongue this morning? No, oh. that was his holiness. Oh. Yeah, that was his That's holiness. Uh, Bruce, Bruce was just following his holiness's yeah. lead. <laughs> How about from his holiness's Twitter account, referring in third person, yeah. uh -huh. his holiness he, is always filled with the antics. He loves to joke, even if there are cameras around, okay? <laughs> He's a trickster. Suck my tongue. It's not the his kid fault the fucking it, kid can't take a joke. They edited that video, right? I mean, that thing stopped. Yeah, I need to know. Oh, yeah. I, I sure hope the kid didn't. That puts a kid in a real tough situation. You <laughs> built up who that guy is and everything. The fucking Dalai Lama? I'd say. Yeah. He went forehead, well, forehead with him. I wonder if they did the little nose. Probably. And smoke kisses. Little, yeah. little yeah. nose. Yep. His holiness kisses. Dolly was was I wonder if they did stuff. that instead of, what if the kid was like, I won't suck your tongue, but <laughs> I will. <laughs> You know, he negotiates Eskimo with kisses. The kids going to hell then. Negotiate with the Dalai Lama. And, his, I don't know what's that. his holiness. <laughs> his holy. What was that? What was that? I AJ? wasn't gonna. I wasn't going to try to say what they were negotiating. That's all. <laughs> all right. Well, his holiness says it was just shits and giggles. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Oh, right. Sorry about it. And the kid said, These "Kids don't understand jokes anymore, do they? Huh?" Well, I think the kid understood exactly what was going on. Yeah. Uh -huh. dudes, being dudes. You kids don't suck spot. tongues. Uh, I thought this everyone did this. That's I, weird. Honestly, it made me think of my kids in that situation. I was like, "That's a nightmare." That's okay, a tough spot. So I watched Murder Mystery Two. Oh, I'm sure that was good. Unbelievable. Banger. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell? It was what good. It? it was good. But there was a, uh, I believe she was French or Italian woman. Okay. In the movie. Mm hmm. And this is all going to go back to the Pope. Okay. Let's just let's just get the, there. The Pope or His Holiness? No, well, both. Okay. No, sorry. His Holiness. Holiness. Dolly Long. Dolly. Okay, right. Not okay. to the Pope. Okay. Mr. Long. Jesus. Not Mr. Holy. <laughs> yeah. His Holiness. So they meet this lady. Kiss on cheek. Mm -hmm. Kiss on cheek. Four. Right. Kiss on cheek. Kiss on cheek. Okay. okay? Four mm -hmm. of them. Four. Yep. Actually reference. Oh, there's four of them. Then another introduction. Boom. One, two, <laughs> three. For obviously people going for more. Five. Than okay. okay. So I wonder if, you know, in some places, Dalai Lama has played this game before and they're like, yeah, that's our natural tradition. Oh. You should just suck each other's tongues. Is that what he's going to say? Or how do we get past that being one of the most uh, awkward and uncomfortable situations in the history of anybody and Dolly Lama is supposed to be the perfect human right yeah, yeah I don't yeah. think we're getting past that for for a long time maybe sucking tongues is like a sack tap like a hello is what they what they do his holiness yeah his holiness yeah. his holiness has a time-honored tradition of doing stuff like this like I mean we haven't seen any footage but I know he likes to like stick his fingers up his butt and like put him in kids nostrils his holiness likes to play from time to time. allegedly we do not know if that's true or not we were just saying because the one situation we saw, we were forced to look into it at other places. Yeah. Right? And these are things that it's despicable. We're kind of being assumed. Yeah, it's all an assumption. I mean, look at this guy. Does he not look like he, he doesn't holiness like is a prankster. Suck my tongue, his holiness said to a child. <laughs> all right, let's move along.
Well, you got to get to the association <laughs> where there was not a lot of tongue sucking at all. No, no. Uh -uh. There was actually a lot of tongue punching mm -hmm. That's right. this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, seems like That's tensions are very, very high around the NBA. That's because the playoffs are right around the corner. Play-in games are happening this week, I do believe. Uh -huh. yeah. It is yeah. a big time for the NBA, and joining us now is our plug for the NBA. He's senior insider for the stadium, the athletic, and FanDuel TV, which he is on a show that has a brand-new studio. Yeah, Beautiful. sweet. Monday... Wednesday, Friday, uh, FanDuel TV. Ladies and gentlemen, the handsome Sham Shraya. Yeah! Yeah! Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. FanDuel TV, run it back. God damn it. But, but, but yo, Pat, days. what I really want to know, you know, I see you, WWE, WrestleMania, what? everything. I want to know, when you look at Rudy Gobert, I don't, yeah. is, that, is that a punch? Is that... What do you mm. quantify that as? I want I want the full breakdown from you. I guess it could classify as a failed lariat because it was a one-handed mm. throw mm -hmm. at the chest area. So I'm not a, exactly a professional, but I've been watching for a long time. If he gets through the huddle that he was on the other side of and goes tit to tit, throw to thing, I think there's a clothesline from hell topple yep. oh. that happens, you know, because that's just you can really utilize leverage. Here is just kind of a shot to the shoulder shot. Look at the, the wingspan on that. For him to get across, that's three human beings he's basically Adults. getting across from. Yeah. You look, call, yeah, that's 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 pretty impressive. I don't know if it connected as well as he thought it would, but oh, he got it done. I don't know. Do you think he was thinking face Draymond, but oh no, got to go chest. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you used to fight uh, potential friends or something, punches the body only yep. spot you're allowed to do it so that there's no bruises on the face do you think rudy gobert was like ah we oui, uh <laughs> and Dang. punches him right in the chest or how do you think that all went down because we were told and obviously we don't know if it was your reporting or somebody else's that hey won't you get a rebound hey won't you block a shot Wah! and then they fight each other that doesn't make any sense is that real in the nba that that's all it takes well, listen, I think I think that might have been the crux of, of the argument of, of, you know, like, why aren't you blocking shots? Why aren't you helping out on defense? Um, there were a lot more cuss words, though, Pat, that oh, were included in anything okay. that was said. I think there was a lot of B words. I think there was a lot of A words. You can say them. I don't know if I can say them. I don't oh. know if I have the card to say them on this show. Uh, but th there was a lot of, was a lot of cursing when it comes from Kyle Anderson you to Rudy Gobert. Yeah. And, and, and another thing is, Rudy Gobert suffered a back injury over the over the weekend as well. And he really, from what I'm told, he wasn't even supposed to play on Sunday. But he oh. ends up playing, oh. and I think there was oh, some movie. level of pressure to, for him to play. And he plays, and he guts it out. And what happens, happens. And he, like he tweeted, he put out an apology. He, no matter what was what happened, you don't react like that on the bench. And I think the, the Timberwolves right now are going through the process of figuring out, is he going to be with the team when they, when they go to Los Angeles today to play the Lakers? Wow. Kyle Anderson spoke last night like he was ready to move on and allow Rudy Gobert essentially to come back to the team and, and play, and they need him in the lineup. So I think I think there is some sense that it makes sense to kind of all move past this and get him back in the lineup, but we'll see what decision is made. Shams, in these, uh, this whole playoff game situation, play-in game situation is happening, what's the most intriguing team you think that's in there? There we go. Well, I think, I th I think the – the the Lakers are definitely the most intriguing to me out of all of these teams because I do think if they get in and they play Memphis in that two seven matchup, I think they have a chance and they have a chance to advance and and you can make a case that they have a chance to get to the you know second round or Western Conference Finals even the NBA Finals because they've done it before. Wow. We look at some of these other teams, Oklahoma City they're young, they're energetic. You love to see see them even in this environment. New Orleans Pelicans, which I'm sure oh, we're going to talk it. about here soon. I don't know without Zion Williamson if they have a legitimate chance Whoa. to move past the first round. The Miami Heat, Toronto Raptors, Bulls, Hawks, I think they've all kind of been underwhelming this year. But when you look at the Eastern Conference, it's so top-heavy. When you when you think about uh, the Bucks, Celtics, yeah. uh, 76ers, I don't know if, if any of those teams are going to beat and you know the, the top of the top of the East. So there's a little bit more longevity and staying power potential with the Lakers. I think the play-in tournament was genius because all these teams that you just talked about that aren't going to win it, you know, now there's a heightened atmosphere, so maybe the casual fan will watch it. And it's good, like, kickoff tournament for the NBA playoffs, mm -hmm. which is when it really matters and when the whole world is watching. You're in the middle of breaking some news right now. Is it the fact that Zion Williamson is actually playing Ooh. in the play-in tournament? Or what do you – we'll wait. Oh, wait. He's wired in. Oh, wait. He's, he's coding. Yeah. He's coding right now. Mm -hmm. Can I fill you in on something? NBA. What's that? Okay, so he talked about Rudy Gobert's injury. What's he play, center? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Iowa stud, Luca Garza is averaging 32 points in the G League. He's a center for Minnesota's team. I mean, what's it take to get a guy to fucking play in the NBA if you're averaging 32 in the G League? They're blackballing him. 32 Why? points, 10 rebounds. Because he's uh, from Iowa? He's too skilled, I think, honestly. And granted. Too talented. He can't play any defense. He no. can. He, he is not athletic at all. He gets flat backs dunked on six, seven times a game. So many. But he gets buckets. And last time I checked, you need buckets to win playoffs. Do they keep scoring uh, basketball? I think they do. So what's the most important part? I think scoring the basketball. Okay. And, and he, he does can it do pretty that. fucking efficiently. He does let like the other team do it all the time as well. All the time. All right, so maybe Luca gets called up, especially after that one guy broke his fucking yeah. hand on the wall. It seems like they're going through some stuff over there. What news did you just break, Shams? Um, so Rudy Gobert, oh. he will not be traveling. Wow. What? He will not be traveling. He's essentially been suspended for – Joke. The play-in game by the, tomorrow by the Wolves against. Again, is this an official suspension? Is it not an official suspension? We went through it a little bit with Zion with with John Morant, uh, with 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 the Grizzlies. Jeez. You know, they kind of sent him away. They Who? sent him home, but it's a, it's an essentially they've kept him away from the team. You like literally he, they just... sent him home when he left when he left the the, the bench area. They sent him home, and. He's gonna be. He's gonna remain home. Okay, so you just tweeted this a minute ago. We appreciate you <laughs> being here for us to kind of get the update. So the Timberwolves said, "We don't want you to travel to Los Angeles for the biggest game of the year uh, because you pushed a guy in the chest <laughs> on the what? sideline of a game." Or is this NBA saying, "Hey, Timberwolves, don't let him travel for the biggest game of the year for them with the most amount of eyes, one of the biggest names on their team." Who who makes that decision there, Shams? That's the Timberwolves. You're just saying. That's the Timberwolves organization. When when they sent Rudy Gobert home, Tim Connolly, their president of basketball operations, he came down into the locker room area and told Rudy Gobert to go home. Jeez. And there had to be more then, right? This isn't just a one time incident. Has this been building up? Sorry, reading something. Um, oh, that's okay. You do what you got to do, pal. I mean, it's breaking news in a moment. We're live. So <laughs> go. So so. This happened because when they when they had there was an altercation on the bench area, he he throws the punch, and then Kyle Anderson actually wanted to go after Rudy Gobert during the game. So oh. he so Rudy Gobert goes back to the tunnel area, goes back to the bench. Kyle Anderson wanted to follow him. Of course, Kyle Anderson had a game to play. He couldn't go back and actually follow. Him. So basically, He's it awesome. gets to halftime, and it becomes a screaming match. I'm told between Kyle Anderson and Rudy Gobert, they they have a back and forth that escalates. There's a confrontation. Essentially, that the, you know, Rudy Gobert goes going at Kyle Anderson. Kyle Anderson also telling Rudy Gobert, like, "I'll knock, I'll knock your Whoa. out." And once that said, Mike Conley, <coughs> ass? a great veteran yeah. player. <laughs> Holy shit! Mm -hmm. He said, "I'm gonna knock your." Can ass. I say? Can, can, can I say that on this show? Do I permit? So who you fucking permission? asked? Hey, am I your dad? What is, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> Sean, this is your show. So Kyle Anderson told show. Rudy Gobert. I'll knock your ass out. Whoa! Oh! 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 Jeez Louise, Sean. Oh, dang. Kids are once, watching. Once, <laughs> once that was said, Mike Conley Jr., uh, you know, I definitely played a big part in separating them, calming them down, calming the tension, and allowing everyone to move on. And I think at that point is when Tim Connolly, the president, came down and told told the group, Hey, Rudy, you got to go home. And Man, Rudy, tough. security, here's some more details. Security helped pack everything yeah, okay. up, all his belongings, and he's escorted out. So he got escorted out, sent home last night, and he's going to stay home at least through this playing game. So to me, that's a Timberwolf saying Rudy's the problem, okay? We eliminated the problem. Seems like everybody else is on Mr. Anderson's side here, including Cuz, who got up and pushed Rudy in the middle yeah. of the fight. Yeah. I thought he was. I thought Rudy Gobert was about to get – like kind of beat up by a couple of people on his own mm -hmm. team. Now we're hearing he's suspended. So this is Rudy Gobert's last season with the Timberwolves. Well, he's got a massive contract, Pat. Uh, that massive doesn't mean contract. anything in basketball. They tried, no. Did they trade five for multiple round years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's got multiple years. He, yeah, they traded four first round picks, swaps, and then Walker Kessler. I don't know how much you guys know about Walker Kessler. Ball ball ball. Rookie center. Burn he's the rookie center on. Um, on Utah, he's averaging I think like ten points, eight rebounds, like three blocks. Beast. He's got he he's got some Rudy Gobert in him. <laughs> he's just he's just way younger. So. Oh, that's they 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 they, they did they did give up a lot to get him. 
um, it that's a tough deal to trade. Um, I'll just I'll just say that. Sounds like they're gonna have to rebuild that thing then because yeah. it feels like there's one. I don't know if that's all that happened right there, and it was just a heat of the moment. And Rudy sends an apology to everybody, and the most important game's happening. But I hear security escorted him out of there. Yep. It's like, hey, this is against your will, pal. Okay, security will fucking take you out of here, and we don't want you coming. That is a wild development, seemingly, for what a trade was with the Jazz. <laughs> no. Malik Beasley, Patrick Beverly. All right, Bev. Leandro Balmero, dog. Walker Kessler, Jared Vanderbilt. 2023 first rounder, 2025 first round pick, 2026 swap, 2027 first round, 2029 first round. Jeez. Holy shit. Rudy Gobert's a dog it's on a the lot. court. Is he a guy? Hey, it's a lot. I, I think I think I just remember I think him. even yeah, he's spreading COVID I, everywhere. I think people around I think he's even people around the Timberwolves yeah. understand there's a little bit of overpayment that was done here. But th but this is a team I, I think they they've shown pr some level of promise, I think. When those guys are all on the floor, they're playing on all cylinders, I think They've shown, like, if everything was equal, if everyone was healthy, uh, you you could very well favor them and potentially pick them to beat, um, to to beat the Lakers tomorrow. But it's not equal. Jaden McDaniel, that's another thing we didn't even speak about. Rising star for the Timberwolves punches the wall and breaks his hand. What's he so mad um, about? He's mad about Rudy Gobert, or what? He's mad about somebody else. Two punches thrown. One day, one guy suspended, one guy out for the year. It's a lot. Oh, great that punch, Pat. Great that punch. Wow, well, that's the wall. We we have that footage. We actually talked about this um, earlier today. It's like walls have a pretty good record against human hands. Yeah, they're really good. You know what I mean? You just gotta kind of. I mean, he threw that thing too. It was he like does. a shot put type throw. <laughs> Fuck this wall. Ah, shit. That's cement there. What type ah. of wall is that? Cement wall. Uh, I mean, no, that's definitely not. Uh, yeah, that's hard. That's that's arena, right? That's that normally like arena, like yeah. a, uh, not Tom, wood, a farm, concrete, no, fob, a uh, something. Let's go down that. Oh, it's titled something that has a title. Oh, those yeah, we've those hall, oh. those entries into an arena, mm -hmm. fob maybe for it's shorter for something longer. So close, something like that. That's in a that's a cement. You're not going to win that one ever. No. No, you're not. Normally, if you hit like plywood, you, you could get a chance. Maybe yeah. there's no drywall. Drywall gets you a spot without a stud. Uh -huh. But that one, I think you're going to lose every time. Pat, it's, have you ever punched a wall before? Uh, when I was like growing up, I think teenage years, I probably hit one. Probably got you one. I'd seen the guy in college, though. I mean, he was. You knew when he did that, he broke his hand, though, because he, you know, sometimes you'll you'll get lucky and you won't like seriously injure yourself. You could tell the moment he punched it, he, like, grabbed his hand. It was a wrap for him. Dude, kid in college that I seen about this far away from stud, and he was a pretty important player. He, on Wednesday, put his hand through a wall. For fun? It, it wasn't, like, a pissed off. It was pretty much like a uh, – Watch this. I think yeah. people were pretty boozed up, if I oh, yeah. recall. Love Morgantown, West Virginia. Hand through wall, though, and then pull his hand back. And never ah, and then I like went and looked, and I'm like, that could have been very bad. Mm -hmm. That could have been terrible. Walls are very good. That guy, not even involved in the original fight, breaking his hand, punching a wall, and then Rudy basically getting kicked the fuck out of there. Timberwolves are upside down. LeBron James by a million. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean I, that seems like uh, that seems like a pretty easy one here. Connor has a question for you, Shams. Yeah, Shams, uh, what's going on in Dallas? Because it feels like all they did with the uh, oh. Kyrie. It's called a vom, uh, vomitorium, vom, okay. vom, vom. <laughs> it's WWE talk, you know. Uh, hey, that go down that vom there, make it right. That's the nearest pisser. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. I got to do that tw twice a show, mm -hmm. that vom. Anyway, sorry about that. Yeah, no. Uh, Dallas, Shams, what's going on there? Is Luka Doncic going to leave? Is he just going to say, fuck this? Sorry, Mark Cuban, that was a terrible decision to bring in Kyrie. And then also, Kyrie definitely not going to the Mavericks. And is he just known now in the league as someone who could possibly come in and completely ruin your season? Boston Connor, I want a question from AJ. I don't want a question from you. No, I'm just joking. Oh! 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 That's, oh! Joking. That's, That's a Shaq move. move. Oh, Shaq. Yeah. Shaq. I was going to say, who just did that? That's Twice a Shaq. That's a Shaq move. That was me like that and Shams. Shaq and Shams just fucking dunking on. You're being a real a-hole, brother. Yeah, bro. You <laughs> I'm joking. Shit. I'm joking. I love Boston Connor. I love Boston Connor. So, 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 so the, the Mavericks' number one priority this summer is re-signing Kyrie Irving. They made the trade. They got rid of two starters. 
They got rid of one first round pick, two second round picks. They're all in on Kyrie Irving. And, and so they've built, I think both sides have, have built a good relationship, but this is free agency. Free agency is not until July 1. So we have a couple months here. We'll see what else plays out. There's going to be other suitors for Kyrie Irving, though. Wow. Um, so how that manifests itself over the next two months, we'll see. But I think both sides, Kyrie Irving um, and as well as the Mavericks, when the trade happened, I think both were comfortable with each other. Now we'll see how it plays out. But beyond Kyrie Irving, this Mavericks team just has to get better. And, and because they know what they have now is not going to cut it. Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving both played at high levels, I think, to me, elite levels. But they don't have the surrounding pieces um, right now, and they know it. They have two first-round picks, Pat, to play with this summer uh, and, and go get elite talent and potentially go get some, some players to put around those two guys. Um, we'll see if they're going to be able to. And and that probably is going to play a part in those free agency discussions with Kyrie Irving and, and how they want to move forward. But um, Kyrie Irving is technically going to be a free agent. So could he leave? I mean, of course. But I think there was a good relationship between the two sides uh, that we'll see how it manifests itself over the next couple Wasn't months. Luka up for like an MVP and oh, they yeah. were like in a playoff push and they were going to be a team? Yeah. That's why adding Kyrie, maybe they could win a championship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they just stink as soon as Kyrie gets on the team. Kevin Durant. Right, when uh, they were at the Nets, didn't work out how it was supposed to. He goes to the Suns, they're 8-0 whenever he's playing. You know, so it's like, I don't understand. I I think I'm very confused by all that. And then Luca, I think, came out and said, I'm happy here. That's all I got to say about that. Now they're getting investigated for fucking trying to lose whenever they were potentially going to get into the playing game. I don't – is Mark Cuban – So so that situation – Yeah, I mean, I I think – Everything is not okay because this is not how the season was supposed to end up. They're, they thought they would at least, I think, be a playoff team. I think when you look at this roster, though, they, they, I think there's a level of understanding that this team is not capable right now to win a championship and go deep in the playoffs. And I think a strategic decision was made at that point that right now they have a top 10 protected pick. They had to fall into that range of the top 10, which they are now, to be able to keep their first-round pick. So they made a decision, executive decision, I'm sure, to – Stay in that top 10, keep your first round pick, not have to give that first round pick up to the Knicks. And if anything, I think you're either going to be able to draft a good player in the top 10. Maybe you get lucky and end up in the top three or get Victor Wembanyama at one. Long shot, but maybe you get lucky. 4% but at chance. the very least, you either. Four, there you go. The numbers, Pat. Either you draft oh, a small. great player or you trade the pick and, and you get a, another good player potentially for that top 10 pick. So they, they played a game of looking into next season and the future and understanding that. This Kyrie Luca partnership needs more time and probably needs the summer for those two guys to really figure things out and go into next season. AJ has a great question. Before he gets to that, I need to say this to you because I feel like you can change things. The fact that people in your league tank and just piss off their fans, put a poor product on the court, try not to get into the most watched of it, like the playing game, we have more eyes, which is good for business, good for everything. They tank for a 14% chance to win something. That's like what the the worst four teams have, a 14% chance to get the number one overall pick. The 10th place team that the Mavericks, if they did tank to try to not get into a playing game where all the eyes are, and you have Kyrie and Luka available to play right now, 4% chance to get up there. It's like, what the Doesn't f- tanking happen in the NFL too, though? Mm. Well. But you know you're going to get the number one pick. I thought yeah, the it's not a lottery. Tank, like. It's not a lottery. Didn't like Dolphins that, used to tank like every year. Exactly, their team didn't. Oh, win. but like for you guys now, Gumpy's not here. He would take offense to that. And you're probably going to find yourself on Cuck Mountain. <laughs> Absolutely, that, that's on you. That's not on us. Good luck out there with the two and on. They're going to do their thing. No, 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 no. I was asking. I'm, no, 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 no. no, 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 no you it. Now, you did. You did. You did. A little bit. You disrespected them a little, little bit. bit. You did. A little bit. But it's a lottery over there, and it's like 14% chance. I think it was a couple years ago. Some team, like, literally, it, I, like, maybe Detroit or I don't know who it was, literally just lost, like, 10 straight games at the end of the year, pissed off all their fans, were a laughing stock, and they're like, they're making a run for the number one overall pick. And then I learned it was a 14% chance to get I'm like, what? that is next to nothing. Why would you blow your entire business up for 14%? 4% is such a long shot that yeah. the Mavs have. And how many guys come out of each draft class that are good? One or two? I mean, there's usually about 20, 25, like, legitimate players, I think, you know, year right. over year. So, out of 60, that's not that's not bad. Looking back, that make it? 25 guys every draft class make it? I mean, have, a, have, a, have, have, a, have like, 
you know, what amounts to a successful career, like an average playing career. But yeah, I think. I didn't at least. know that. But I that, thought it was like four guys. But the Mavericks are so, also aren't looking for one of those guys. Like, they need a guy who's good. So, like, if they're just like, yeah, we'll just take a guy who averages fucking six points for the next ten years. Like, that's you, you don't <laughs> you throw away. You can sign one of those guys. Exactly. You don't throw away an entire season. Why do they that. tank so hard? And why is the league investigating it? They're not supposed to. The league has to say, hey, don't do that. Is that what's going on? I mean, I, I think I think the way it was, how public it became, and and how obvious lunch, you know, lunch, lunch, get, get to lunch. It, 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 it looks. <laughs> yeah, it's ten forty-five in LA right now. I don't know if I need lunch right now. Oh, just had oh oatmeal. Yeah, oh, drink water. That's oh, oatmeal with a fork. Yeah, yep. water. Um, I, I think I think was that a hydration alarm? Boom. No, 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 not hydration. I have to I have to call someone. Oh, oh shit! Okay. That okay. person should, should be should be should be nameless, but I have to make a call Ooh. at some point. But it doesn't Adam have to be now. Silver? Is it Adam like, Silver? Might just, be. Just, Might be. just a reminder. Um, I, I think well, especially this draft class, it's so top heavy when you think about Victor Wembanyama, Scoot Henderson, the Thompson twins, Brandon Miller. That if if you can get into the top five, top six to get a crack at one of those guys, and that 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 guy has the ability to impact your next five to ten years. Instead of trying to go for a ten seed or go for a nine seed, when you are you might not even be confident in your own team to do anything, it might make more sense if you only need one or two wins. If, if the difference is winning one or two games and the regular season to potentially lose in the play-in, or lose one or two games and get a top ten pick, and you don't know where that pick ends up in the top ten, you could potentially trade it as well. That's kind of the trade-off. That's that's, okay. that's made. All right, hmm. you explain it to me like I was a five-year-old. I appreciate it. Go ahead, AJ. Yeah. So, I'm so okay, so Dallas has these picks and everything. What kind of players can they bring in though with Luca there and his unique style of play? Like not everybody fits with that, right? Yeah, I mean, I I think I think the biggest thing for the for the Mavs right now is to figure out which defensive minded players and and getting guys that can fit the culture. You you see what Luka Doncic talks about a lot the last couple of weeks is he talks about chemistry. And last year with that team that they had, Jalen Brunson um, Dorian Finney-Smith was a, was a part of that team. They had great level of chemistry. Um, this team, they get Kyrie Irving midseason. And from everything I'm told, he was the ultimate professional. But they also lost Dorian Finney-Smith. They lost Spencer Dinwiddie, two key parts of last year's team. So they took a hit from a chemistry and, and a team camaraderie perspective. And they didn't have the necessary players in their supporting cast to kind of make up for those losses. So you hope this summer, and I, I think that's what the Mavericks are hoping for, is you go get players that fit your culture, your regime, and, and talent-wise, you, you, you make upgrades. What is their culture now? What is it? Do they need, like, a John Morant night? Or yeah. what are they – you know what I mean? You know what, Pat? I think, I think what they need is, is, is a big forward. They need, like, a 4-3, a guy that can defend multiple positions, hard-nosed, mm. tough, uh, tough-minded tough player, oh, so defensive-minded. They want to be a tough, yeah. they they defensive be a tough minded guy, a leader. They, they need the toughness because Luka Doncic, offensively focused, Kyrie Irving definitely – like, those are two uh, – of the elite, probably top five to ten offensive players. But around those guys, you have to surround them the right way as well. And and players that can hold them accountable, players that can challenge them. And I think that's the challenge for them this, this offseason. Oh, because that could become tenacious, and then you have a bad yeah. culture all of a sudden. Figuring out what pieces match in an NBA locker room, I couldn't even fathom what no. it is. Oh. Why did Kevin Durant work so well in Phoenix? Just because they're all boys or – Right culture, or because they they have a chance now, right? With Kevin, KD yeah, on that team, the, the culture was already there. You know, Monty Williams, their head coach, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton. They didn't have to trade any of them to go get Kevin Durant. And the other thing is, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, they spent time working out last summer. They 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 spent you know, a full day working well. out. Boys, they're, 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 they have a good relationship, Broken and newbies. and that's where Kevin Durant wanted to go from jump. His, you know. His mind was on Phoenix this entire time, and then he commits to Brooklyn. He wants to win in Brooklyn, but then the moment Kyrie Irving asks out, his future's back in play, and, and he wants to go to Phoenix. So I think there's a different level of synergy there, and he's also a guy you can literally just plug in and place. You don't. He doesn't need the ball in his hands all the time. He can play with the ball. He can shoot. He can do a bunch of different things, uh, whereas Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic need the ball in their hands, so you need to surround them uh, the right way. 
Chris Paul, such a court general. Oh, oh yeah. big time. You know what I mean? Such, oh, yeah. We got to watch it. Devin mm-hmm. Booker looks like he's moving in slow motion. Mm-hmm. And then just so happy. Are you and the gorilla still in touch, Pat? Yeah, me and the gorilla. Are you guys boys. Yeah, me and the gorilla boys. They put out a they put out a friend's TikTok video thing. Me and the gorilla dapping each other up, having a good time. That gorilla's got good energy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great you know what I mean? That gorilla came in. I was in a bad spot at that point. We had just got done in the back of a bus for four hours. That's right. From Chef Bo's to the arena. We are pretty boozed up and maybe a little bit uh, at altitude. Right. That gorilla came in and lifted me right up. I love that gorilla, Shams. I love the gorilla. I don't know if you were boozed up, Pat. I think you were just high on, on the energy of the game. Yeah. I think you were just so locked in on the Suns game. and I You promise. really wanted to see – you know, the, the Suns game. I and, promise and I was boozed up. What? That's yeah. what got you guys. <laughs> hey, we were playing. So not only, obviously, with their legal laws out there and vibes of that arena, which was immaculate. So good. That arena, they, they got that thing figured out. And Phoenix is, I mean, one of my favorite cities on yeah. earth. Mm-hmm. I fucking love that place. So it was good to get out there, but we had been boozing pretty hard for like 28, 29 hours leading into that game. And then all the milligrams that were potentially inside my body, mm-hmm. there was a little concoction of this dude's fucked up right now. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Delicious. And it was it was a blast. Delicious. Thanks to the hospitality, everybody. Food from Chef, Bo. Chef Bo's food and uh-huh. booze was so damn delightful. And he had tequila back there. Why? Yeah, somewhere. Uh-huh. Ty's got a question for you, Shams. But anyways, I, I appreciate the hookup over there. Now, granted, SeatGeek took care of us over there. Mm-hmm. But the gorilla stopping by. Was a little added touch of great. Carry on top. Ty has a question for you, Shams. Shams, can we take the goddamn kid gloves off for a second with Zion? Okay, I don't want to hear the same. Well, he's playing one on one, and then two on two, and then three on three, and four on. Five. I don't want to hear any of that stuff. Okay, <laughs> what the hell is wrong with this guy? What is the ultimate problem? Why isn't he playing? And are we? I mean, by next year, are we even going to be talking about Zion anymore? I mean, the clock's ticking on this guy. Yeah, um, I'm going to break it down as best I can uh, without going through the progressions here again. Um, Thank you. I, I, think, I think right now what's holding back Zion Williamson is is that the hamstring might be closely healed or, or feeling good. But from a conditioning perspective, he has not been able to, from what I'm told, bridge that gap between oh, his conditioning, his yeah, basketball yeah. shape. Um, you know, everything that, go, that goes into being Zion Williamson, being 6'6", six, six, Oh. The frame that he has, That's what I heard. Uh, conditioning is something he's always got to watch. And so oh. his conditioning is just not there. And so the Pelicans, from, from what I'm told, the Pelicans believe he's not even close to getting back oh. on the floor. What? I think, Get I think, this guy a Peloton? I, I mean, what is the deal? How bad was the I hamstring? There's no Tom? expectation. Three months. Jeez Louise. I, I, I'm not sure the grade oh. level of the, ham, uh, the, of the hamstring strain. But listen, he missed. I mean, you guys, you guys played football. He missed six weeks. The, the initial timetable, the initial time he was supposed to miss was six weeks with a hamstring strain. I assume that's a grade two or, you know, maybe in the Sounds middle of a grade serious. one, too. I don't know. My hamstring's always been good. Now, my papadia is a much different story. Mm-hmm. Right. But my hamstrings have always been very good. AJ, you ever had a hammy? No, never had a hammy. I think it's a couple weeks. Six weeks seems like a long time for That seems like a very six, severe. Six weeks, yeah. So it seems a little bit more than just your – prototypical you know you know non-series you know mild it, it seems a little bit more than that so either way he he looked like he was going to come back after six seven weeks he suffers an, a aggravation a re-injury he's not able to do anything and i think that whenever zion williamson has lower body injuries you can tell from a conditioning perspective basketball shape perspective he, it, it sets him back and so I, I from what i'm told there's no expectation from the pelicans that he will be on the floor at any point in the first round of the playoffs. Good so Lord. he's not going to play in the play in tournament games this week. Um, uh, the hope is that maybe he begins to practice at some point in the first round or do more. Uh, but like I reported last time I was on here, the most he's done so far is three on three, low intensity, um, kind of scripted walkthroughs with coaches yeah, on pig. the court, which, 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 which he's is, off is, a four is point a step forward. Yeah, well. But he also has not responded to that oh. the way that I think the Pelicans and even the Zion coaches Wilson were beating him. Coaches were beating him. I, I mean, it's it's low intensity workout. I don't, maybe they weren't. Even, were they even keeping score? I don't know. You know, I, I, don't, so I, don't, even, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, what, what, three on three scripted. <laughs> are just jacking around? Are they running? Uh, what the hell's going on? Are they running a the motion? On? Are they running the Wii? What are we? <laughs> what are we doing? Are they just I, three on two? Two on. I think, I think with I, I, I think with Zion Williamson, you have. You know, you, you have to have a level of care with, with him. So I know it's not what you guys want to hear. No. But they're going to be cautious with him. And I think I think, I think it's, a, it's a fair question. Like, with, with his future, I think whatever happens, I think the Pelicans this summer, Zion Williamson, you have to figure out how to stay on the floor. Because when, when he's on the floor, oh, that guy. Oh, this, that team, 
this team is is competing for home court advantage. They were, I think, twenty three and fourteen when he got hurt, or twenty four yeah. and thirteen when he got hurt. They were competing for home court. Without mm-hmm. him, they are what they are, which is a play in, you know, uh, low, you know, seven eight seed in the playoffs. So we all hope Zion Williamson can, can get back on the floor. I know you guys love Zion Williamson, yeah. love and want love him to get on the floor. Love, so love hopefully him. he gets love. there. Honest question though, Shams, like when you talk about conditioning and stuff like that, like everyone talks about his weight. When he's not playing, is he just like stressy? Like what? Like how is he just always out of shape? Like I get he's hurt a lot, so he's not playing and he can't really do stuff, but like. I mean, his weight is definitely a concern and, like, an issue. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's something that even the organization, when, when he first went through his injuries, uh, when he first uh, had, had a fractured foot a couple years ago, um, he had a similar lower body injury his rookie year. He missed a lot of time with, and he had a, he had a meniscus injury his rookie year as well. Um, and that was something that David Griffin, their president, also spoke about at the time is that the weight factor was on Winston and making sure because he's such a unique specimen. We've never seen anyone at his frame. What is it? Six, six and yeah. you know, what are, 270, 280 pounds. The way he's able to right jump, up. how dynamic he is. Like we, we're, we might never see a player like this ever again. Uh, and, and so because of that, it, it's, it's good. Like, like they said a few years ago with him when he was coming to the league, it's going to be something to monitor, make sure he's right. Make sure he's, he, he is his playing weight and he's, he comes back in an appropriate way because the last thing you want to do is bring him back in a position where he's not in strength and he suffers an even worse injury on the floor. Listen, I chose business wise also played a factor, but one of the reasons why I chose to kick football instead of go play soccer in college in which there was many more schools looking at me is because I only had to take three steps and kick a ball <laughs> and not run seven miles and kick a ball. I hate cardio. Okay, I like pizza. Everything about, you know, being a lazy, fat ass, I enjoy. So there was times that came in my career where I had to really buckle down and hate what I was doing, but it made me better at what I was doing for a living. Is anybody having that conversation with Zion? You know, we've seen many basketball players, Mm -hmm. NFL players. A lot of people have to adjust how they live so that they can be the best versions of themselves as a professional athlete. Is that happening? Is that something that will take place? Or how do we get that? How do we get a chef in there? Like the Pel- yeah. These are things like the Pelicans should want too. Like, hey, how do we get a chef in there? How do we get a regimen in there that makes it as easy as possible for him to maintain maybe his shape? Or is it 100% on him? And uh, we just got to hope that he gets that moment. No, I mean, I, I think I think it's both sides for sure working together. But I mean, it's not easy for some better. people, Shams. Like it's not easy, even professional know, athletes. Like it's not an easy I thing. Know. Like as somebody that was at two sixty five at one point during an off season because I was having a great time, <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of limitations. It's not as easy to live that super disciplined life. But he's a professional fucking athlete. Like these are things that have to happen. How do you figure that out? You think? Because it is hard, Shams. It is hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's gotta be both sides. I think it's gotta have the, you know, you have to have the right people around you. I mean, not even from, from a weight perspective, but even just basketball, you know, work ethic and, and staying conditioned at all times of the year and not taking too much time off at different points of the year, That's always insane. staying being a professional the elite conditioning, the elite conditioning at all time, but they've had veterans that have come through there. JJ Redick has spoken publicly about it. Uh, CJ McCollum is, is there now. He's an amazing leader from everything I hear nice. in the locker room. He's the PA president. Like, they've had voices come into New Orleans that I think are positive. They have Garrett Temple on that roster, too. He's a guy that's part of the PA. He's been a guy that's been known for leadership as well. So it's not like the Pelicans have not had veterans come through that building to be able to bestow that knowledge on Zion Williamson. Now, again, the execution of it, and and, and sometimes it's it's unfortunate. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. It doesn't click. David Griffin said the other day, you know, hopefully we can progress Zion Williamson, but it might not happen. So there's always that it might not come to fruition. Um, especially when it comes to health, body, uh, conditioning, and, 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 and all the like. It's a full lifestyle change, man. It's a, like this guy over here, he works out every morning 6 a.m. This guy, 5 a.m., 5.30 a.m. Every morning has to do it. He can eat grilled chicken and white rice yep. every single meal. It's an unbelievable amount of discipline, but it is like a display of what some professional athletes are like. Like There's some real discipline yeah. that is shown by people, and then there's other people that just can't do it. It's like, should we not just address it and be like, hey, Zion, this is hard, okay? I understand what it's like to be hard, but we have a hundred some million dollars invested in you, right? So we would like to spend some money to invest. 190 in- mil. That's a lot of, that's no. a lot of money. So we somebody, should- Have somebody live with them. Have, have yeah. a guy live with them that, like, you know, 
crafts everything throughout his day. Didn't remember Jerry Jones did that with Pac with uh, Zeke for a little bit and other people, right? He, he sends people with him. Like, Pac Man, kind of, yeah. yeah. I, I think Jerry had a guy that lived with Pac Man. It was like, hey, and I think, yeah, I don't, I don't know. We should ask Pac about that. Mm -hmm. But like that has happened in sports where it's like for one reason or another, like. Hey, we just need this is a massive investment for us. We see a lot of potential here. Don't want this person to fuck it up. Like, hey, this person has a capability, but I think it takes both sides to agree to that. Has that happened? Hundred percent. In your association? 100%. Does that happen in your association? Yeah, I mean, guys have their own personal chefs. They have team assigned chefs. Every team has a chef. Every team has a has a PT. Like all the all I mean, like you guys said, these guys big millions and millions of dollars. Teams are worth billions at this point. It's not gonna be a team in the league. I think that sells for less than two, two and a half billion ever again in the NBA. So yeah. the, the money is there. The resources are there. Now it's just a matter of execution um, and, and, fig and figuring out how to get to that, God. you know, that, that, that place. We all hope it happens. But we all want Zion Williamson on the floor. Yes. We all, want yep. him on the floor. all of us that have watched him on the internet since he was, and this is how I literally introed him when I got to intro him down at the blender. Been watching this dude dunk on little white kids on the internet since he was like 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Just like one of the most explosive athletes of all time. And we've gotten to watch him at basically every single stage. It's like, I would like to see him take over the NBA because he's a triple-double machine and he oh, yeah. plays differently than how every other star plays. He's a much different player than every other star. It's like the sports world would be better yeah. if fucking Zion Williamson was in it. I just hope that they're able to figure out how to make it happen because we can't waste this. This no. is a this is a once in a generation type athlete. I hope it doesn't get squandered. Last question for you here, Shams. We appreciate your time from Tone. Shams, I've been looking through the injury reports uh, for the playoffs, and they're a mess because a lot of people were just sitting out because games didn't matter. Is there any big injuries, uh, impactful injuries that we need to know about going into the play-ins or playoffs? Yeah, I think there was one that I reported on today. Paul George, he's going to miss the start of the playoffs. Uh, they play uh, – the Clippers play the Suns starting on Sunday, game one. Uh -oh. um, so he's going to be out indefinitely. We'll see how many games he misses. He has not been ruled out, I'm told, from that first round series against the Suns quite yet. But um, he's just now starting to do a little bit more – do a little bit more exercising, a little more therapy. Um, and But there's a long process still for him to go through when it comes to getting on the court, doing contact, getting to the point where – he can play in games. I think the, the Paul George injury is probably the biggest one to monitor and to watch right now. Okay, before we let you go, did you watch the session last night? Uh, I'm, I'm going to break your guys' heart. I'm not on that show yet. It's okay. Focus on the game. You got to do what you got to do. Right, we sense. appreciate you. If you get into it, know that once you get to season four, episode three. It gets real? We're a seat it gets belt. real. Yeah, hey, I'd say. It was wild. Right, I'm going to get on it. I'm going to get on it just so we can discuss it on this show. You're okay, right. by next week. All right, all right, all right. By next week. All right. <laughs> When's the playing game? When's the start? Playing game start tomorrow night. Here we Lakers, go. Let's go. Timberwolves. Here we go. We Let's appreciate the hell out of you. You're the man. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. Lakers, Timberwolves. Ain't nobody betting on Timberwolves, but no I guess chance. with how the world works, they'll somehow end up winning. How mm. the fuck does that work? A guy shoves another guy in the team, suspends him for the fucking playoff game when you just gave up your entire franchise to go get him? Security has to escort guy out of locker room? AJ, that's some fucked up shit. It is. It, it really makes me wonder what his relationship is like with the rest of the team and the front office. And by suspending him, by this happening, does it do anything to their – how do their contracts work? Can they hold money from him somehow? I know they oh. gave up. I cannot believe what they gave Aaron up to get him. Geez. That's unbelievable. But Ridiculous. can you – it's like in the NFL. If you get suspended, then do, can't they say you can take come after your bonus or no trade clauses out of there? Yeah, I can void guarantees. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Interesting. Because if the team, yeah, NBA PA is too good, they probably don't have that. Well, that's what I'm about to say. Because if the team can control that, they would just suspend. Yeah, all right. those type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, the contract. contract yeah, here's, conduct detrimental. Yeah. Yeah. Here's three hundred million dollars guaranteed. Oh, you're suspended the first game of the season. What you do? Well, I was fucked up. What you did in practice? What Sorry. I do? Sorry, you seen it? It's been on the floor. You know what you did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we all know what you did. That would be crazy business tactic if they did that in the NBA. There's no way the MBPA would let that happen. Rudy Gobert getting suspended by the team and escorted out by security is crazy. Yeah, it's ridiculous. That means everybody hates him. Because whenever he pushed the guy, that other guy got up and was about to fight Rudy Gobert. Yeah. Doreen Prince, yeah. For, for Anderson. Kyle Anderson, yes. If he, like, knocks him out, like, cold. Like, Draymond okay, Green. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe you can understand that. Like, hey, going in the playoffs, we can't have this guy here. But, like... Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, the, the Clippers one was worse. Those guys were butting their heads together, like getting each other's faces. Like, that could have been much more volatile than 
than the T-Wolves one. And it's like, this guy's arguably your best player. Suspended. Yeah, and Jaden McDaniels, the dude broke his hand, probably was going to guard LeBron against the Lakers. So oh, that's a, that's a big loss. Sorry he, to bring him up. He said this is the that's next. Good. That's not going to do anything for, anything for guarding. Wow. No. Anybody. Well, he actually might find something within himself and lock down LeBron. I was saying he might fucking chase him down and swat his shit off the backboard. and then. Oh, he might say, that I did yeah, what you yeah. did. Exactly. Block and now we have a new hand. NBA superstar. <laughs> Who says no? Not I. Straight out of Iowa. That's mm-hmm. right. By way of. I think he's from like Washington, D.C., maybe. Oh. <laughs> what was that, Connor? I. I- Honestly, thought he was a European. Well, yeah, by way of like Serbia as well. His okay. mom's from there. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Professional right. basketball That's what player. We wondered there. how many yeah. by way. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Iowa can claim him, and they should. He was a stud for the Hawkeyes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thirty-two points a game in the G League. Yeah. I didn't know that happened. I assume as soon as you start hitting above five hundred, that too, they're bringing you up to yeah. the major. Exactly. Call them up. Isn't uh, that the purpose? That's kind of what they do. They bring him up, sit his ass on the bench for eight games, so his stats can't be better. And then they're like, all right, get the fuck out of here, go back down. Oh, you think they're sabotaging? They're blackballing him, and I don't like it. Why? Why would they blackball? Because he's from Iowa. He's a hawk yeah. guy. Well, in the my word, the Grizzlies yeah. <laughs> just brought a guy up who won uh, Rookie of the Year in the G League. He started last night. He's unbelievable. Oh, oh. Kenny Lofton. He's also uh, kind of a different type of player too. Feels Timberwolves are owned by A Rod. A Rod, yep. yeah. A Rod needs to figure out his locker room. You know, because I heard there was some shit, yeah. right, with A Rod and his teammates. Yep. That's right. Yeah, A Rod was a glue guy, right? He should get in there. Uh, yeah. Well, he's learned guy. from his mistakes, I'd assume, in the conversations that have taken place about him. Yeah. It's like you can't have that. That looks bad on a whole organization. Terrible. And now, wait till you get to the locker room to punch each other. <laughs> yeah, seriously. No, but even then if you're you, not, then he wouldn't get suspended because we wouldn't see it. So we could just hear, oh, there's a little confrontation, but we're all good. Here we go. Yeah, but I think what we're saying is like the suspension in my eyes is them saying, we don't like this guy. Yeah. yeah. Like, hey, this guy needs to get out of here. It's a distraction. So the team is almost like taking the shots to the shins as opposed to the players and probably the coach. That's a weird situation. Addition by subtraction. That's a weird, weird I wonder what the rest of the team, It's what would be interesting is to talk to the rest of the members on that team. Be like, hey, do you, what do you think? Do you think we should suspend him or not? If they're on the fence or they're thinking it's okay to suspend him, then you know how they feel about the guy. Exactly. If they That's- love him, they would be taking a stand, throwing their jerseys on the coach's desk like in Rudy to keep the play. Hell yeah, and that happened in Rudy, too, in real life. Yeah. That, that did, certainly yeah. happened. Well, and, like, yeah. with everything that happened in Utah, if you remember with Donovan Mitchell, like, Donovan Mitchell and him really didn't get along either. There was actually a stat about how Donovan Mitchell would never pass the ball to Rudy Gobert. Really? So, well, yeah, it's not like... Does he speak a, English, or is it only he French? Does. Yeah, he, he speaks English. Remember, he gave everyone he started uh, in that it. press conference. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, Bonjour. Donovan Mitchell's known to be a big-time, like, tough guy that doesn't mess around. Right, I, when I, mean, I see like he's a he's a grinder. Like I watched him play when he he's in Cleveland. Like they respect the hell out of that dude. He's love, he's a little fireball. Yeah, everyone loves Donovan Spark Mitchell. Plug. Nobody really That's loves Rudy Gobert. What's the deal? I mean, I French. don't know. Is it the baguettes? Was yeah. it all the baguettes? Is it the COVID thing? Oh, he just remembers the touching the microphones. Oh. That's what they know him from. When he was like, hey, think fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah bingo. Send COVID over. Is that is that what you're talking? Is little, that what they don't I like mean, him? Oh, that's, that's what put him time. on the map for the majority of casual fans. That's what put Rudy, Rudy Gobert on the map. That's how I learned of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. pow, ping, Ooh. boom. Ooh. And Shams mentioned it too. Like, there is kind of the whole entire narrative like, hey, this guy makes way too much money for what he does. Like, he should not have gotten that contract. There he is. Sava, COVID, Sava, 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 Sava. Got him. Sava Mal. Good one, Sava Mal. Sava Mal. It's like Robert. 15 minutes later, like, oh boy, he has COVID. Yeah. Uh, everybody, that was when everybody <laughs> thought strong, they, they were freedom. dying immediately. Yeah. Too. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Nobody, <laughs> what, yeah, please stay the, calm. Yeah. <laughs> everybody needs to exit the arena immediately. Once again, please stay calm. Everybody needs to exit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the beginning of uh, COVID. March Madness, I believe, got delayed. Yep. About. An hour before that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that day was a crazy day. They just canceled the whole entire thing. Then Aussie Rules football was still playing. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> 2 a.m., mm-hmm. only sport left in the world. We came in the program the next day. Australia, a continent, also an island, could potentially keep this COVID off of it if they don't let anybody travel in and out. Aussie Rules football is the new sport we are going to all be watching mm-hmm. for the next six months because nobody else will be able to play. Well, at that point, two weeks, I guess. Right. At that point, it was two weeks. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking about Aussie Rules football. And then the next day, Aussie Rules football has been yep. postponed, delayed, inevitably canceled. 
because one asshole flew into Australia. That's right. And, and now everybody's got it. ESPN put uh, Korean baseball on every morning, yeah. right? Yeah, that, that was towards was a- the Towards the end, right? Towards they were the, the end, first. Okay. Yeah, you're right. They were the first. They were the first ones okay. back. They had the mm-hmm. sex dolls as the yep. fans. As the fans, yep. Mm-hmm. And they had to issue an apology. They did. Even though that's just like, I think, operating... Uh, modus operandi. Why? Modus operandi. Why? People weren't the, people weren't fornicating with the dolls during the game. Why were they apologizing? We don't know that. It did Not seem like two dolls were fucking, couldn't keep their dicks and vaginas off of each other mm-hmm. in the background. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's get to a break. Uh, Chris Solly Solomon will be joining us from the No Laying Up podcast to talk about the Masters this weekend. Did you get to watch? Yeah, man. That was awesome. It was fun. Dude, it was. There was people that were saying it wasn't. I was like, what are we talking about? Phil Mick trying to backdoor a victory, too. Like That was crazy. That was sweet. How about him making a putt with a fist bump? A couple of them. ah. Slinging thumbs up. It was awesome. Did you ever feel like Rom wasn't going to win, though? He felt like he was in complete control. Yeah, I had um, had a massive bet on Romulus. So, pretty Mm -hmm. pumped up that he Mm -hmm. came through. Also hedged my bet on Kepka. Smart. You know, yeah. whenever he had a, I think it was like plus 115 or something. Mm-hmm. Tone brought it to my attention. So I bet 500 on Kepka plus 115 awesome. whenever he was live. And then I had this on Rombo. So vamos, Rombo, vamos. And I felt like I had it all figured out all day. Yeah. Because it was Brooks and it was Rom. And then whenever there was like a three-way tie for second, it was like, oh, shit, here we go. Mm-hmm. Maybe Phil does have the juice. Yeah. yeah. And then Spieth goes seven under yeah. you know, on a day. It's like, what happens if he does his thing? There was, I thought it was good. I thought it was great to oh, watch. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was Saturday at some point I sent to you guys, listen, he could fall apart, but he's got a five-shot lead on the next debutante, oh, yeah. Sam Bennett. And he, Bigala made that chip on 16 to become the top debutante. That was sweet. That sick chip in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yes, heartbreaker there yeah. for the debutante bet. Yeah. Congrats to Sam Bennett, by the way. What a weekend. Yeah. Golfing today, carrying his own bag. Let's get to a break. We have some news coming out of the Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, what? I do believe Stoner is back practicing. No way. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, holy shit. Hell yeah. Let's He's go. back, baby. Hey. <laughs> Stick that for up. Stoner. Tap it up. Stick that for Stoner. Oh, my God. Look how good he looks. Now, Great. people are saying there's going to be cement in skates for a while. For sure. <laughs> well, when playoff hockey comes around, Stoner on the ice is good news for the Golden Knights. Yeah, this is maybe the best news I've ever had in my life. Nice. Stick that. All right, let's get to a break. I'm sure dogs all over the place are overreacting to the sound we're making <laughs> yeah. into the speakers. We do apologize for that. Uh, this is the Pat McAfee Show. Be your friend. Tell the friend something nice. Take five. 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 Joining us now is a man who might be the largest celebrity in the history of Earth. And I'm not just talking about his size. Obviously, everybody does that. But could you imagine a time when this man walks in public that a bunch of motherfuckers don't say, holy shit, that's Shaquille O'Neal? Mm. That has been his life for probably the last 30, 35 years. He's handled it perfectly. This man is a mastermind whenever it comes to business. Obviously, on the court, he's the most dominant player of all time in the history of basketball. Four-time chop, you know, the world. Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah! yeah. Hello, is Pac-Man there? Hell yeah. <laughs> What's up? Pac-Man, you know the uh, Statue of Limitations is up. I can tell the story now. Can I tell it? Yeah, you can tell the story now. Hell yeah, Shaq. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Pac. This is great news. Okay, so remember when uh, Pac-Man had that altercation in the uh, airport? <laughs> He was really sticking up for me. Pat, I just want to say thank you for always being my bodyguard. And you whooped that dude ass because he was disrespecting me. And nobody knows this story, but I, I appreciate you very much. I appreciate you. Know, I, I, I've been keeping this secret. I ain't want everybody to know our business. Hold on. This is Atlanta Airport chicken in hand. Motherfucker. That fight that we lost? Popeyes, both... yes. That, yes. That was the stick up for Shaq? Yes. Yes. What do you say, Shaq? Guy said something to you? What happened? I don't know. Pat, man, just say, hey, man, you don't talk to Shaq like that. And I just had to get on my plane. And the next thing I know, Pac Man put them paws on me. <laughs> <laughs> You've sold printers, what? pizza, what? what? Icy Hot, what? insurance with a cartoon. Yep, what? yep. I mean, you're fu- you have a prolific Rolodex of business. When did you know that was going to be the case? Because it's inspiring to all of us. I want to let you know that. I didn't hear what you say. Could you repeat all the all the stuff that I sell for? <laughs> I think there's like 10 more, too. I don't think I listed off all of them. No, no, just uh, go ahead one more time. I think it was printers. What? Right? Pizza. What? Uh, 
I think there's insurance with a cartoon. What? <laughs> now there's Novex Biotech GF9. You are a business savant, though. The shoes, obviously, we've all heard all the stories of, oh, your shoes are too expensive. Then you buy in a company and say, fuck it, we're going short. When was that like a focus for you? And how did you know that was a gift? 18 years old, I meet Magic Johnson, and he tells me, it's OK to be famous, but at some point, you want to start learning about business. First thing I bought was the dummy's guide to starting your own business. It intrigued me a little bit. And I said to myself, OK, I want to I want to be the only big man that's doing that. But in order to you know be, be successful in that world, I had to be successful in the other world. So I really had to dominate and really had to win. And are you a supermodel? Because you have the sexiest jaw. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's real, Shaq. He, he's on his GF9, but the other stuff, I think. <laughs> you had a quote uh, you said in an interview years ago. You said, like, my thought process begins where normal. Well, nonetheless, as of February 1st, uh, Pat McAfee is officially a contributor with WWE. Living his dream to be a part of WrestleMania. I want to. I want to see Pat McAfee tonight. I've been preparing for this my entire life. There's a point in my life, all I could think about doing was professional wrestling. McAvee closing in on another WrestleMania victory. Oh! First, we're going to have to get the OKs, obviously. And we did from people high up. They were the only people that knew for a while. There was like three people that knew in the whole world that that was going to potentially be a situation for a little bit. City of Stars, Boston Connors here. Supposed to know we're here. It's gonna be tough. If you're a man that's only known for wearing tank times, you kind of gotta cover it up. Hey, I'm Pat. Yes, sir. Just hanging in the back. One second, one second, one second. See, I'm stuck on my face. I could shit. Who's on the video? Nobody. This is you until you go out. Come on, dude. Let's go ahead and take a look around. There's some bunk beds there. You know, there's a shit on a shower here in the back. He sat in that bus six, seven, eight hours, that nine, ten up. hours. I'm coming down, I think. Holy fuck, what a view that's gonna be. Hell yeah. Look at all those fucking people are gonna be there. Just waiting, you know, for an opportunity to potentially have a WrestleMania moment. It's ridiculous. This is awesome. WWE is just like the best at operating. They take care of the non-obvious. So we're very thankful to be here. And tonight should be welcome. Hell yeah. I think there's like three people I know I'm here. Are we not supposed to come in here? No. Yeah. All right. Four now. Four Look now. at you. I want to say a word. I'll see you at uh, SoFi. You going to be in LA? I don't know. George is, uh, you know. It's maybe, a loaded question. George, we don't know. George, you don't know. Maybe. <laughs> What's up, Stan? Oh, nice. <laughs> As soon as I saw George showcase that yeah. tight end university tank top, I knew there was a chance old George about to do something special. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me, Welcome to WrestleMania! You know, the night was getting late. We weren't sure. Yeah, we, we didn't know if a moment was going to pop up where maybe my services could be utilized. I haven't been in a ring since SummerSlam. Okay? Like, not even in one. All I wanted was the Miz to have an opportunity to have a match. Just a WrestleMania match. match. Yeah, yeah, good guy stand there. And then the Miz mentions, I sent out an open challenge, and we go, Oh my God. There it is. And I put out an open challenge, and no one responded. Why? Because I'm the Miz, and I'm awesome! Hey. Let's. I have walked out into a stadium as a WWE superstar probably a million times in my head. WrestleMania was missing Pat McAfee in the Pat McAfee show. And I'm thankful to the WWE Universe that said hello whenever I came out on that massive fucking stage. By the way, there's only two announcers undefeated in WrestleMania history, me and Pat. I can't believe McAfee's here. Sucks, 
Snoop? You're a legend, dog. You're the Amazing. best, dog. Hello, miss. None of us saw this alleged open challenge that you said. But good news. This is my WrestleMania tank top. If you still would like a match, why don't you let me beat your ass right here, right now? You all want to see The Miz versus Pat McAfee right here, right now? Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! I'm the host of WrestleMania, and I cannot make matches official. Miz, I do believe your tiny ball are showing tiny balls. Tiny balls. Baby meat as well. There's 80,000 400 and 97 people here. Somebody has to be able to make a match official somewhere. I am the dog father and the host of WrestleMania, so I feel like I could make that match happen. Right now, we got a ref, we got you, we got you. Let's get cranking. I'm out. Let's go. Yeah. I don't do it. And back of me, go right after Miz with the right hand. Drive Miz back into the corner. Pat back of me in action. This is a blatant sneak attack. He takes his duties as host of Aren't you? But no, I had no idea. You said the same thing in the rumble. I didn't know this guy was showing up. I'm so thankful to the people at the WWE. It was a super cool night, oh. super cool moment, and I'm very thankful for it all. 5.30 a.m. Sunday. This day started 6.30 a.m. Saturday. So much cool shit happened in between now and then. Joke of an existence. I'm very thankful for everything. Let's go take a nap. Why? Hey. Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck fucking cock! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this overreaction Monday, April 10th, 2023, hour three of the program starts now. Bravo! Bombo is the winner of 
the Masters of Golf that took place this past weekend in Augusta, Georgia. To my left, your right is the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. The men that screamed Rombo are the toxic table at Boston Connor and Ty Schmidt. And one half of the hammer, Don Cowboys Tone Diggs. Joining us right now is one of the voices of golf. Hell yeah. Miami of Ohio graduate, a scratch golfer, friend of the program now, was on last week to kind of give us an update on everything that we should expect going into Masters weekend. He was 100% right, and his show, No Laying Up, is fucking massive. Ladies and gentlemen, they call him Solly Chris Solomon. Yeah! Thank you for having me again, gentlemen. What did I say last week? I, I, was I right? I really don't remember what I said. Hey, you said a lot of things, but I do believe just the majority of the vibes you're putting off are great going into Masters weekend, mm -hmm. so that's good news. Uh, Rombo gets the big-time win. I had a ticket on him at uh, plus 950, 750. 950. Plus 950 going into the weekend. Just thought because he hadn't had a green jacket yet would be a guy that would want one on his mantle or the chance to go to the champions dinner every single year with how much he loves golf and how great he has been. He's got that half swing because he was born with club foot. I just learned from a piece that I think was done on the golf channel. He's a big guy. He's a likable guy. This is great for golf. Masters was a home run for golf. Solly, is that a good way to read this? Oh, hundred percent. It was like I told you last week, it's so good to see uh, the live golfers and the PGA tour golfers getting on the same golf course and playing in a, a highly competitive tournament. And the live players had so much representation at the top of the leaderboard. We got reminded what Brooks Kepka is in, in major championships. Phil Mickelson is 52 years old. Unbelievable. And the only guy that beat him is the number one player in the world. <laughs> it's truly one of the most epic performances in a major championship I've ever seen. I still don't think I've fully been able to comprehend that one, but you know, Rom had an unbelievable open to the season. Awesome West Coast swing. He was like far and away the best player in the world. When he came to Florida, the, the Florida part of the swing, he really struggled with the driver. I mean, for for his standard, he struggled. And he threw it through threw us off the scent just a little bit heading into the Masters. I should have consulted you for some picks, Pat, because uh, you were all over him. I got caught up in the Scotty Scheffler wave. I did. I don't regret it. But uh, Rom was the man. There it is. Uh, Mike nope. is now on. I'm a casual, though. You know what I mean? I'm a casual. So, like, I know enough about it that I watch every weekend. And it's like watching him play in his mentality. He just, you know, sprinkle a little on. Uh, you know, I hedged on Brooks Kepka though, as well, whenever he had the lead that he had in the way he seemed to be dialed in, like he was pre going to live, pre the Drive to Survive Netflix series, in which we saw him kind of understand that there's a chance he never wins golf again and he's back. I think it was a great hello to the world yet again from Brooks Kepka. I love the weekend. I loved everything about it. And I won. So that's good news. Yeah. AJ, go ahead, pal. So, so how does this work? Can, are the live players, can, can they play in all the majors as of now, right now? If you are qualified, you can, right? So there's all kinds of different criteria to qualify for majors, and each major championship is different. For masters, it's, you know, if you're top 50 in the world at the end of last year or the week before, leading up to the week before, you get in. If you're a past champion, if you've won a major in the last five years, there's all kinds of different criteria. So there were 18 guys that did qualify for this masters on their own through previous accomplishments, most of them uh, before they even left for live. And if you finish in the top 12 in the masters in this past year, you get into next year's as well. So that was another storyline worth following. Like Joaquin Neiman and a couple other players were really close to getting back into next year and they might not be eligible for it next year because they're not earning world ranking points in their tournaments uh, on the live tour. They can earn them on the Asian tour and other places, but uh, it's going to be harder for them to get into majors going forward under the current criteria. Sam Bennett almost snuck his way into the Masters yet again yeah. uh, next year. That was kind of a fun thing to watch through the weekend, and congrats to him just absolutely yeah, dominating the weekend and becoming an inspirational tale. Him getting back to Texas A&M at the FBO when everybody was meeting him and greeting him, I loved everything about it. Let's go back to the World Golf Ranking. Now, I know that the World Golf Ranking people had to come out and make a statement that they won't be ranking the live golfers. Now that Phil and Brooks and others are in there, will that change that conversation at all, or will it still be something where if you're golfing on live, it's more like just like uh, – a not real professional golf situation. What do you think happens with that going forward? And does the outcome of the Masters change anything for you or for golf? It, it doesn't change anything. It's a reminder of what these guys are capable of and what a lot of them have accomplished in their competitive golf careers up to this date. But it doesn't change. It gets real boring when you get into the weeds of what it takes to qualify for world ranking points. But the genesis of it all is, is to, you know, all the major championships and the tours get together to say, 
all right, we need a, a unifying qualification system around the world to judge golfers. So if somebody, you know, has a great run in Japan, uh, we need to be able to evaluate their talent to say, like, are they worthy of a master's invite or a U.S. Open invite or, or something like that? And so that's what the world rankings are. It's the major championships coming together and say, all right, here's the standards. You got to play 72 holes. Uh, you got to have this a qualification oh. system. You got to have a minimum of average of 75 players or more in your field. There's all kinds of rules that have been in existence way before Liv. And so when Liv propped up a bunch of tournaments with 48 guys without a qualification system over three days, no cut, that was a totally different thing. So they're not really very close to getting points for any of those. They, they, they're they campaigning for them. They keep making the case for as to why they should. And we could, again, we could talk about that for an hour, but the, the case, the simple case is they don't come close to matching the standard that's been set across around the world. And there's not a uh, there's not a qualification system underneath it that props it up. So it's not that they don't have talent. That's again the frustrating part is Cam Smith, Dustin Johnson. Now right. the resurgence of Brooks Kepka. Like we know they have talent. That's not the the topic of conversation here. It's just simply this format is really hard to evaluate what these results mean. And I, I hand up like I didn't expect the live players to play as well as they did because I can't look at those results and understand what's actually happening. Right? It's like the my, the the uh, it's like I said. It's like if Georgia left the SEC and went into a non-Power 5 conference and played. Like, sure, they can run the table there. I don't know what that means, though, right? Like, we've seen them do it against the best players in the world. I get frustrated at having to try to figure out what it means when they play against lesser competition. I understand. I don't know if that answers it. No, it yeah. definitely does. And I wonder who will budge there. Will Liv budge and go to 74 or, or 72? Or will, you know, the World Golf Rankings try to figure out how to appease them? Because I would assume the Phil Mickelson story was a good one. I assume the Masters of Golf, and obviously Phil's going to be there regardless because he's a prior champion. But it was good to have the Liv storyline, I think, in there. And I assume other majors are going to want that type of thing. So we'd assume the world rankings might figure it out. So maybe somebody will budge there. Did you think that Brookie Cookie there, you know, because he's used to the Roman numeral live 54 holes, mm. maybe that's why the 72 holes was a little bit of a problem. But then on the flip side, Phil Mickelson on that last day, yeah. Yeah. you know, maybe he's losing out on the fourth day well, yeah. mm -hmm. of those golf tourneys with live. Maybe they need to add an extra day to both – Showcase Phil, because on Sunday Phil's his best. Sure. And then also get Brooks ready for a four day run. Is that, you think that's potentially the next step here? First of all, I think we have to put the Phil performance in a totally different category. I, I can't describe how unlikely that thing was. I, I don't know how. Whoa, he has, Phil with his coffee. He's got all his yeah, coffee. Well, you know, really. he's taking that non jitter, non crash wanted. coffee. That's right. Yeah. And then he's. He, he has played horrific golf for multiple years in a row and he hasn't had master's success for eight years. Like it just, it was oh. so out of left field. It's a totally different category. I think, I think if anything from Kepka, obviously backtracking from having a four shot lead and not winning the masters, it, it it's fresh and you want, it's probably easy to make that conclusion of, you know, can he play 72 holes? He's proven that before that to me, this was the re return of Brooks Kepka. Um, I'm, I'm more surprised at his, uh, the, his high level of play than I am the fact that it didn't go all the way through to a victory. So I think it, he doesn't operate this way. He wants to win or, you know, second place means the same as 50th place to him truly. And it, it it's not, he will not view this as a win. I don't think, I but think he did for golf fans for golf fans that want to see him be competitive. I think that was a win for him because that would not a lot of people were expecting that. I'm one of them that wants to see Brooks competitive because I Wait. love everything he's about him and Rom, their style is a play being showcased for the entire Sunday at the masters was something I enjoyed. I thought was great for golf. What well, wasn't great for golf? All the holdups at holes. What is yeah, this? What is hell? this some Bush league fucking shotgun what? start Cotley fundraiser? Pat, Here's what Brooks Pat, Kepka had to say about the group in front of him and having to wait on every hole pretty much through the beautiful second nine at Augusta. Yeah, that group in front of us was brutally slow. I mean, I don't think, I mean, John went to the bathroom like seven times during the round and we were still waiting. No. So, oh, I mean, he, John Rahm is trying to slow it down. I seen him eat a ham sandwich up and down as if it was a... A glizzy. A glizzy, which I did not know that's what hot dogs are. <laughs> that just kind of came out of nowhere. Yep. He ate that sandwich up and down like this where I go, whoa, what's... <laughs> John, what are you? That's not how you eat a sandwich, pal. It's like the typewriter type situation going on here. But he took seven bathroom breaks and eat it and was waiting. Is this normal? That felt like that was very abnormal for a big time event, especially at Augusta. It's weird. They had weird weather issues, right, that led into, you know, 
play got called on Friday night. It got called again on Saturday with the big rain delay. So they had a bunch of golf to finish Sunday morning, which was round three. And then you repair and send guys out. And when you got to send them off both tees, you can end up with some traffic jams. I think it, I was very surprised. They went off in twosomes. We usually twosomes goes very fast. It's sometimes tough to keep up with how fast twosomes go, but threesomes is a crawl in golf, but they were off in twosomes and somehow I don't know what happened. There was a traffic jam. There was traffic jams on multiple sides of the golf course. Patrick Cantlay uh, did not get a good edit from CBS. They showed a lot of his pre-shot routine, which uh, looked to be very, very time consuming. At one point, his playing partner, Victor Hovland, was chipping from behind 13 green before Cantlay even got up to the green, which is a clear cut sign of his playing partner being like, yo, we got to pick it up here like this. It, we are behind. And it's it's rare that it seeps through to TV to that level right but it was very obvious watching on tv that these guys were just crawling around the golf course that was not not good for the viewers at home a lot of this with rom and brooks mm -hmm. you know, a lot of just like standing there even a little chuckles though yeah uh, uh brooks actually just posted a photo of him and rom on a bench at one of the holes laughing having a good time and i assume that was on the second nine at sunday for contention because they're probably laughing about this feels like actually a scramble, like a golf scramble yeah. outing right now that we're at. I loved it, though. I wish that they would have just gone from 8.30 in the morning all the way through. That little two-hour break. Got to do Easter, so I guess that's good yeah. with the family, but would have been fantastic in the back there. How do you think this will be viewed ratings-wise? Because they had no Saturday, but they really dominated, I think, Easter Sunday. Is that how they'll continue? Uh, is that the number you think we'll hear, like the Sunday number, which probably going to be grotesque, if I had to guess? I think it'll be pretty good. Um, it, you got to remember there's golf ratings and there's golf ratings that have Tiger Woods, right? I mean, you could have the Wyndham championship mm. and if it's got Tiger, it might, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm probably exaggerating, but it might outrate a major championship involved with no Tiger. I mean, it really is that insane when he's involved. It's a call it 70 to hundred percent bump in ratings. So I think they will be good. Um, Phil kind of sneaking in instead of being the storyline going into Sunday would have, uh, if that was the case, if the alternative there was the case, it would have done astronomical numbers, I think, because people would have been extremely curious to to find that out. I don't think Rahm and Kepka are huge needle movers ratings-wise, but I would have to imagine they're good, especially getting to finish on time and kind of getting that prime Sunday evening. The total audience delivered number, because it was Easter. Oh, yeah. They're going to multiply oh, that. Yeah. Yep, a lot How, of families watching. There's like two, three people in every household oh, yeah, watching this. Sure. It's Easter, it's the Masters. I'm excited to hear what the grand number is. Town Diggs has a question for you, Solly. Solly, I believe it was Jason Day. It came out and said that, not obviously not this week, but uh, last year Tiger had to withdraw because a screw went through his skin, and, and obviously he had to withdraw this week. Jeez. As far as health's going, it, is it possible we ever see, like Ty, Phil's 52. I mean, he won a major two years ago. Like, is there ever, like, and he's younger than Phil. Tiger's younger than Phil. Is there a chance we ever get back to maybe a Sunday like that for Tiger? It's really, really hard to say. It's hard to picture. I think it. Uh, if if we get a good weather major for Tiger, there is a chance he can last four days. It's a remote chance. It really is. But I think his MO at major championships is going to be, I'm going to prep for it. I'm going to do all I can. I'm going to show up. I'm going to play, and we're going to see what's there. And if it's not all there, and if my health is not totally there, I'm going to withdraw. And normally that's kind of seen as a, a shady thing to do in golf. Tiger's one of one. I think every single golf fan on the planet would give him a pass of oh, saying, like, yeah. dude, show up. Come see what you got. If you don't have it, everyone is on the same page here of, like, do not be risking your health to continue on. Um, the starts and stops were horrible for him. Rain was horrible for him. Cold oh. weather is horrible for him. I This is total and complete speculation, but – Looking at that right leg, I don't know how much is left there. I don't know if he's better off with it surgically, I don't know, an amputation of some kind or, or something artificial there. I don't know. It's hard to picture it really rebounding with what he has left in that leg. It hey. is really a tough scene. I mean, have you seen the videos of of when he walks down hills and stuff, the, the where the, the knee slides and things like oh, that? Oh, I, I oh, oh. oh, it's tough. It's really, really tough the closer you look at it. And Man. I it's really hard to picture uh, it ever rebounding past what it is as it currently stands. That is not medical advice that I am not a doctor. Could you imagine you he, it, has, like, he has the Pistorius oh my yeah. blade sure. on yeah. there with golf shoes on the bottom of that mm -hmm. thing? Oh, oh, he man. might be. I mean, we might be 400-yard drive. Tim didn't even have to walk down the fairway either. He could just bounce from the tee box to the green. <laughs> Are you the only – yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you the only person saying this, or is this a normal conversation that we might see Blade Runner Tiger Woods on a golf course near we, you? 
listen, we threw that idea out on our podcast last night. Again, there's, that's not like the rumor going around or anything. Oh, it's a new one. Though. It's a new one. Okay. Something to think about. Sure, you can run with it. First reported by Pat Max. No, no, this <laughs> first reported. You, you guys are big enough, too, that this will become a conversation. No, no, no. All yeah. I'm saying, let me clarify. All I'm saying is I, it's hard to picture this leg healing more than it has, right? It's not going to get better, I don't think, uh, than, than what, what it has. He came in like totally that, banged like, up yeah. into this thing. His caddy said, look, he's banged up, and uh, I, I, I just – I don't know how it improves at his age. I really, I can't picture that. But he's surprised us in many ways before. What's that thing, the, the triple jump where you hop, yeah, skip, and yeah, a, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tiger's going to be doing that down the fucking fairway. Yeah. You know what I mean? On that bing, boom, 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 right to his ball. Simple. I'm 14 skips from my ball right there. 350-yard we'll drive. We get the guy a cart. Yeah, do the cart. Exemptions? Any exemptions? Uh, he has said he will not ride a cart oh. in official PGA it's Tour like event. Champions yep. Tour. 50 and up, you can ride a cart, and he'll do it there. He uh, he is adamant that he will not ride a cart in anything. He will not get any kind of exemption to ride in a cart, which, again, golf fans would sit here and say, dude, if it, if that means we get to watch you play golf, go ride in the damn cart. Like we, yeah. we, we need you out there. We want to see it. If it's if it's zero or one and we get to watch you play golf, we don't care if you're riding in a cart, but he has said he will not do it. Well, didn't you say last week that he might be doing sim golf? Yeah. Uh-huh. Right, which yeah. would yep. be great news. We get to see Tiger golf, and he doesn't have to move as much, you would assume. That'd be great for everybody. Just want to see Eldrick back out there. That's right. Mm-hmm. Ty has a question for you, Solly. Yeah, Solly, last week sure. I asked you about Rory being snake bit at yeah. Augusta, and will and behold, he shit the bed again and missed the cut. Jesus. Um, now, granted, when he is playing at his best, he's one of those guys who can win every week. But do you think we're looking at a point in his career where he kind of is just sliding into that, like, head of the PGA spokesman role and he can't really keep up on a week-to-week basis with guys like Rom and all these other guys who seemingly just play unbelievable every week? I mean, when Boom Boom Couples is out there fucking <laughs> leaving you in the dust, you know, there's some issues. Weird stuff happens at the Masters. It's I can't explain how Rory has gone missed cut, Solo second place, miscut, right? It, it's just, I, I would not have pictured Phil Mickelson wiping the floor with Rory McIlroy uh, this past week. I I do wonder how- Phil pictured it a lot. All of, uh, Remember, Rory happened. was saying a lot. Yeah, Phil, was, yeah. Phil had dreams of that. Oh, yeah. Quiet at the dinner. Yeah, he was yeah, visualizing yeah. that a lot, I would assume. I, I don't want to speak for Phil, but I think there was a lot of visualizing that. There's a lot of buildup with Rory. I don't want to make excuses for him. He's probably just devastated with this result. It's uh, kind of unimaginable that he would miss the cut. He is maybe a, just a slight rung below John Rom right now, but he is one of the three best players in the world. Scotty, Rom, Rom, Scotty, Rory, and that's the three. And it's 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 Rom, Scotty, Rory as of right now. And going into the Masters, it was Scotty, Rom, Rory. Like it, it it keeps being interchangeable. I will say right now, definitively, Rom is three, just based on how this year has started for these guys. But I, I think it's a it's a a little bit of patience with Rory. I, I think he's still going to be very competitive, no doubt. Though we like we're waiting to see this again in a major. It's been like I said, almost nine years since he won a major. Rory's pretty jock. Diggs has a follow up. Yeah, follow up on Rory. Uh, I saw this week RBC is an elevated event, so everyone's playing in it. But I saw Rory withdrew. Is it was it an injury? We got an injury with Rory. Is he? Can you? Are you allowed to withdraw from those events if you don't have an injury? Total wait and see situation here. I'm stunned that he has withdrawn. I think it's uh Startle. something going on that I would uh, I'd be hesitant Uh-oh. to even speculate. I, I'm very surprised to see him withdraw. Uh, he has you know for these designated events, you're supposed to show up at all of them, but you get one exemption uh-huh. to not go to one of them. He has already taken that for the very first event of the year, so this will be the second designated event that he's missed. Whoa. Um, so okay. the penalty for that would be part of the player impact program money, the pit money, kind of like the entertainment bonus that some of the top guys get at the end of the year. He would, in theory, be sacrificing a portion of that to miss this tournament this week, but uh, they're kind of making up the rules as they go on some of this stuff as well, so I don't know how it's going to go, but I, I'm waiting to see the reasoning behind this one because, like I said, I'm stunned that he would miss this with all the organization he's put into setting up these events. Knowing it was a designated event the week after a major, I saw that on the calendar. I was like, whoa, dude, who is going to want to go play? It's like playing another uh, you know, another NFL game the week after the Super Bowl. Like, who's going to be ready to to go and compete at, at, you know, at that time? So wait and see what the reasoning is. I'm surprised he didn't put a reasoning out with with the announcement that he had withdrawn. But there's there's got to be something there. We hope everybody's okay. Yeah. Go ahead, AJ. Yes, we do. So do we know what happened to Kevin Na? Didn't he eat a WD <laughs> after the Kevin first said, nine on his ah. first day? Right. I know a lot of people were pissed because there's a lot of people that want that spot. He looked truly ill. Like he was waddling down one of the fairways. He did. I was surprised oh. he made it nine holes. Oh, I mean, it, it, he looked really? like unhealthy, yeah, I, I, very below the weather. Oh, so and and to that, 
<laughs> there's uh at the masters oh. how it works there's no spot he was not taking up anybody else's spot so it's a it's a limited field event there's no alternates to it um they kind of determine how many guys they let in based on the criteria and maybe some special exemptions but there was no alternate that was waiting to get in so he went to give it a run to see what he could <laughs> i'd love to sit here and make fun of kevin now we all do but uh that <laughs> we, we, we give him a, we give him a pass for that one it's 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 well within reason <laughs> So you just had to shit and puke at the same time. That's a tough way to golf, yeah. especially at the mm -hmm. Super Bowl. Yeah, seriously. You know what I mean? That's a tough thing to do there. Jordan Spieth, to your point about the uh, designated event after the Masters, Jordan Spieth said in his post game, he said, I've been working eight out of the last ten weeks. He said, I need to change my schedule coming into Masters next year. And I just thought about that. That's like two months on the road he has been leading into the Masters. And now they got another event immediately afterward that's just supposed to be a good one. It's that's that this goes back to my point about watching that Netflix series. Like these motherfuckers' lives are nowhere near as desirable as I thought they were. Like these guys, rock stars pretty much on the road. A lot of mental stress too. When the sweet spot's this fucking big, mm -hmm. you can see how your body could stress a little bit whenever there's that much money on the line. One shot can ruin everything. We thought Rombo, he puts that in the woods, has to hit a provisional. Who knows what could take place there mentally? Like just dealing with that, that's one hole, let alone every single time. That is not an easy life, easy existence at all. So shout out to everybody uh, trying to figure it out, I guess, for our entertainment. Well, so this year, again, the with what happened with Liv last year, everybody came to the table and said, we need to come up with a new game plan for the PGA Tour, right? And that game plan starts in 2024. They have kind of, you know, fast-tracked a few of these designated events and kind of rushed a little hybrid schedule in 2023 to get together uh, to, to stand up these tournaments that are $20 million purses. But it's not put together really, you know, it's kind of like, all right, they already came up with a schedule and then tacked a bunch of stuff onto it or tacked some events onto it. You know, the guys are, were not planning to play probably when that schedule came out. So 2024 is going to be hopefully a better thought out uh, separation of all the events. So we don't have these situations where guys got to play many, many, many events in a row or eight out of 10 weeks. It's just, it's a lot. It really is a drain on these guys. I know a lot of people sitting at home kind of laugh at the physical strain that goes into travel, golf compared travel, to other sports, travel it's a lot. It's I, a lot. I but, think the travel yeah, is the thing in being sleeping in different beds yeah. in the travel. It's like a rock star life. They're on the road. It's there's some glamorous parts of it, you know, but it seems like it like to your point, a pretty lonely. Yeah. Feels like a pretty lonely profession, especially oh. on the course. I mean, on the course, it's just you. You're all you got. Mm -hmm. Your caddy obviously can be a motivator. And I think John Rom's guy I enjoyed the way. Let's see that shot. I think you've said to him. Right, let's see that shot. Yeah, like it was very affirmation you know like super positive interaction you need that oh yeah I would, I would assume you need a good attitude on the bag as you go through it all what a grueling existence they get paid well listen professional athletes live good but there is some downfalls you know that whole thing golf it feels like a lot of time away from home and that's why dustin johnson less work more money what are we talking about <laughs> yeah you guys take care have a good one yeah how about brooks being the only one wearing the nike fit as opposed yeah. to the what's that all about what do you think that means? Something something got worked out with Brooks uh, when maybe when Good he business. signed or, or, yeah. or whatever it is to say he's been sponsored by Nike and Nike doesn't really share logo space with other people in, in golf. It's if you wear Nike, you wear it on your hat, you wear it on your shirt, you wear it on your shoes, and you don't have other logos really uh, worked in there. So he was one of the dudes that that basically made it exclusive. I I would imagine to say like, look, I'll wear. I, I don't even know what he wears in the live events to tell you the truth, but. During major championships, I'm not I'm not wearing the team stuff uh, in any of this. I'm I'm wearing my Nike, and uh, it paid off probably pretty well for Nike this past weekend. Yeah, I'd say yeah. so. He gets good business from Live, uh -huh. mm -hmm. hundred million, whatever it was. Do we know what Brooks got? We don't. It's safe guess that it was a, a north of what you just said, but I, I less than two hundred, more than one hundred, will be what I would guess. All right, hundred fifty million he gets from Live, mm -hmm. and he also has a Nike deal for the majors. Not pretty, pretty nice. Good business, Brooks. Good business. It only gets better the better he plays, and seems like he's found it again. Fucking good for him. Connor, last question for you. Is it Solly? Solly? <laughs> Solly? Have I said it wrong? Every Solly. Time? Solly. Solomon. Solly. That, that's what we go with. Solly. Solly. You got it. You got it. All right, good. Because I think I've heard it announced a couple different ways, uh -huh. and I didn't want to be the asshole. Because I've... Hey, big fan. I've been looking into the no laying up. You guys... I Obviously... I'm a doofus who lives in my own world. I do apologize. Have seen no laying up around the internet before. Obviously know of the work that you guys have done and incredible content. I'm now following, and since I recently followed you, I think my AI 
uh, algorithm is like, oh, he wants this. Yeah, mm -hmm. So you, you guys have, you guys did the Masters weekend with me. You do great work. You should be very Thank proud you. of everything you guys have built over there. Solely. Just want to make sure I fucking say the name right. You got it. Solly. You got it exactly right. Well, I appreciate that. I don't know how you have time to listen to anything with all you got going on, uh, but greatly appreciate uh, being able to chat some golf with you. That's for sure. We're lucky to have you. Last mm -hmm. question here from Connor. We appreciate you. Yeah, Solly. Uh, we just heard that Will. See, I think that was wrong there, right? It was. He called him Sully. He said Solly. That guy what? That guy like flew. Sullivan. Sully, Sully Sullenberger. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he flew a plane. See, that was wrong there, wasn't it? That's what he did. It's My Sully. last name is also spelled wrong up on the thing. So that. that <gasps> I will, I will, oh, I will, no. Oh, my God. Where? All O's. All O's like the king. But listen, it's forgivable. Put it back up. Put it back up. <laughs> oh, okay. That's know. right. What, well, whatever's on the big screen you had up there had the A in it. Oh! oh geez. All right. We're learning. Shit! We don't throw fingers around here. Nope. But we're close. I mean, we had a lot of them. Uh, yeah. yeah. Pretty close. Look how cool you look, though. I mean, if you just stay away from the man. Yeah. Yeah, that's because we were saying this guy is... The man. man. Yeah. You know what I mean? The solo man. So today's today's guest, Chris Soli, solo man. Yeah, because you like, you know, <laughs> you're a golf person. I think that had to be what yeah. was going yeah. on. Yeah. Foxy, Zito, is that what happened, you think, back there? Yeah, sounds right. Yeah. Sounds right. So, uh, we do apologize for disrespecting you. You do not deserve that. You've accomplished more than fucking spelling your name wrong. Mm -hmm. But we do appreciate your time. Solly. Yeah, I'm just going to go Chris, you know, because we, we've already, oh, we've gotten too far at, at this point. But Chris, uh, Will Zalatoris <laughs> also had oh, to withdraw, yeah. and, you know, he's had, I think, now his second back surgery. I might be wrong there. What's his status looking like? And do you think that he might have those same doubts that maybe Brooks has had when he went over to live, like, hey, now that I, you know, the body's kind of breaking down a little, that he might, you know, uh, entertain Ooh. the thought of going to live? I'd be surprised if it led to that um, just based on we had him on the podcast a few months ago and it, it definitely had seemed like he was he was quite content um, it, again also looking at it from through a different lens the the PGA Tour has changed a lot in how uh, a lot of these really talented players are going to get paid over the next few years right the decision is probably a little different now than it was a year ago that's the one thing that Liv has kind of expedited that process of of elevating pay for the top players and, and a lot of other stuff but with back injuries in golf it, you you never know what you're going to get on the back end. He had a, a procedure done uh, at the end of last year, and he missed the President's Cup last year. Missed all the fall, kind of came back and was just kind of treading water for a few a uh, few weeks and months there, which was a bit unfortunate to see. But now knowing that he was dealing with something else, it's good that it sounds like it's going to get corrected and be you know a clean slate. But you just don't know what that body's going to behave like when he gets back. With how many the technical details of what goes into a golf swing, like oh. Jordan Spieth has talked a lot about this in. As he's gotten more flexible, as he's grown up, his swing has had to change, right? Because where he used to turn, he could turn as far as he wants and it wouldn't go too far because he wasn't flexible. But now that he's flexible, it maybe goes a little too far sometimes. So now he's got to relearn how to find his stopping point and things like that. So throw in a variable of some, some kind of repair to a back. He's already talked about some of the changes he's had to make in his footwork to help kind of take pressure off of his back. Now with another procedure, again, it's a huge question mark. He's extremely talented. I have... You know, I have faith that he will figure something out, but uh, obviously not a good sign to see such a young player dealing with such serious back injuries at this age. That's why I never stretched. Yeah, that's right. Smart. You know what I mean? Yep. Can't that's, stretch right. Stretch. that's why I ate bad. It was like, uh -huh. yeah. you know, I don't want to have to change anything. Right. Here. Yeah, mix it up. Then I just got too fat, had to fix it all. But that is interesting to think about because just a centimeter off is a completely different golf shot mm -hmm. than what it would be before, which has got you a far long way. Um, before you go, we have to ask, sad, don't want to ask. Three trees passed away this weekend. Mm. Mm. Did any humans end up underneath those? Things? I mean, that is nightmare, right? Oh, and yeah. I guess it was reported that nobody was hurt. Is that because everybody was already off the course, or how did that? That's a, those are big fucking trees coming down. That's a big deal, dude. It was so. There's the way they do tee times at, at Augusta National. They have 12 minute gaps, but there's two gaps. Uh, they help this for for flow of the overall course. We we're talking about traffic jams earlier. There's two gaps that have 18 minute, an 18 minute gap, right? So there's kind of a little buffer in there. If something happens with rules, like it's not going to clog up the whole golf course. Those trees fell in between one of those gaps. The, the Kevin Kisner's group was putting out on the 17th green. They teed off 18 minutes before the prior group. So there was no players on that tee, which means there would have been less people around that tee box when those trees fell. And if the, the video that we posted from behind 17 T, oh, yeah. you there's crackling going on. Like people start hearing the crackling 
And people started getting up and just moving quickly. I mean, just running for their lives. And it, it, you, I watched the replay a bunch of times before we found out no one was hurt. I definitely thought somebody was going to be under there. It takes a huge effort for everyone to get out of the way that fast. And they're very lucky it didn't fall on anyone. It's trees like we're not trees of that size are not supposed to fall in that like little that. wind. It wasn't that windy. It was kind of crazy. And uh, man, it was a scary, scary moment. I saw some trees or some seats get slaughtered, right? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. crushed. Because that place is that you put a seat down, it stays there, you're good for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Kind of go feel free to voyage around or whatever. But whenever this goes, when it goes down the way it did, mm -hmm. you have to wonder, like, somebody had to cut those roots? Is that what happened? Oh, don't, oh, my God. Don't. Like how does the how do the roots not go into earth? Yeah, that easy. with how big that I don't know. I'm not a a, a botanist, Ar arborist, or an arborist. I don't really know. <laughs> okay, I'm not any, either of those things. Mm -hmm. But trees that big, their roots super long, right? Should be like that's the purpose of the, of the whole. That's how the tree works, isn't it? Like good roots. I, I would so. assume. So how does assume, it? But so. I mean, that, that's what I thought was concerning, right? That's what I thought was concerning is in Augusta National. I do not know whether these trees were are, were natural or have been there for a long time, but they planted a lot of these enormous, enormous trees. I mean, there's some videos of you know taken of them importing 50, 60 foot trees down, you know, the the roads outside huh. of Augusta National. Like they plant these enormous trees. They they play God with the setup of this entire <laughs> entire place. I'm serious. They plant trees of that size. So I don't know if they were planted. Um, you know, but they started doing this about 25 years ago, maybe just literally planting enormous, enormous trees around the property. And that's what I thought was concerning was like, whoa, there's probably a lot more of these could could be uprooted rather quickly. Um, if those three fell that easily. They just gotta put sandbags down. Yeah, right? yeah. Around exactly. all of them. Make the hole yeah. deeper. Thank God nobody got injured, obviously. Oh. And uh it was a beautiful course. The course held up all weekend, except for Obviously, those three trees yeah. with incredible rain. It got real wet down there. Delayed some stuff. Still won the weekend. I'll be excited to see what the ratings were, mm -hmm. even without Tiger Woods. We appreciate you so much, Solly, for joining us. And uh, you're the man. Keep crushing it over there. No laying up. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. You look super cool, too. And you have good, you know, the audio is good. A great setup. It's a great setup. Professional. Professional. What can I say? Hell, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Solomon. Yeah. Why'd you have to do that immediately after yeah. we found out what the guy's name was? You said, oh, I'll see. Let's yeah. see if it's Yeah, is. I just figured you might as well test the waters. Maybe just see what's going on. And at least we got to correct it with him. Like, uh, I could the, not believe we had his name spelled wrong on a big board. I the know. Solo Man is a pretty cool little nickname, though. Yeah. Not bad, because on that, he's a solo shot, and he is True. the man. Yeah. yeah. He is amazing, AJ. Yes. Yeah, so was he down there the whole week? I don't know. I didn't see him. I'm not sure. I didn't think so. Uh, Should have asked him. Hmm. Next year. A lot of people there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of those shots on Sunday. Because I didn't know if people had left, you know, because people go down there for the Masters of Golf. Mm -hmm. Then Saturday, there's yeah. nothing. Weather looks like shit. You would think maybe people would be like, ah, we're getting out of here. Yeah. I don't think that was the case. I bet you that John Daly yeah. Hooters got a lot of traffic on Saturday. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet you the city of Augusta mm -hmm. won yeah, because well. of what happened on Saturday. <laughs> for sure. And then on Sunday, whenever everybody started filling in, those are some great audience. Oh, yeah. There's some great shots yeah. mm -hmm. from the You drums. went from, like, the worst weather ever on Saturday to, like, the most perfect day on Sunday. I, I didn't think Sunday was going to be that nice. I was worried. Yeah, it kind of came out of nowhere. Well, then, it's because when they – I mean, it was cold when they teed off in the morning to finish their rounds there. I'll have their, you know, like, quarter zips on and stuff like that. And by the time they had teed off for the final round – you know, polos on, Looking sunny, good. beautiful. Yeah. And Sunday, the knit stocking caps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was in the morning. I seen um, Brooks only had one costume on. Yeah, I assumed everybody would have two. I thought that too, because like norm. Oops. Oh yeah, yeah. Because normally I'll Nike wants you to like, hey, this is what you're wearing. Yeah, they present it. it. They those guys post their outfits like a month before a major. They'll say they'll show all four days of what they're wearing. But he had the little stain on his left shin. From the morning, he didn't wear the he didn't wear the giant rain pants that Cantlay had on. Yeah, and he didn't wear gloves either. In the morning, he was oh yeah, <sighs> had to be so cold. Oh my oh. god, wet. Yep, terrible, miserable. He said, "I ain't being fucking caught with mittens on like no these way. other dudes." Nope, loved it. <laughs> loved everything about it. Welcome back, Brooks. Yeah, good, good to have him back in the mix. Seemed like he had fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are lucky no one died when those trees came down. Yeah. Jeez. Especially yeah. when they just dropped them in there. Yeah. You know, I mean, from that picture, too, it looks like it smashed someone. But luckily, rumors are that uh, ESPN caddy Michael Collins' comedy was actually underneath and caught the fucking <laughs> trees. <laughs>
Still, good still for him. Saves the people. There. Yeah, good they, for him. So they can replace him. So. Smart. But you can argue he won the weekend. Yeah. Thank you, ESPN Caddy. Thank you, ESPN Caddy. Caddy. I'm Caddy. excited for the 1 to 2 p.m. hour next year on Sunday. That'll be – they did Tom Weisskopf this this year, the uh, Jim Nance presents or whatever. It'll be on Michael Collins' comedy. Yeah, that was in the two hours of the yeah. uh, the downtime. Yeah. I was just on a golf channel watching stuff. Yeah, it was a uh, it was his golf it was his golf career, and then became a great course designer. Hell yeah, beast! Did they kick those patrons out who ran away from that tree as it was falling? You're not allowed to run on that course. True. Yeah, no speed walking happened. That's true. <laughs> true. Probably should. That's disgusting to think about what they did to that. Place. I know. It's like that's a big one fucking tree just to come Huge. down. Huge. How are they just planting those things? You know, Twenty two, years, a foot into the ground. Yeah, it seems like somebody mailed it in. What on do we? Yeah. yeah, I'd say, or someone was underneath. I maybe. wonder if they. I wonder if they knew who planted it. Whose tree was that? That was Jack. Oh, Jack's got two others. Oh no! Oh, no where they have? Go get our eyes on the other two. Go get our eyes on lazy ass Jack. We knew it. <laughs> yeah. It probably is though. I mean, because with how many groundskeepers they have to get that ready, like the guy who saw that fall down was like, "Oh, oh no, dear oh, God, geez. that was me." I believe oh, right you now. You need to go to fifteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did all three of them right there. Sodfather's pissed. Wow. Wow. Sodfather might needs to worry about what's going on in Sodfather's own house. Yeah. yeah. Which is a glass house right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. This is an unseen photo. Non- nice. Never before seen photo. Yeah, and he shaved right after this, I think. Yeah, he did. Hell yeah, he has been I mean, look at that root ball that came out of the ground. Dude, yeah, that's a, that's no. what I'm saying. Like, was there sabotage? Did somebody go down there and snipe all the roots? Like, the how would you do yeah. that? Or is how there... would you do that without disturbing the ground? Or... Well, you would have to, to get uh you'd have to get one of those sawzaws. Or right. Uh-huh. And go yeah, sneak on there at night. Is there yeah, something... Sneak on there at night, maybe. Yeah, maybe it was Greg ground. Norman. What's that? Is there something under the ground? Tony, you were you were excited to get that one. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. What do you think? You think somebody poked their head up from underground and said, Let me saw these roots down? I've seen Caddyshack. Like a gopher? Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Oh. You guys think you're having a bad masters because of weather? We can make it worse. Watch this. Boom. 120 foot tree. Potentially. Don. That's a big tree. Big old Huge. tree. Huge. I had a tree fall last week um here in Indy because the wind mm-hmm. cracked it. Like mm-hmm. probably twenty five foot tree, made a loud noise. That's still a big son of a bitch. Yeah, big tree, thin though, thin, thin, thin. Real thin. Okay. Maybe Douglas. like twenty feet. That thing falls into your house though, like that's definitely doing, doing a damage. lot of damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, currently held up by three other trees right mm-hmm. now, getting sawed in half or whatever. But even that going down, you hear, mm-hmm. you know, that's a loud sound. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, couldn't even imagine what these fucking big hundred some foot crack could sound like. like an earthquake, probably. Legit a bomb mm-hmm. going off. Happy everybody's okay. Yeah. Me too. Boy, that's a. Yeah. You just got to hope that in the moment, your brain decides to run left or right, not up and down. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. a quick Oh, turn. run away from it. Oh, it's only getting worse. That's that's faster. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You got to run left or right. You can't run up or down. Would you rather mm-hmm. get hit by closer to the bottom of the tree or further away? Definitely closer, I think, yeah, because it's, it's slower. Yeah, yeah, and it leans down. You might have a little space, honestly. Yeah, oh. not at the roots, though. The roots, that thing. True. Yeah, they came. But it can away. only go. That's like whenever you're punching from like this far away. Yeah, yeah you know exactly. That yeah, thing yeah. can only go from that far. Still might suck because it's a tree, mm-hmm. but not as I don't think as violent of a shot. No. From the top of the tree. So if you're trying to win a lawsuit, sit closer to the bottom of the tree next time. Survive. Survive. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah and then the... Own the 17th hole at Augusta. I'll tell you what though, that thing goes across your lap. I think I don't know if there's <laughs> any flesh wounds with that thing. No. No, I think. That's, That's a pistorious situation. How about the breaking yeah. news that Tiger's going to amputate his leg so he could play Jeez. better? How about it? I didn't know that was the case. Were we near that? I, he said just just the hy- first I heard. Hypothesized that last night on a yeah. program. Been thinking Might be about something it. to consider. It's actually a good idea. If he cuts one, he's got to cut them both off, though. His swing will be weird if it's just one fake leg. You think so? I don't know. Yeah, he needs double. He, like he won't be able to bound down the fairways, like you said, if he doesn't do them both. Yeah, but that's why he's doing the triple jump: skip, mm-hmm. yeah. skip, boom, hop, oh. skippity, skippity, stop. Yeah, bad leg, bad leg, good leg, <laughs> boom. Yeah, we're well, putting. Tink, 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 foot. Yeah, tink, 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 tink foot. foot. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have an Alex Smith this- situation going on? Is that what we're talking about? What's that? Does he have an Alex Smith yes, situation? Yes, I going do believe on? it is a hamstring. It looks um. It looks bad. It right? does. The knee, the knee is sliding up and down. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about. Could you imagine what? From what I've heard, and what they say, is Augusta's pretty 
you know? And that's in perfect condition. Think, think about it being wet and slick. Yeah. The cold. foot, the leg. And you've had 10 back surgeries and yeah. your leg snapped in half, what, a year and a half ago, whenever that was? Golly. And plantar fasciitis, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, and his routine to, like, get ready to play, obviously, is extensive. Like, when they do have to stop playing and then restart, that's so tough for him, too. Yeah, because we were supposed to potentially, at one point, maybe interview oh, him. Yep. Mm-hmm. Have to say all those things because there was a lot of things that we had to get through to potentially get to a point where maybe you might have five minutes with him. Mm-hmm. But a lot of it revolved around what his routine was before hitting a golf ball. It was like, he's got an hour of this, hour and a half of this. This is all happening at like 4.30 a.m. Yeah. 4 a.m. to get even to a point to get to the driving range, which then he has a little free time, but then he's going to the putting green, and then he's got to warm up something, and then he's going to play nine, yep. yeah. and then he's got lunch, and then he's going back to the putting green, then he's going back to the driving range, then he's doing it like, is he doing that every day still? Sounds like Romo. That's Romo's golf schedule. <laughs> Maybe Romo. What did Tiger do? I want to do what Tiger did, just in case. He won Tahoe. Hey, yeah, it works. Right. Yeah. That's right. It's a winning strategy. Are you going to try it this year for uh, Tahoe? Are you going back to Tahoe this year? Cat and Camel? You mean I'm doing Cat and Camel on the green? What is that? Can you show us what Cat and Camel is? I can't show you it here. No, my camera won't move. But no, you I can do it right there. Right. I, think, yeah. I think there's enough room there. Move the seat Get out. Get on all fours and do it. You know what I'm doing. You know what it is. No, I don't nope. think I understand no, what you're no talking idea. about. Can you, can you just move that chair yeah, out of the way? Google it. You could Google it. More Just room. do it for that much room. It's good. I like the one shot. There we go. Well, this would be good to showcase yeah, plenty of how we can now. become yeah. better golfers. I'll pop up on top of this table and do it. Yeah, that's the only okay. way. Okay. Oh, is that what you need? Okay, so there is a way to do, do it. it. So there is a table there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting. There's a desk. Yeah. I didn't know if you were just sitting at like a folding chair. Yeah. With a <laughs> mic arm. Mm-hmm. What? Just do it. I would like to become a better golfer. Yeah, we're waiting. Please. What would you be a better golfer if I do cat and camel? You said that that is what you will do, what Tony Romo does. In Tahoe. Yeah, in Tahoe. If my back gets a little tight while you're you're trying to finish up a little birdie putt, you're just tapping a two-footer in, I'll be doing cat and camel on the fringe. What is cat? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. What, are you going to be meow yeah, like sure. that? What? Like animals cat? there? Yeah, what sound do camels noise. make? Yeah, I might. Yeah, what do they say? Oh, yeah, they lick and spit. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're like they a mean spit. horse. Yeah, exactly. Bingo. A mean, slow horse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with tits on their back. They're mean? Yeah, I've been around a couple of camels, assholes. Mm-hmm. They were not happy that I was sitting on their back. Mm-hmm. Dogs, though. Which I don't think I would have been no. happy with me either. Dogs, though. Yeah, you can go a long time without yeah. water. Mentally Fast tough. Too. Uh-huh. I'd say they're mentally tough. Camels, really mentally tough. Is that what you're talking about when you're talking about golf? You cat and yep. camel, like cat survivor, mm-hmm. camel, like just mentally tough? Is that what you're referring to, or what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, whatever. however you take it, that's how it is. You're an artist. Oh, you're talking about when Tony... Oh, doing this. Oh, okay. Cat cow. Yeah, sticking your pooper in the air. Uh, that guy has great calves. I don't know who he is, but... Yeah, who is that? Jeez. He's a bad putter, and he's Terrible. got good calves. <laughs> a lot of missed putts this weekend. A lot of... Oh! Yeah, close ones. <laughs> Greens were tough. Tone's getting up. <laughs> Joe? <laughs> I know how he feels. You see how you can get up, and you can tell his back hurts when he's getting up. I'm like, yeah, hey, we've been there. Dude, locked up. There's nothing worse than your back locking up and having no idea how to fix it or if it's ever going to be fixed. So painful. That's the, you have no idea when. It, well, you have a little nerve in your back that's doing something. When it'll be fixed? Well, whenever the nerve decides. Kind of yeah. once or two, yeah. So this could be forever. People have had, yeah, yeah. forever. Uh, yeah. Oh shit! Every single time you do something in your back, you think there's a chance. This is what life is now, and that's yeah. that's a scary thing because the back has a lot to do with a lot, AJ. I'd say, yeah, and that's the problem. with Anything to do, like, to try to make your back feel better are all those tiny little, like, exercise prehab, rehab things that are terrible, that just are no fun to do, but they actually do kind of work. So the, uh, my popliteus. Yeah. Oh, yeah, how's that doing? Feeling better, feeling better. Here we go. Show me where it is. What is your popliteus? So your popliteus is right behind, uh, it's right here behind your, your knee, basically behind your patella, connects the calf to the hammy. Ooh. Pretty much. And it goes kind of across. So where does it hurt for you? Right now, it's like right here. Oh, top of your calf almost. Yeah, right. Did it pop? Did you feel it pop or what? What was no, it? No, I didn't feel it until like an hour after just winning Thunderball. But yeah, the popliteus is this. This is where it's at right here. It's a uh, basically just kind of goes catty corner there. And right at the bottom, I think I kind of just strained it a little bit. But it aches, bro, up through the back of it. Like this weekend, it was... 
It got better. Sunday, I woke up, and it didn't feel it at all. I'm like, I'm all the way back. Here we go. And then I did Easter Sunday and Master Sunday, and I was on the move a lot. And then it got a little sore. So I was going to Thunderball this morning. I think I could have. I would not have had my best film, best tape, though. Would not have been good. So I think I'm about two days away. Yeah, but it's feeling good. Thanks for asking. I'm moving. Hell I'm yeah. moving. You know what I mean? Excited for you to How add, did you know you were What's that? I'm excited yeah. for you to Adam Banks us when he woke up from that. Rotate the stick? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. I'm going to fucking just shuffle left. How do you know it's your Popoidius? Because I have a brain. And he knows his Did body. Did you go see somebody? Oh, he knows his body. Colts, I called a coach training room. Oh. It was awesome. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, what's going on, man? Great. To you, you were at WrestleMania? What, what's going on? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, WrestleMania was good. Tell you about Thunderball, though. I just had a... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen up. What's this thing right behind me? It feels like I strain... Because it was like an achy feel, you know? So, like, yeah. when you strain something or pull a muscle, it's like an achy feel almost because your blood is kind of pooling in there. So that's why you feel that way. I'm like, it feels like it's like a muscle of some sort or something. Hmm. And you're like, oh, it's probably your popliteus. I'm like, Poor. excuse me? Hmm? You said, yeah, that's what I thought, too. Yeah. You know what you said? Yeah, well, I Googled First. it. And I said, I'm going to lead off the show that I pulled my bias. <laughs> and I actually wrote it down right there. But I feel like I'm all the way back, AJ. I feel good. I'm feeling healthy. I hate yep. terrible. Got a good workout in this morning. Boxed. You're back in it, too. Boxed this morning. Back in the keto a little mm -hmm. bit here today. Everything's going well. Everything's going well. And succession last night. Delivered. I got to watch still. Oh, oh baby. Oh, oh, good. You fool. Oh, oh. AJ, I don't want to. Listen, it's been tough not to talk about it all program today. Seriously. Came out of nowhere last night. Last night's episode came out of nowhere. We're talking about episode three of a 10-episode season. After the Masters. Easter Sunday. Come on. Came out of no. I mean, this was, it was a big one. It was a real, I turned it on. I did not know what I was signing up for. I don't think my wife and I knew what we were signing up for whenever we pressed play. And then we skipped the HBO thing, but we did watch the recap. Always enjoy watching the recap because the recap kind of tips yeah. To what, yeah, remember this happened. Mm -hmm. They're even calling back from like last season yeah. and other episodes and things like that. So I was like, all right, this is going to be, let's see how this goes. And then all of a sudden you're in it. And it's like. Right away. Immediately in it. Yeah. And for 45 minutes or so, it's like, holy fuck, what is going on here? Great episode, AJ. Great. Have you caught up all the way up to this no, I I've seen the first two. I have not seen the newest. Okay. Okay. First three, maybe? What is this? Episode three or this four? This is three. Three, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've seen two. All right. So it's, hey, it's good. It's a good episode. Tour yep. de force. It's a great way to describe it. Yeah. All the characters are so good. All so of them, good. Like in their own way. They really are. The Disgusting Brothers have quite a performance last night. They yeah. did. Hot start by yeah, those boys. Bit. Yeah. There's so many good lines. I really wish we could do All right. So we'll talk it. about it uh, Thursday. Everybody will have four days. Okay. That That's fair. plenty of time. Okay, to watch. And you can just give a spoiler tag before it. Hey, we're going to talk about what happened, okay? So if you haven't watched it yet, fucking go somewhere else. AJ, we're bit. probably going to end up doing that tomorrow. So I need you to watch Fine. it tonight, okay? I'll figure it out. Either way, you know I don't mind spoilers, but I'll, I'll figure it out. No, see, this is what we were told episode. this by other people, too. It, was, oh, I don't want, it doesn't matter. It, w it is clearly a spoiler. But yeah. you've already done that, though, by saying this and reacting the way you have. Like, you've already set me up. Like, all right, something crazy is going on. I don't think so. Just watch the show. I don't know. You don't know what you're talking about. You yeah, I am. Hey, I'm going to watch it. I told you. Hey, here's your ass. Here's a hole in the ground. <laughs> that's where you are right now. Mm -hmm. You don't have a fucking clue between both of them. Okay? That, that's another one that doesn't make sense, too. Yeah, I don't, it's hard to get the same visual of a hole in the ground and your asshole unless you were <laughs> double-jointed in the hips, neck, <laughs> and shoulders. Right, or stand above a mirror. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, doing a There's a man that's seen his butthole yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. That <laughs> that's is. interesting. So, you, while you guys are wasting money going and getting waxes by other people. Okay. What's that? Who's doing the Which, what are you? Who's catch, getting catch your stance You guys don't get here? a Brazilian every Sunday? No, nah, I did not. You do it yourself, it sounds <laughs> yeah. like. So hold on. You're Pricey. straddling mirror. You put yeah. mirror down. Yeah. You're straddling like this right here to get a little shot at the undercarriage. Yeah. And then you got to get the goo. And then you're just waxing your asshole. What's the goo called? Wax? No. Stuff where you just wiped it off. Nair? Nair. Then you get your nair. nair. I was the nair guy there for a bit. I used it on arms, legs. I heard that burns. Doesn't that burn? It doesn't smell great. Yeah, you kind of had it to melt. It just melts the hair off your skin or what? Yeah, pretty cool. Damn. Yeah, pretty cool. It was effective. It did work. Every once in a while, there'd be a chunk that wouldn't be there. And it's like, well, guess I got to shave it. But it was, uh, mm -hmm. when I shaved my whole body, nair was a weapon. I did not know that you're standing over mirrors, though, staring yeah. at your yeah. asshole. Every Unbelievable. Sunday. All right.
Every Sunday. Does it look like a hole in the ground? Or? Yeah. yeah, there it is. Okay, so yeah. it does make sense. So you're a little bit Do you have high. a big mirror? Do you have a big mirror that you is like always in the ground permanently? You got to straddle that, right? Yeah, you're straddle. Yeah, I have to. Can't be stepping on a mirror, break a mirror, bad luck, especially when you're looking at your asshole. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You don't want charge the glass. Keep your daughter or your kids away. Hey, don't, that's, you know, that's daddy's, that's his butt mirror. Yeah. Watch out. <laughs> Normally hangs on the back of the door, yeah. <laughs> don't touch that mirror. <laughs> 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 So somebody was real high doing the Tone Diggs move here, and they thought, oh, that's a hole in the ground. <laughs> so they went, yeah. they went yep. and got a friend. They were like, there's a hole in the ground upstairs in my bedroom. No. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Took him up there, had clothes on. It was just right here. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's where that came from, AJ. Thank you for I mean, oh, thank you, Tony. Thank, thank you, Tony. Fucking genius. <laughs> I'm glad we got that. Got Hell yeah. I'm happy we did too. This show's the best. Hell yeah. At the same time, the absolute worst. Yep. We appreciate you all so much for watching and allowing us to do this every single day. Shout out to Solly. Shout Solly. out Solly. 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 It's like sun in Spanish. Sol. Yes. Sol. Mm -hmm. Solly. Not Sully, the pilot. Boozebag pilot who's really good at what he did, though. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hey, if that's going to make him land this thing correctly, give him 10 Jack and Cokes. Exactly right. Now, don't do that in a car, though. No. Absolutely not. No. And not everybody should be doing this. Mm -mm. But this one particular pilot has proven. He can handle it. He is at the top of his game mm -hmm. whenever he's taking a shot or two. Is that flight or solely? <laughs> solely. You're thinking Denzel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I believe that actually did happen. With I think they were both. Sully as well. I don't know. I, mean, Den, no, Den, I, I don't know either. My Forget brain Sully. immediately thinks that Sully was the drunk guy. I have a feeling we would have known that That's if he was flight, taking shots before he landed in the Hudson. Denzel was definitely fucked up in flight. Okay. Denzel yeah, flew his, a plane the, upside down on Coke. Yeah. In flight. And then oh, the end of yeah. so I'm, I'm putting Screw a couple driver. movies together here. Yeah. So Sully wasn't drunk. Sully just uh, had human reaction time save him in court. Boom. That's right, because they had the clock on it. Yeah. Okay, so he wasn't boozed up. No. Uh, but if he was, I assume he'd be able to. The guy landed a fucking plane in the hunt. Yeah. yeah, he could probably still get it done. Don't be boozing and flying, I think is what uh, we're saying. No. Mm. Unless Denzel. you're Denzel. Yeah. Yeah. Be who you can afford to be. Denzel can fly drunk. Yes. That's right. Sully cannot. Correct. Maybe. What about though? TC. Oh, yeah. Come on. TC's never drank alcohol I, in his life. Yeah. No. Yeah, you're right. I just rewatched the last 40 minutes of Top Gun Maverick this weekend. Boy, oh boy, is it fucking. It's long good. Enough. So you just fast forwarded all the fast way? Fast forwarded to the part of the movie. No spoilers. It was long enough. Uh, where he's got 2.15 on the clock to get through the course. And then he does. And then we go. It's not a bad 40 minutes. That's a great 40 minutes. Yeah. So you look at your ass in the mirror and then you mm -hmm. say, wow, this has been a great Sunday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's finish this thing up. You and me. Yeah. <laughs> Last 40 minutes of Top Gun. Well, I just, I just watched the incredibly, incredibly depressing fucking Avatar way of water. I need something to pick me up. Oh. Two very different narratives there. Yeah. Top Gun, very for military. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Avatar, very against. Mm -hmm. Way to bounce yourself out, Tony. Depressing? Yeah. Depressing tone? It was heavy. It was heavy. I mean, Pat, you haven't seen the last hour and 50, so you don't know, but. Valid. Yeah. <laughs> but still. Has been available. You saw a great intro, though. You saw, like, they set the scene for you. I get it. You know? Yeah. That's kind of. They're in the water, right? They're in the water? Just like Cocaine Bear. There's zero chance that you guys know this. I did not finish that movie. No. Figured. But I watched it this weekend. I watched, I watched 70% of that movie. Yeah. yeah. So I get it. I seen what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, which which movie was better, this or Treasure Chest Two? Uh, Murder Mystery Two <laughs> is the name of the fucking movie on, that Adam Sandler and Jennifer right. Aniston. Right. I'm watching Murder oh, Mystery yeah. Two every time. Okay, how is that for real? I saw that. Good. What are you talking about? It's Adam Sandler. It's a great movie. Did you finish that? Okay. I did actually. Okay, nice. okay, all the way to the final scene, which is a very important one. Okay, okay. so it's a good, good movie. Yeah, Cocaine Bear. I couldn't tell you how that thing ends, but I have a good guess. Mm -hmm. I have a pretty good guess. That bear was fucked up, dude. That bear was real aggressive. You should have seen this thing scale trees. Bird up. I don't know how real it is, mm -hmm. but if that's what bears do on cocaine, if there's ever a war, we need to rally these things. Yep. Okay. And just send them out there and just let them eat. I do believe the Russians did try this and they ate, the, like the bears ate all the, like the soldiers. That's what I'm saying. We, we would have to... Send him out in the first wave. Yeah, we would have to be in one of those bubble balls that they had in uh, Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah, the gyrosphere. Know. Yeah, so you kind of are bubble That'd ball next to the bears mm -hmm. okay. with like a stick of cocaine in front of it. Yep. You know what I mean? And then you're just kind of rolling with them. Because I do believe if the bear's on cocaine, it'll kill anything. There's no friends. Okay. 
How? That's kind of what we're using it for. How is Ray Liotta in it? Theo. So that's the thing. I didn't even make it to when Ray was okay. in the movie. Okay. okay. So I don't know when he came into the movie, but I did not see it. Okay. But I do love that man. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah sorry. Peace, right? You get it, though. You get the gist of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you I got don't it. know where Ray's you know, You never need to see, like, people that make movies, they always say, okay, don't worry about the last 40 to 45 minutes. It's okay. We don't need to see, like, how I wrap this up and what my life's work is. You don't need to see that. <laughs> I did hear that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get it, though. You know, yeah, like, right. you watch the movie. I get it. I get it. I get it. It's impossible. What do you want? Are you know, Just start fast forwarding, man. You know, 15, 15, 15, 10, 10, whatever it is, get to where you want to get to. Well, that's the thing. Like, that's then I feel like I'm doing them a disservice, you know, because they're mm -hmm. piecing this whole thing together for a reason. <laughs> It's a real, I mean, my wife. Has, tomato, tomato. My wife has to deal with it all the time. I mean, I fell asleep probably two times during that murder mystery. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and did a big, how do we get here? Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Rewind it. You got to wake up. Hey, who's that? Yeah, I'm sure she loves that. People in the chat are saying Ray Liotta comes in the first 15 minutes. I don't think he does anything, though. Like, I seen him on the screen. No, I, you didn't. You said you didn't see him yet. I don't remember if it was an internet clip that I seen. Mm -hmm. Because I tweeted that I watched it, so yeah. I was getting a lot of people. Right. I saw oh. it wasn't the chat. It was Bill in the chat who said he thinks it comes in the first 15 minutes. Right. Bill loved <laughs> he yeah, did. Bill it. Bill loved times. So I seen oh. a picture of him. Maybe he was on a phone or something, but he didn't do anything in the part. <laughs> so you watched 10 minutes of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I watched a good 20, 25, 30 minutes of this movie. Okay. okay. That's a good chunk. <laughs> Thank you. You probably you probably saw his old Chantix commercials for the thing to stop Great. smoking six. Yeah. That was not a part of the movie, which is a shame. Yeah, it should have been. Great commercial. Movie was good, though. Cocaine Bear was good. Okay. Sounds like it. <laughs> you might watch it. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Oh, shit. Zito said Tetris is sweet. Yeah. I'm going to check that so out. So good. Looks good. Hell yeah. With it's eggs. winning a lot of awards. Super Mario the Brothers. With, uh, you watch Blackbird. Kingsman. Is it, yeah. and Kingsman. Uh -huh. animated? Kingsman. He's the guy from Kingsman. No. no. No, it's about like the making of it. Tetris? Mm -hmm. Cold War thriller. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? This oh, yeah. is like um, you have mail? No. The Uber one? <laughs> super wicked pumped. super pumped. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of yeah. like yeah. War Dogs. Uber? Tetris is basically War Dogs. Really? Oh. That's interesting. Huh. Well, I well, think actually... get to the end of War Dogs. Oh, my tie down there. <laughs> yeah. Doing that was his... good. Damon How was Miles? You talked to him in a while? I have not. I mean, he and his wife had a Super Bowl commercial. He's the he's the megastar right now, so he's doing great. <laughs> what? They did have a Super Bowl commercial. Mm -hmm. They were dancing. Yeah. Yeah. They were dancing. On hold. Yeah. That's right. Let's get to a break. <laughs> Twenty hours and <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> great UFC two hundred eighty seven too, but I know we're wrapping up. Yeah, yeah. great UFC two hundred eighty seven. Uh -huh. What are you bringing that up for? Bosa's Bosa brothers. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow was there. Yeah. Justin yeah. Jefferson was Sam there. Hubbard. Theo Vaughn was oh, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zach Brown. Zach Brown was there. Daniel. I didn't see Zach. He was Zach do the anthem. President Donald Trump yeah. was there. DJT. Right. He was sitting right next to Kid. Kid Rock was also yeah. there. Boom. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> Kid Rock was wearing a Coors Light jacket he was really was he was he really <laughs> yes oh. oh i didn't see that before. what a scene what an interesting time what an interesting time tough. it is interesting time. <laughs> let's get to a break 20 hours there's a new development in that whole story oh yeah mm -hmm. kind of got offended like it's a wild time right now in the world that we're in what's the development we'll send you the video yep okay thank you Interesting. I'll post it. Don't ask questions you don't want answers to. I didn't want to see I this do, video. Any I of do them. want answers. I didn't want to see any of the want, videos. Let's get to a break. Which ones? What videos? There's a bunch of them. You'll see. Uh, just wait. You've seen it, actually. Right. It was just like when His Holiness asked that kid to suck his tongue. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Probably didn't even watch. You just read the caption. <laughs> who, wants, like, who would want that? Why would you want your tongue sucked? Listen, never had it done, but His Holiness. <laughs> his Holiness is a fucking trickster. He loves joking It's not around. the first time he's asked. Obviously. No chance. What language is his natural language? Do we know? Whatever yours is. He just knows whatever you speak, he knows it. Faith. He speaks it to you. I think it's faith. I understand faith is a language that mm -hmm. is universal, that he shares with yeah. everybody. Yep. But what if he only knows like four or five English uh, words and he was told that by somebody who was like, hey, suck my tongue. It's like, Suck it. Like, like a high five, yeah. and you're supposed oh, yeah, to stick yeah. out your tongue. What if he was lied to? You know, like, ah, suck it. They're like, trying to fucking cancel his holiness. Well, his holiness came out with a statement saying, 
His holiness a lot. He yeah. did. He was speaking in third person. Kind of cut a heel promo. The Rock knows. <laughs> his holiness knows that cameras are on his holiness. Kind of. <laughs> Dalai Lama came out and said that from his Twitter account. I've never heard him speak other than telling a kid to suck his tongue. But yep. yeah, I could see how he could deliver that promo. <laughs> Who is the Dalai Lama? What is the Dalai Lama? He's like 94 now, right? He is. Sure, he's like, up there. He was like anointed back in the day when he was young and. He's the guy. So he's like sister... Uh, sister Jean. Mother, Mother Teresa. Same Mother thing. Teresa. Yeah. Uh, I, I never trusted him because I believe Sack from Wedding Crashers uh, was friends with him in that movie. Or That's a sack was, lunch. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Crab cake. In football. football. Tell that to the Dalai Lama. So Dalai Lama is the Mother Teresa of dudes? He He's like the sovereign leader of Tibet and tried to leave China. And then they said, you got to get out of here. And now he's in India hanging out, just being the Dalai Lama. Yeah, and having kids suck Is he a monk? Stone. So he calls himself His Holiness, and he was the leader of a country. He's and he was like, saying he that we him. need to get out of We're this country? Yeah, he's kind of like the Pope of Tibet, in a way. Oh, uh, okay. Nice. A-Rod met him a couple years ago. Did he suck his tongue? Remember? That's what the first thing I thought of when I saw that. Is that, that thing. ayahuasca? Like, oh. Yeah, could be. Did he bless him with total consciousness on his deathbed? What if he has DMT in his pores, his saliva? This is the Dalai Lama's website. His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama of. T so Dalai Lama's like a title? Yeah, I believe so. Like president? Like Pope? Mm hmm. You're voted in? It's confusing. Yeah, I don't know. They're either voted like, in. Like, like a tongue or something. He doesn't look devious at all in that. Uh, yeah, what's the banana thing that he's wearing? He's got a little banana so, top. Just to separate him, to let everybody know, like, hey, I'm the man. If you step on him, you slip. I mean, right. what Ty said earlier about his fingies, I'm not sure. I doubt that. So when a Dalai Lama yeah, yeah, dies, when a Dalai Lama dies, or even before their death, the successor is found rather than chosen. Hmm. Like found. Tibetan monks conduct an elaborate quest to find a child who's the Dalai Lama's next incarnation. So they find the best monk up there in the mountains mm -hmm. where <laughs> Pet Detective was. Sounds like yes. a, cho a chosen one situation. They probably have the next yeah. one already in line, don't who's, they? Who's a Pretty much you got to find the Awa in someone. They don't talk, right? Isn't that a thing? Silent monks don't monks talk. Are. So he probably Silent only knows monks. five, six words. Hello, His Holiness, suck my tongue. Mm -hmm. That's all of them, yeah. That's a, yeah. That's a tough... That's tough if that's all you know. You can't get around. You can't do a whole lot. This that. guy's getting escorted around everywhere. Yeah, that's all he fine. says. We'll wait till he finds out. So how many bong? Because <laughs> I, I assume that's probably going to be entering that wheelhouse, too. <laughs> Suck my dong? Yeah. <laughs> it's very close to tongue. It is. It is. I wonder if he ever slips when he's telling somebody. Looks like he's a trickster, too. Look at him. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, he's always up he's, to the antics. His holiness yeah. is a big trickster. His Holiness Dalai Lama playfully posing for photos with members of the security team that helped during his four-week visit to India on January 28th, 2018. Photo by Ven Tenzin Jampal. Hashtag Dalai Lama. He's lucky he's the Dalai Lama because if I know anything about the Indian Special Forces, you fucking tugging on this guy's mustache, he's ripping your throat out. Especially with that. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's Triple H whenever he was. That's right. It looks like Captain Price. Playing no games. Gotta be UAVs all on now. I actually read a story about him. He has 74 confirmed kills. Dalai, Dalai Lama? Dalai Lama? No, the man he's tugging. Oh. Holy shit. Dalai Lama can get away with that, though. His Holiness, wait till you see what he did after this picture was taken with this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out they believe that uh, to find the next Dalai Lama, it is a reincarnation of the previous. Uh, so the same spirit has inhabited all 14 of these Dalai Lamas. So they got to get a baby then? They so have they have to find uh, which body he has re reincarnated into. Yes, they, it they could will. take several years according to research here. So it's a baby then that would have to come, right? Because that would be, or does a soul just pick up and leave once one kind of reincarnates inside of it? I don't really understand that. So a baby is the next Dalai Lama? I think it could be a small child, yes. Sounds like he already picked his successor. Why do you think he was having that kid fucking suck his tongue? That was to exchange the soul. Yeah. Exactly. Only I know how to suck my own tongue. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Once again, we don't know if any of this is true. No. <laughs> what did the kid do? That's my question. Like, the kid what did he do in that he moment? He went nosies. Yeah, nose kisses. Yeah. And nosies. Then started nibbling on his tongue a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't think the kid did that. The kid looked like a dog. Kid went, ah, uh, forehead to forehead, maybe. I just wanted a hug. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I just wanted a hug. He kissed him on the lips. You're already sucking me on my mouth. Mm -hmm. 
Come here. Well, I now you're telling me to suck your tongue, pal. Oh, I don't know what type of game this is. Oh, it's oh. What if he sucks his tongue? <laughs> Dalai Lama dies on spot. Yeah. Kid says, His Holiness. Yeah. Welcome to the jungle. Mm -hmm. Sucks the soul out of Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. Stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. I'm not sure that it has. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> that might be the strangest if that was on video. Yeah, that'd be crazy. I mean, Chris Angel did that thing where he took those legs. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and put them on. Good right. point. Levitated Floated, Jack over mean? his house. Floated Shaq. <laughs> Shaq was up at 1,200 feet. <laughs> yeah. I was at David Copperfield show. He brought in a UFO right into the theater. That's a good. also a good point. Right there. Holy shit. I got to get back to Vegas, man. There's too many good things <laughs> happening out there. Got to stop by Caratop. Caratop. Yep, yeah. yep, he was crazy. on fire. Caratop was bummed that it was only three trees and not four. Because he said it would have been perfect for four. Yeah. You know that <laughs> class <laughs> goals. <laughs> oh, good job. Yeah, we're Basketball. like, didn't he have jokes about animals and stuff, mice, what? rats, yeah. and stuff? Okay, yeah, he had he all was, kind of jokes. He had the mice, the mice joke. Of course, show. AJ remembers this one. Oh, I don't remember the joke. Yeah. Yeah. We had a lot of different yeah. jokes. Uh, about animals. Oh yeah, yeah, I bet. All right, we'll get out of here now. Shout out to Ian Rapport for stopping by. Thank you, Rapport. Thanks, Rapport. Sham Sharania as well. Sham. Shams. Big time for him. We got a massive tomorrow coming. Big time tomorrow. Oh, yeah. man. AJ, did you hear about tomorrow? I did not. No. Can you tell me? Big time. Yeah, it's tomorrow's sweet. big time. Oh. Thank you for all that detail. Hell yeah. Anytime. Also giving a spoiler on Secession, episode three, mm -hmm. season four. Yep. So everybody get that in this evening. Also, give uh, Murder Mystery 2 a shot. Okay. I'm going to. I can't wait. <laughs> Can't be good. Is it good? <laughs> Can't be good. What? I mean, I know I've I've said for years Jennifer Aniston usually does not make bad movies. Everything she's in is usually really good. And compadre in this. Yes. Also, I would say Adam Sandler's the man. I love Adam Sandler. It would be man. Fault if it's yeah. not a good movie. But. Yeah, it's five hundred million views is what Sandler gets on a yearly basis on Netflix. Damn. There's a reason because he makes movies like Murder Mystery Two. Yep. Yeah. And he crushes it. You be mm -hmm. Halloween. Oh. So good. Banger. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Shout out to Adam Sandler. It's basically, got, it's basically got the same audience score as the first one. So it's 100? Ish. Okay. What is it? Uh, 40, 40s. Who's voting on That's that? That's not true. Yeah. This is just like Twitter. The only people that are going out of the way to vote are the people that are incredibly upset. Yep. Those people don't know. Good movie if it smacked them right in their tongue. Mm -hmm. Like Dalai Lama's trying to get sucked. <laughs> mm -hmm. You hear me, pal? I hear it was a good movie. They rushed through a couple things. Sure. You know, kind of skipped over some details of some stuff. That'll it's gonna happen. happen. Hour and a half, though. Very digestible. Yeah. Oh, I'll Sandman watch. ain't fucking around. No. All right. Neither are we. No. Tomorrow's program's a big one. Mm -hmm. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. We're going to Chef Bo's. We thank you all. Goodbye.